The ancient poems say, fate is predetermined. You need to follow your destiny and not want too much. The meaning of these words is as follows, fate is predetermined, and every ordinary mortal must fulfill his duty and suppress his desires. However, these rules apply only to mere mortals. At the age of 16, in spite of fate, the hero perfected and tempered himself to a state of perfection. A gifted person or the fate of fate, no one will be able to keep Zhang Ryuachen, the only son of Mindy, one of the nine Kunlong emperors. Zhang Ryuachen was approached by Kai Yao, the daughter of Qingdi, one of the nine Kunlong emperors, and said that his swordsmanship had become even better. Kai Yao is Zhang Ryuachen's fiancé. They have known each other since childhood, and grew up together, trained together. Everyone around said that they were like a golden boy and a jasper maiden. These are boys and girls who serve the immortals or the celestials, and that their union would go down in the history of the world of cultivation. Zhang Ruachen wanted to ask Kai Yao why she came, but the bride stuck a sword in him. The hero does not understand why she did this to him, because she is the love of his life. Why did she decide to kill him, for what? The one that Zhang Ruachen loved so much turned out to be a completely different person. But the hero is not the same as 800 years ago. Zhang Ruachen woke up in his bed, and his mother, concubine Lin, the concubine of the king of Yunwu County, came to him. She asked her son that he had a nightmare again. But her son assured her that there was no need to worry, because it was just a dream. But how can a mother not worry about her own child? My mother said that he had been weak and sickly since childhood, and this illness had chained Zhang Ruachen to the bed at all. What will a mother do if something irreparable happens to her son? The woman handed the medicine to the hero. In fact, this woman is the mother of Zhang Ruachen's body. Her real son, Zhang Ruachen, died in bed three days ago. After Zhang Ruachen's rebirth, for him, concubine Lin was only a stranger. But after he woke up three days ago, she took care of him in every way. In his previous life, Zhang Ruachen had never seen his mother, but now that he had awakened in this alien body, he could feel the warmth of maternal love. Mother said worriedly that Zhang Ruachen has been waking up from nightmares for three times and pronounces the name Kai Yao every time. My mother wanted to ask who she was, but screams were heard outside. Yun, the Jade Palace maid, was shouting. The woman blocked the entrance of the army to the palace and said what they were going to do. After all, this is the Jade Palace, how dare they, who allowed them to enter here. Unable to stand it, the eighth prince, the son of the king of Yunwu County and concubine Zio, hit the maid, said that as a slave dared to block the way of the prince, was she really looking for her death? Then concubine Lin ran out and asked Yun what happened here. Seeing the beaten girl, Lin was scared and ran up to her, asking what had happened here. After getting up, concubine Lin sternly said, already addressing his highness the eighth prince, that this is a jade palace, and despite the fact that he is a prince, he cannot break in here like that. To which the prince said that it was the queen's order. From today, the chambers of the concubine Lin and the ninth prince will be the side palace of Xi, according to the hierarchy of the imperial palaces of China. The side palace was practically a place of exile. Unwanted or guilty concubines and maids were sent there. The mistress of the jade palace from today will be his mother, concubine Zio. Surprised, concubine Lin said that did the queen really want them to leave the jade palace quickly? The woman agreed and added as she left that tomorrow, she and Zhang Ruachen would move to a side palace. But the eighth prince stopped them and said that his mother said that she wanted to enter the jade palace tonight. Therefore, he asks Lady Concubine Lin to leave for the side palace immediately. Fearing for her son, Lin told the eighth prince that he knew that his ninth brother was seriously ill, and it was the middle of the night, it was very cold outside. What if? But the prince did not let her finish, saying that many pitiful people had died in this world, but not all of them were worthy of regret. If the ninth brother is so sickly and weak, then why should he live at all? Horrified, Lin said that he was his ninth brother. But then Zhang Ruachen came out and told his mother that there was no need to beg them. They're leaving now. The mother immediately ran up to her son, asking how he got up. It's so cold outside, so why did he come out? Zhang Ruachen replied to his mother that they didn't need to beg them, sooner or later. And then, addressing everyone, he said that they would return here. And they packed up and left. Fate is predetermined, and every ordinary mortal must fulfill his duty. Zhang Ruachen from his previous life had never experienced such suffering. Everyone understands that concubine Lin has lost her position. Zhang Ruachen is afraid that they no longer have a place in the royal palace. Respect, resources, connections. In this cruel world, only the strong get everything, and for the weak there is only one thing left. The road to death. After arriving at the side palace, Zhang Ruachen went back to bed. He asked his mother that tomorrow was the day of the sacrifice ceremony. Tomorrow at the ceremony, Zhang Ruachen intends to open the seal of power 
and become a warrior that will prove his prowess. The seal of power is a kind of qualification given by the gods to people for improvement and tempering. One who has not opened the seal of power will never be able to receive true Kai and become truly strong. The eighth prince opened the seal of power at the age of 10 and has now reached the level of Huangji. Concubine Lin thought that Jiang Ruachen was already 16 years old, and he still hadn't opened the seal of power, and after 16 years it was almost impossible to open this seal. Even if her son can open the seal, he has already missed the best age for training, and is unlikely to achieve great results. But the mother told her son that she believed in him, and already leaving, she told Jiang Ruachen to go to bed, because tomorrow he needs to be at the ceremony. The prince agreed with her and told her to go to bed early too. Then the mother remembered and decided to ask her son again who Kai Yao was, whose name he shouted in his sleep. To which Zhang Ruachen replied that no one, my mother just imagined it. The woman accepted his answer, but warned her son, saying that in the future Zhang Ruachen should never utter the name Kai Yao, even in his sleep. After all, the one who united the nine empires, founded the central empire and commands all the lands of Kunlong, is the Empress Kai Yao and calling the empress by name is disrespectful. If someone hears this, then the one who called the empress will be executed. To which Zhang Ruachen told his mother to rest, because from now on this will not happen again. From now on, Zhang Ruachen himself will become her nightmare. Yunwu is one of the counties in the east of Kunlong. Every year, all the districts must pay tribute and pay taxes to the first central empire. The person running the county is called the prince of the county. The sacrifice ceremony is a nationwide celebration of Yunwu. During the holiday, children received their sacred mark. The eighth prince, addressing Zhang Ruachen, said that he was already 16. Even if he attends the sacrifice ceremony, he still won't get the mark. He didn't really come to disgrace himself. The sixth prince of Yunwu County said that they say, thanks to the king, nine children were born and each of them is unique. Eight of them have already received sacred marks, unlike Zhang Ruachen, and he is already 16. Why is he still alive? What's the point? Supporting the sixth brother, the eighth said that despite the fact that royal blood flows through their veins, it doesn't give them much trouble to get a mark. Who knows what it's like for a commoner? Perhaps this is the scum and not the son of their father. The sixth prince agreed with his brother and said that he had heard about it. Zhang Ruachen is a disgrace to the royal family. Listening to all this, Zhang Ruachen can barely hold on. He's trying to calm himself down. After all, until he becomes strong enough, you can't waste your time on useless arguments. In a previous life, his father gave him this white spinel for his 16th birthday. But he did not expect that he would have this crystal after 800 years. Does this have anything to do with his rebirth? Then the commander-in-chief of Yunwu County announced that the sacrifice ceremony was starting right now. The man sacrificed an animal and the ceremony began. Light appeared from the cauldron, it was the sacred marks that began to fly apart. The first sacred mark flew to General Zhu's youngest son. But the boy is only six years old and has already received his mark. This flaming sacred mark belongs to the fourth class. The boy is just incredible. He has a wonderful future ahead of him. The boy's father said it was fine. This is his son, Zhu Lion. The man invites everyone to join the banquet, which he arranges there. Meanwhile, the sacred marks continued to scatter. One of the parents said that her son had received a sacred mark. The man whose child also received the tag said that his child has a promising future. He's been waiting for this for so long. Meanwhile, the ceremony is coming to an end. Will Zhang Ruachen get his mark? And then the last mark flies out and flies straight to the young man. The crowd began to chatter. Someone asked if it wasn't the ninth prince. But is it possible to get a label after 16 years? Another picked up, saying that everyone knows that he has poor health since childhood, so it's not so easy for him. The sixth and eighth princes were also surprised. The eighth asked that is it possible, and the sixth asked that he hadn't imagined it. Meanwhile, the old man reported to the queen that the ninth prince had received his sacred mark. The queen ordered the prince to be brought to her. My mother was very happy, telling Zhang Ruachen that he had finally succeeded. He did it. Then an old man came up to them and, congratulating them on receiving the mark, said that the queen had invited them to her to personally determine the class of the newly received mark. The mother, blocking her son, was very frightened. Zhang Ruachen noticed this and thought that it looked like the queen was very cunning. And the two of them, accompanied by the old man, went to the queen. The queen said that his majesty had retired to purify himself. This year she is in charge of the ceremony. And turning to the commander-in-chief, she asked him that he had already decided on the class to which the mark of the ninth prince belongs. The commander-in-chief replied to her that the Bible of sacred marks contains all the marks of martial artists. 
but none of them corresponds to the mark of the ninth prince. Then the queen said that if she couldn't be identified, it meant she didn't have a class. The prince is already 16. He will not achieve anything more. Therefore, in order to preserve the cleansing resources of the royal family, the ninth prince will be given only one bottle of bone marrow washing liquid. To which concubine Lin replied that when the seventh prince received his mark, he was given 12 bottles of liquid. Why is Zhang Ruachen only one? The queen told her that the seventh prince received the seventh grade mark when he was only three years old. How can she compare them? One of the princes said that their seventh brother is the queen's son. He inherited the queen's powerful bloodline. No one in Yunwu County can compare to him. The stability and prosperity of the district in the future depends on him. His brother's fingertip is a thousand times more important than the ninth prince's life. But concubine Lin did not let up. She said that when the eighth prince received the sacred mark, he was given four bottles of bone marrow washing liquid. The queen said that the more talented a person is, the more resources he will receive. Among all the prince is the ninth weakest, so, of course, he will receive the least. My mother tried to object to the king again, but the queen's patience snapped. Angry, the woman said that this was her last word. If concubine Lin dares to challenge her, she will fail again. Hearing this, Jang Ruachin was surprised, thinking that it meant something had happened before. He looked at his mother. It looks like his mother went through a lot of difficulties. Jang Ruachin must work hard to help his mother become stronger. Then a maid came in and said, addressing the ninth prince, that he needed to come and collect his reward. Jang Ruachin grabbed his reward and, turning to the exit, told her mother that let's go home. My mother obeyed, and they went home together. The queen said after the ninth prince that in three months the annual assessment of the royal family, he should work hard. He is obliged to do everything possible to reach the stage of bone marrow washing and exit from the channels. The seventh prince told the queen that it wasn't possible in just three months. The ninth brother will need at least a year to do this. Zhang Ruachin heard everything and thought, just wait. He won't disappoint them. Zhang Ruachin started training. The first stage of self-improvement is to uncover the Kai pool. As expected, this body is very weak, so it can open a pool with the size of an egg. And this is too little to store true Kai. Well, the size of the pool will increase as Zhang Ruachin improves. He will just concentrate on establishing the practice of meridians. The first stage is to reach the Yellow Kingdom. The ninth prince will prove that he can reach the stage of bone marrow washing in less than three months. No, he will do it today and become a warrior. He was only one step away from the first meridian. He will succeed. Zhang Ruachin was able to do it. He has reached the stage of bone marrow washing and channel breakthrough. The ninth prince is probably at the initial level of the yellow realm right now. The martial art practice was divided into yellow, black, earthly and heavenly realms. And each kingdom is divided into seven levels. Initial, intermediate, advanced, dawn, intermediate, final and final. After building meridians and learning true Kai at the initial, intermediate, and advanced levels, the strength in the body increases. Many warriors at an advanced level could develop the bull power technique. And after that, when the dawn level is reached, the power of four bulls technique, which was four times stronger than the previous one. Jang Ruachin should reach the advanced level in three months. He will definitely prove that he is worth something at the annual assessment. The ninth prince will not give up until he saves his mother's honor. The mother is very worried about her son. Watching him, she sees that her son is very focused on improving, so she does not interfere with him. All she can do now is provide her son with the best resources and environment possible. Zhang Ruachin trains non-stop. After nine circulations, the amount of his true Kai increased. The ninth prince uses exercises from the Emperor Ming's Empyrean scripture, and the absorption rate is naturally very fast. But it's still too slow for him. It would be very good if Zhang Ruachin had a spiritual crystal, then his practice would speed up. Spiritual crystal, spinel, created by spiritual Kai. It can be natural, found in deposits underground, or acquired, hidden in the body of a wild animal. This crystal is very precious. And then Zhang Ruachin remembered that he had something similar to this spiritual crystal. He took it out of his pocket and wondered if it could be a spiritual crystal. Spinel of space and time. Strange. The ninth prince has never seen such symbols in his life, but he still understands them. Zhang Ruachin had injected True Kai into White Spinel many times in the past, but he didn't have any symbols then. Zhang Ruachin wondered if it was possible that this was not True Kai, but some kind of natural force. In that case, the sacred mark of the ninth prince has some kind of natural significance, which is exactly what corresponds to this spinel of space and time. 
In nature, 90% of spiritual crystals do not have an individual essence. But nevertheless, there are several with special attributes. Examples include Flaming Spirit Crystal, Ice of the Depths, Lightning Strike, and Blood Spirit. All these crystals can help warriors with the Sacred Mark, which has the same attributes, develop faster. Zhang Ruachen knew a lot in his vulgar life, but he had never heard of the spiritual crystal of space and time. After all, humans can't control time, and even gods have to obey these rules. The ninth prince placed a spirit crystal in his palm. Then he was pulled inside him and fell face first to the floor. He cried out that it was a good thing that he had become stronger, otherwise that fragile body would not have survived such a fall. When he recovered from the fall, he looked around and wondered what had happened, where he is now and how he got here. Jiang Ryuachen noticed a scroll on the floor and decided to open it. But it was useless. The ninth prince wiped the sweat from his forehead with his hand and said that it wouldn't open and he couldn't even move it. Okay, first Jiang Ruachen decided to see what was in the book. The book had the same mark as the sacred mark. The prince opened the book and said that this is it, this is the transcript of the holy monk Sumi. He was the last owner of the spinel of space and time. He had the same sacred mark as Zhang Ruachen. According to the holy monk Zumi, since ancient times, only two people have had this mark. And if you count the ninth prince himself, then there are three. And this monk died more than a hundred thousand years ago. The place where Zhang Ruachen is now is the inner space of his spinel, and time flows differently here. Three days in this space is equal to one day in the world. And this means that the prince will have much more time than the dregs. It's just wonderful. Zhang Ruachen accidentally skipped the page, and when he returned, he saw the inscription reach the dawn level. Most likely, there are many exercises recorded here, and they may relate to the practice of space and time. The ninth prince must reach the dawn level as soon as possible and see what is here. But then his stomach rumbled. With the spinel of space and time, he has a much better chance of reaching an advanced level in just three months. So Zhang Ruachen can take his time. He's very hungry right now. The ninth prince returned to the palace. He was already sitting in the kitchen and eating. But after he became a warrior, Zhang Ruachen didn't have enough of a regular diet. What should he do now? His mother told him that since her son had received the sacred mark, now he should not eat ordinary food. She gave him 10 blood pills to drink, but if his son needs more, then his mother will find a way out. Zhang Ruachen asked his mother that one pill costs 10 silver coins, 10, 50 coins. Where did she get so much money? Then the maid betrayed his mother, saying that Lin had exchanged her favorite golden hairpin for ten blood pills, to which the mother told her son that it didn't matter. As long as he is a real warrior, mother will always support her son, even if she has to sell all her jewelry. Zhang Ruachen told mother not to worry. He will do his best to become a warrior. The prince protect his mother. Zhang Ruachen cannot tell his mother that he has already become a warrior. It happened too fast. If the princes and queens found out about this, they would definitely find a way to frame Zhang Ruachen and his mother. The ninth prince is still very weak. He just needs to get stronger. Yun was combing concubine Lin's hair and said that she had heard that it was said that a warrior should not only take pills, but also develop martial skills to open the meridians. Lin replied that she knew, but even the lowest level exercises cost 500 silver coins. She can't afford it yet. Besides, the queen definitely won't give Zhang Ruachen access to the library, so it looks like they only have one option. Yun asked her if she was really going to turn to the Lin family. But after all, the woman interrupted communication with them three years ago. Was she sure they would help the ninth prince? Lin was completely desperate and said that for the sake of her son, she was ready to kneel down and ask them for forgiveness. Yun tells her that, but she's not to blame for what happened. Three days later, Zhang Ruachen is training in the courtyard. Training in the inner space for nine days paid off. He finally learned the first movement of the dragon and elephant Prajni Palm. At the moment, the technique is perfect for Zhang Ruachen, so he needs to strengthen his body even more. The Kai pool is already full and the ninth prince can develop a new meridian. But where can he get another bottle of bone marrow washing liquid? Then Zhang Ruachen called Yun and asked him what he was doing here. His mother is looking for him. To which the prince replied that he had gone out to get some fresh air. Then asked Yun how her condition was. The maid replied that the humble servants could not afford normal medicines, so the recovery would take another three months. The ninth prince is very kind. And she asked the prince to follow her, because my mother was already waiting. Today they go outside the palace. Zhang Ruachen asked where exactly. The girl replied that she was going to see Ning Shan. They haven't seen each other for a long time. But the prince doesn't know who Ning Shan is. But judging from Sister Yun's words, it seems that Ruo Chen had a special attitude towards her. He wondered what Lin Manor was. Isn't his mother's last name Lin? 
If the mother is from a prominent family, then why don't they support her? Why does she continue to be bullied at the Prince County estate? Something must have happened. The mother told her son that she was sure he was looking forward to meeting Ning Shan. And since Zhang Ruachen had received the sacred mark, they would now have more things to talk about. So the prince should not miss the chance. And Zhang Ruachen thought who is this Ning Shan? And the behavior of mother and sister Yun is very strange. They arrived instead of the destination. The man who met them told Ms. Lin to follow him. And the ninth prince can do anything while he waits. Sister Yun suggested that the prince go to see Ning Shan. She is most likely at the training stadium where all the young people of the Lin family study. Zhang Ruachen agreed and thanked Yun. The Lin family is considered great in Yunwu County. Seeing Ning Shan, Zhang Ruachen thought that the discharged power was released. This is the realm of the sword following the heart. Her martial arts skills have reached the intermediate level of the Yellow Realm, which is much better than the Eighth Prince. Then Zhang Ruachen was noticed by those who also watched Ning Shan's training and they began to talk among themselves. Someone said it was the ninth prince. He also recently received a sacred mark. Another said that what can he achieve? He is already 16. And he also came to see Ning Shan. No shame, no conscience. And this guy also heard that the prince was in love with Ning Shan's sister. What a face he will have when he finds out about the engagement. The first man said that sister Ning Shan and Selma Prince are the best couple. Hearing all this, Jang Ruachen can barely hold himself. Meanwhile, the ninth prince's mother came to her elder brother to ask for help. The brother said that since the ninth prince had received his mark, he had to go to the pavilion of the prince's estate of the district, where the collection of books is kept. Why did she come to him? Concubine Lin began to beg her brother, saying that could he give the ninth prince a book on improving skills. He's his nephew. Out of anger, slamming the table, the older brother told his sister that she had no right to discuss family ties with him. Three years ago, he came to the estate and also begged her. Why didn't Chen Yu save her nephew? Chen Yu wanted to say something, but her brother didn't even listen to her. He turned around and told her to leave. The family has long since severed ties with her, and don't let him come back. My mother fell on her knees and said that how could a brother be so cruel? She wants to see her father. To which the brother replied that he was in Omen Ridge. She won't be able to see him right now. And also, the engagement of the seventh prince and Ning Shan will soon take place. Have Cheng Yu tell the ninth prince to stay away from Ning Shan from now on. Concubine Lin was stunned by this news and said that her brother knew how much Chen liked Ning Shan. How much will it hurt him when he finds out? And besides, why the seventh prince? To which the elder brother replied that the seventh prince was a genius. No one in Yunwu County can match or even catch up with his skills, let alone the ninth prince. Their union will greatly benefit the Lin family. The engagement of Ning Shan and the seventh prince will be of great benefit. But Cheng Yu still stands his ground and asks his brother that Ning Shan is ready for this. Does her brother really think that she will be happy to get married in order to benefit the family? To which the older brother says that the sister is wrong. It was Ning Shan's own decision. Meanwhile, Ning Shan had finished her training. Everyone was delighted with her. As expected from the blessed girl, Ning Shan approached Jiang Ruachen and said that it had been a long time since we had seen each other, cousin. She had heard that he had received the sacred mark. Someone from the crowd shouted that it was so. But the queen said she didn't have a class. Therefore, his mark cannot be compared to the sacred mark of Ning Shan. The girl told Jiang Ruachen that the fact that he got the mark at 16 was a blessing from heaven. And although the ninth prince will not have good fighting skills, the mark will still help him strengthen his body. And he will become healthier, be able to live like a normal person. The girl was close to Zhang Ruachen. They are from two completely different worlds. He should give up and stop pursuing Ning Shan. Zhang Ruachen replied to the girl that he would work hard and try to catch up with her. Hearing this, Ning Shan thought that she knew that he would still run after her. She decided to tell him directly to stop chasing her. Ning Shan told the prince that she was now at the intermediate level of the Yellow Realm, which was very close to the final one. As for Zhang Ruachen, he will most likely never be able to reach the intermediate level. He needs to train step by step. Don't make inappropriate requests and don't take on more than he can do. Otherwise, Zhang Ruachen will suffer from his own actions. Zhang Ruachen thought that the girl was very arrogant. Why did Ruo Chen like a person like her? And Ning Shan continued to say that there was something else. She hopes he will take it normally. In three months, when the prince of the district finishes with the purification, her engagement to the seventh prince will take place. And I thought that Zhang Ruachen must have lost heart now. Shouts were heard from the crowd. Someone said that this is already interesting. 
The other one said that the ninth prince wouldn't faint from rage after such a thing, right? If the man guessed right, then it will be funny. Ning Shan and Zhang Ruachen stood and looked at each other. Then the prince turned around and congratulated on the engagement, saying that now they are doubly connected. The crowd was disappointed by this answer. Someone shouted that it was boring. The other one said it was a pity, but he really wanted to see how the prince was going crazy. Ning Shan also didn't understand how this was possible, and she shouted at the back of Zhang Ruachen who was leaving, that he didn't even want to know the reasons. To which the prince replied that he would attend the ceremony to personally congratulate them. And if the girl has nothing more to say, then Zhang Ruachen would like to find his mother. When the prince saw his mother, he called out to her. Approaching her, Zhang Ruachen saw that the mother was crying and asked what happened. But mother said it was all right. Then her brother appeared and said that here is a set for learning skills called Thai formulas. Although this is not even an average level but the kit will help him reach the stage of bone marrow washing and channel breakthrough. This should be enough for Zhang Ruachen. After all, they share the same meridians. The ninth prince can take these bottles of bone marrow washing liquid along with him. The mother was very happy and told her son to thank his uncle. And Zhang Ruachen now understood why his mother was crying. She must have gone through so much humiliation just to get it all. The ninth prince told his mother that they didn't need handouts from the Lin family. The crowd was angry at Zhang Ruachen's words and said that who does he think he is? Ning Shan, addressing her father, said that Zhang Ruachen was acting strangely. To which her father replied that since he had received the sacred mark, it was natural that the ninth prince had become a little inflexible. And he asked his daughter not to pay attention to him, but rather focus on herself. Ning Shan agreed with her father. And I thought that my father was right. In any case, they are destined to belong to completely different worlds. To get to the middle level, Zhang Ruachen needs more bone marrow washing fluid. But one bottle costs at least 2,000 silver coins. Where can the ninth prince get such a lot of money? And then Zhang Ruachen came up with something. But that's right. The prince can write down all the martial arts techniques he has read in his past life and sell them. Practical skills and combat techniques have five stages, man, saint, spirit, king and god. The higher the martial art class, the more difficult it is to practice. The scripture of the Empyrean Emperor Ming and the Prajna of the Dragon and the Elephant are things of the sacred level. Therefore they cannot be sold on the territory of Kunlong. Jiang Ruachen still remembers some of the lower class martial techniques and exercises. But even low class technicians will raise the ears of the entire Yunwu district. Jiang Ruachen began to draw. Martial arts books are not so easy to copy or print. The ninth prince still remembers the lowest grade of the holy stage from his past life. At the moment, the middle class of this stage is its limit. But in the book Sacred Sword skills they can be considered the best. Even for a great family like Lin, the strongest technique is a low grade technique, and will consist of one or two sets, at most, as unique in the family. This book will pay for itself. After drawing the book, Jiang Ruachen went to sell it. But the guard stopped him and asked where the ninth prince was going at such a late hour. Zhang Ruachen replied that he wanted to visit the Lin estate and see Ning Shan. And I asked the guard if she could open the gate. The guards opened the gate for him and let him through. But behind the ninth prince's back, they began to talk. The first guard said why such rudeness. If Zhang Ruachen wasn't the son of the prince of Yunwu County, he would have died long ago. The second mind says that Ning Shan, the most gifted child of the Lin family will be engaged to the seventh prince, and the guard sees that Zhang Ruachen still does not give up. What an idiot he is. The ninth prince took out a cloak for disguise from the sacred crystal. The combat market was divided into five areas, pharmacy, gun store, central auction, animal and slave markets. To some extent, the battle market determined all the ups and downs of Yunwu, so the county was very strict with his leadership. Only warriors or nobles had the right to enter this market. Only at the auction can Zhang Ruachen get the maximum profit. The ninth prince entered the building. A woman met him there and asked what she could do to help him. The prince replied that he needed a deacon from the central auction. The woman said she would, but unfortunately, he is usually busy with VIP clients, and asked the young man to wait. And she wondered who he was. He wanted to meet with the abbot immediately after his arrival. This young man should be taken seriously. Later, the woman brought the abbot. Old man Wu also paid attention to Zhang Ruachen's shoes. He was wearing gilded kilin boots, and only people from the royal palace can wear them. The abbot showed the prince where to go. 
In fact, Zhang Ruachen deliberately put on these shoes to impress them, as a book with low-level sword techniques would be coveted by many. The Ninth Prince is not strong enough to protect this book personally. Later, the prince was approached by the chief appraiser, and the young man told him that he wanted to auction the treasure. Zhang Ruachen took out the book's sacred sword skills and said that this book contains low-grade holy stage sword techniques. The appraiser, taking the book, said that everything is really as the young man says. The old man told the appraiser that in that case, the initial bid for this book would be at least 200,000 silver coins. But first the buyer must confirm that these are really low-class techniques, otherwise the auction will be invalid. Zhang Ruachen said that he agreed that everything should go according to the rules of the auction house. A few hours later, the ninth prince was approached by a woman who met him and said that his book had been bought by the head of the Lin family for 1,240,000 silver coins. Zhang Ruachen was surprised to think that this was who bought it. Later, the old man brought the head of the Lin family and his daughter to the prince and, pointing to the young man, said that this was a seller of sacred sword skills. The head of the Lin family also noticed Jiang Ruachen's shoes and thought that he was wearing gilded Killin shoes of the royal family. Is he an important person in the palace? And introduced himself, saying that he was Lin Fan Sen, the head of the Lin family, and asked if he could find out the seller's name, to which Jiang Ruachen replied that there was no need. He showed the head the brief formulas of the sacred sword skills, as well as pictures with positions and asked to confirm them. After looking at the drawings, Lin Fang Sen realized that the young man was right. These were indeed low-grade positions of the holy stage. Moreover, these drawings were made by a successor from the heavenly kingdom. The Lin family's foundation will become much stronger with this book. And I told the young man that this book with techniques is wonderful. What a real purchase. And he thanked them for such a treasure, but, apologizing, said that they were leaving now. After leaving the central auction, Ning Shan told her father that he reminded her of someone. Her father said she was right, but Lin Fan Sen had probably already seen him in the palace. But in any case, this young man is not so simple. His real personality can be frightening. Ning Shan didn't understand what her father was talking about. Then her father explained to her that the drawings were still fresh, most likely they were made today. But nevertheless, the one who can write the skills of the sacred sword must be at a high level of the heavenly kingdom. Ning Shan was stunned by this, because even her grandfather had not reached this stage. And she has a question. If he was someone important in the palace, he wouldn't need so many silver coins. Why did he sell the holy stage sword techniques? Lin Fan Sen said that there are eight martial arts in the royal family, but the sacred sword skills do not belong to any of them. But they should not dig into this, since they cannot afford to do something against a person from the heavenly kingdom. Ning Shan has the mark of the sacred sword, so she will be the one to study according to this book. If his daughter can master the first art of sword technique, she will definitely shine at the annual assessment. The girl accepted her father's request. Everything Zhang Ruachen received from the auction was transferred to the VI card. He exchanged 20,000 silver coins for spiritual crystals and took the remainder of 8,000 coins for himself. He entered the store and, after greeting, said that he could be given 20 bottles of bone marrow washing liquid, 200 granules of blood pills, some refining powder and energy pills. Refining powder and energy pills will help Zhang Ruachen speed up the process of his self-improvement. They're expensive, but it's worth it. And he almost forgot. He asked the seller to give him more ointment for regeneration. Zhang Ruachen returned home. There was a maid Yun in the courtyard, noticing the ninth prince. She asked that he still hadn't gone to bed, and it was already very late. Zhang Ruachen said that he bought her an ointment, it will help her arm recover faster. The girl asked him where he got such money from, because even the lowest class of regenerating ointment costs at least 200 silver coins. To which Zhang Ruachen replied that he had secrets that he could not reveal now, and he hopes that she will hide it from her mother, too. The girl said it was good and she thought that it looks like the ninth prince got a great opportunity. Yun hopes that Zhang Ruachen will reach heights in the martial art in the future. Then Zhang Ruachen said that he was interested in something. Therefore, he hopes that sister Yun will be able to tell him about it. The ninth prince's mother is the sister of Head Lin. So why did she sever all ties with her family? What happened three years ago? The girl told him that they had hidden it from him before because his health was very weak. But since Zhang Ruachen received the sacred mark, Sister Yun thinks that the Ninth Prince has the right to know the truth. Sister Yun said that Zhang Ruachen must still remember Lin Chen Yu, a genius from the Lin family. He is his cousin, and also the eldest son of the head of the Lin family. Already at the age of 17, he completed the Yellow Area. 
but three years ago, Lin Chen Yu insulted an even more exceptional genius. They broke his legs and sent him to the heavenly prison. Zhang Ruochen, hearing this, asked the question, how could this happen? The Lin family is considered one of the great families of Yumu County, who could afford to imprison the Lin family's great genius. Was this person even more influential? Yun replied that it was. The person Lin Chen Yu insulted was the seventh prince, the brightest star of Yumu County. Any person fades in comparison with him. After Lin Chen Yu was taken into custody, the head of the Lin family immediately came to the palace and begged Queen Lin to appeal. If Lin Chen Yu could be saved, the Lin family was willing to pay any amount. They immediately went to the king, but the queen stopped them and they had an argument. The queen was so furious that she ordered Lady Lin to be flogged 30 times, and when the flogging was over, the lady was on the verge of death. Zhang Ruochen was furious at what he heard and asked that did King Yun really care about what happened. With tears in her eyes, Sister Yun said that the seventh prince is the most talented of all the royal sons. The king loves him very much. The king found out the truth, Lin Chen Yu was to blame for everything. He almost killed the seventh prince. The king was furious and thought that the queen did not know what to do. The Lin family didn't dare offend the seventh prince and the queen, so they snapped at Zhang Ruochen's mother, thinking that her inability to negotiate was the reason for the loss of the family's genius. And after that, they no longer perceived her as a family member. Zhang Ruochen asked if Lin Chen Yu had been executed, to which Yun replied that no, his majesty the seventh prince did not let him get off so easily. Lin Chen Yu was brought to the palace, turned into a eunuch and sent into slavery. Zhang Ruochen was very surprised by this news. After all, the first genius of the Lin family became a eunuch and a slave of the enemy. For the Lin family, this is a huge shame. But Sister Yun does not understand why the head of the Lin family gave Ning Shan, his daughter, in marriage to the seventh prince, after all the humiliations that this family went through. To which Zhang Ruochen replies that, given the seventh prince's talent, he will definitely inherit the throne, and if the Lin family wants to strengthen itself in Yunwu County, then they should restore their relationship with the prince and marriage for something like this is just the best option. Since the Lin family's first genius became the seventh prince's servant, it must be that the relationship between the Lin family and the seventh prince is not so friendly. Most likely, Lin Chen Yu himself contributed to this marriage. But these are just Zhang Ruochen's guesses. And the prince informed Yunner that he would go to rest. And she should come back soon, too. The discovery of the divine battle seal really changed his majesty the ninth prince. If Empress Lin found out about this, she would be very happy. Zhang Ruochen went to that space again to continue improving his body and strength. In this world, without great power, a person will be nothing. And it will achieve nothing. There is no time to waste. Tonight Zhang Ruochen simply has to open the third meridian to reach the middle of the yellow area. The Sutra of the Nine Divine Emperors can cultivate 36 meridians. In a previous life, Zhang Ruochen cultivated 33 meridians and was practically invulnerable among his peers. But now, in the world, even the strongest Kai Yao has only 31 meridians. If the Ninth Prince wants to break through to the last stage of the yellow region, then in addition, he needs to open three more meridians, and Zhang Ruochen managed to open the third meridian. Now, in order to advance to the last stages of the yellow area, Zhang Ruochen will need a full supply of Kai. He needs Kai accumulation pills to replenish his Kai supply faster. The ninth prince has only opened three meridians. 70% of the Dan Kai is not able to fully restore his reserve. But fortunately, Zhang Ruochen still has silver coins left. If he manages to improve his cultivation quickly, then it's worth it to spend some money. But this is not enough, the ninth prince also needs a body cleansing bath to strengthen his body faster. Otherwise, Zhang Ruochen will not be able to use the purified true Kai better. A few hours later, the ninth prince made himself a cleansing bath. But the powder that cleanses the body turned out to be so strong that his skin and flesh seemed to change their shape. But only by going through suffering can you become a human being. The time stone also gives Zhang Ruochen three times more time to train, and this is his unique advantage. It's only been 10 days outside, but it's been a whole month in the crystal. And during this time, the Ninth Prince has reached a full supply of true Kai in the yellow area. It's just a real miracle. After leaving the bath, Zhang Ruochen, looking at himself in the mirror, said that medicinal baths are really very effective, and hardening the body also played an important role. Today, the Ninth Prince will be able to prepare for the last stage of the Yellow Area. Then Sister Yunner knocked on his door and said that she had completed the task assigned to her. As Zhang Ruochen said, the girl bought all the jewelry that the Ninth Prince's mother had pawned. 
the prince said that if in the future his mother decides to pawn her jewelry again, Yunner can quietly buy them back. But the girl asked the prince that maybe they should tell the whole truth to his mother. If she finds out that Jang Ruachin has become a real martial artist, then she will be very happy. To which the ninth prince replied that he wanted to surprise his mother at the end of the annual test. And besides, Jang Ryuachin's current cultivation level is not high enough, the prince must become even stronger. And he asked Sister Yunner to make sure that no one bothered him today. The girl said that she would guard the door today, and if someone dares to interfere with the ninth prince's training, she will stop him even at the cost of her own life. Yunner believes that the ninth prince will succeed. Then Jang Ryuachin moved on to training. The opening of the fourth and fifth meridians was successful, but the sixth meridian is still a little short. We should try. How can the ninth prince not try? He ate the pill again and there was a breakthrough to the final stage of the yellow area. Later, Jang Ruachin left the room. Yunner was guarding him outside. Seeing the ninth prince, the girl asked, what did his highness do? To which the prince decided to show his skills. Calm is a lying elephant, moving like a wild dragon, and applied the dragon elephant spiritual palm technique. Seeing this, Yunner burst into tears of happiness and said that the ninth prince really succeeded. Jiang Ruachin is perhaps even more talented in martial arts than His Majesty the Seventh Prince. Kingshuan Courtyard is one of the top three shops in the city of Dan. Everyone is advised to go there and look around. Jiang Ruachin called out and asked him if he would like to purchase pills for Kai accumulation. The Ninth Prince wondered how this old man managed to sneak up on him unnoticed. And the old man introduced himself. The man said that he was Mo Hanlin and he was the owner of this store. The ninth prince also introduced himself and said that he would like to purchase 50 pills to accumulate Kai, and 30 pills to cleanse the body. But Jiang Ruachin is not sure if the Kingshuan Pavilion has all this in stock. Mo Hanlin was surprised and thought that an ordinary martial artist could not afford Kai accumulation pills and body cleansing pills so easily. Besides, the ninth prince needed such a large number of these pills, this is a real rarity. And the old man himself told Zhang Ryuachen that if Master Chen had been somewhere else, perhaps he really would not have been able to purchase so many pills. But they, in the Kingshuan Pavilion, have enough of them to more than satisfy all the desires of Master Chen. Mo Hanlin counted Zhang Ryuachen's entire order and said it came out at 80,000 silver coins. Master Chen is buying a large batch of goods, he will be happy to offer the prince a discount. Taking into account this discount, the order goes for 72,000 silver coins. Jiang Ryuachin replied that in the future he would buy pills only from this old man. From these words, Mo Hanlin directly beamed and asked if the ninth prince wanted to buy something else. To which Jiang Ryuachin replied that this was indeed the case, but most likely the old man did not sell such things. Then Mo Huntlin asked, what does the prince want to buy a good weapon? Jiang Ryuachin said that the owner has a diamond eye. Then Mo Hanting said that they have several pavilions that deal with weapons. At that moment, a young man came in and the owner told Zhang Ruachin that he would see him off. And already addressing this young man, he told Zhao Tzu, that's the name of this young man, to take the ninth prince to the owner's wife and tell her that this is a customer they value very much, and that he should be given an appropriate discount. To which Zhao Tzu replied that no way, he does not want to see the owner's wife, who is able to take his soul from a man. If this young man sees her, then he's finished. Mo Hanting said that he was still a boy, and he had nothing to be afraid of. If Zhao Zai refuses, then this month he can forget about the Kai accumulation pills. To which the young man said that no, he would go. And turning to Zhang Ruachen, he said that he asked to follow him. The ninth prince said goodbye to the shopkeeper. Walking to the gun shop, Zhang Ruachen asked Zhao Zai that he had said that the owner's wife was so beautiful that she could take a man's soul. The young man replied that he was a demon woman who could cause a heart attack with just a glance. And she was married to seven bosses. And what's more, all seven died on their wedding night. And this woman appropriated all their possessions. Even Zhao Zai's boss recently worked for her. They arrived at the gun city. They were met at the entrance by a man who said that he had already sent a man to the courtyard to inform the woman about their arrival and asked her to wait. Kingshuan Kinya, the owner of the pavilion or a female demon, asked that the buyer was introduced by Mo Hanlin, the elder of the clan or the head of the family. She's a little tired, so she's going to finish for today. The girl who brought the information to her said that Zhang Ruachin is an ordinary teenager who looks about 16 or 17 years old. Kingshuan Kinya said that it sounded interesting and her fatigue suddenly disappeared. Let the girl ask him to go to the inner hall. Zhang Ruachin was invited to the inner hall and Kingshuan Kin came to him. The woman said that Jiang Ruachen was her dear guest and asked that Master Chen from Kingshuan Pavilion and what kind of weapons he would like to acquire. Jiang Ruachen must already have an idea. 
After seeing Kingshuan, the ninth prince thought that, fortunately, his mental strength is quite high and he is not so easy to seduce. And he said that the sword, preferably a true battle treasure level sword. After hearing this, Kingshuan thought that it was not surprising that Mo Hanlin wanted to see him in person. It's impressive. How can a teenager have such mental strength? And she said that since young Master Chen is an honored guest of the Kingshuan Pavilion, she will personally escort him to the armory. They came to the armory. Zhao Zai said that none of the men who entered the armory alone with the boss's wife returned and touched. The young man is afraid that Mr. Chen will not be lucky either. Ordinary people use ordinary weapons, and only a martial artist can unleash the full potential of a true combat weapon. Based on the class of materials used in the creation of weapons and the number of inscriptions on weapons of the level of a true martial treasure, the path of a true martial treasure can be divided into nine classes. The first is the lowest, and the ninth is the highest. Kingshuan Kin said that Zhang Ruachen could choose any sword he liked, and if he had any questions, he could ask her everything. The ninth prince thanked the hostess. He started to look around and saw a sword called Deep Abyss. The hostess said that this is an ancient sword with almost a thousand years of history. It is very heavy and unsurpassably sharp. The material of this sword is also very special. No expert has yet been able to determine what it was forged from. And if the sword had not been damaged, then it would have been a true combat artifact of at least the seventh order, or even higher. But unfortunately, all the writing on the blade is broken. If Zhang Ruachen wants to buy it, then Kingshuan Kin is willing to sell it at the price of a true treasure weapon of the First Order. The Ninth Prince immediately asked how much it was worth. The hostess replied that 1,000 silver coins. Zhang Ruachen said he was taking it. Kingshuan Kin herself thought that this was the sword that Jai Yao gave her 800 years ago. When a man dies, the same thing happens to his sword. And since she, Kingshuan Kin, happened to be reborn, then the sword was also reborn. A deep abyss, she will let him purify his life and appear again in all its glory. Does a broken sword look better than the mistress of this armory? Kingshuan Kin, clinging to Zhang Ruachen from behind, asked him a question. What is the young master going to buy only this broken sword? Maybe he is interested in something else. Zhang Ruachen jumped right away from the woman and asked what and how much is that true sword worth? The hostess replied that this sword of the luminous soul, which is the fourth level of a true combat weapon, and on its blade there are 14 letters, four of which are letters of power, four are letters of ice, four are letters of electricity and two are letters of light, with three attributes, ice, electricity and light. And the value of this sword is 30,000 silver coins. Zhang Ruachen realized that he could no longer be alone with the hostess, it was too dangerous. The prince is afraid that he will not stand it. And rushing to the exit, he told Kingshuan Kin that he was taking this sword. The hostess said that the ninth prince runs fast, but he still can't escape from her. The woman feels that there will be a lot of fun in the future. Meanwhile, in another room, the eighth prince and the girl had a tea party. The girl poured tea for the prince. The eighth prince began to tell her that his mother and the red cloud master came from the same family, so the prince would also call this girl sister. This is her first visit to the royal city, so the eighth prince is going to take care of her. This is the biggest martial arts store in the whole city, and the prince decided to find out from the girl what she would like. The girl thanked the eighth prince and said that Xiangling actually came here to meet the talented and unsurpassed people of this city, especially, of course, the first and seventh princes, to which the eighth prince replied that it was a pity that his seventh brother was currently outside the kingdom and was not going to participate in the annual exam, but perhaps he would have time to return to observe this ceremony. If the girl also wants to see this ceremony, then the eighth prince will definitely get a place for her. The girl smiled and thanked the eighth prince once again. Then Zhang Ruachen rushed into them. The eighth prince was very surprised and asked what he was doing here if he wasn't training properly. Did he also buy a weapon? Where did he get the money from? The eighth prince was very angry and thought that this freak, that is, the ninth prince, was going to play a good girl for the sake of the mistress of the Kingshuan Pavilion. And he added that if Zhang Ruachen dares to do something shameful, the eighth prince will break his legs. But then the hostess intervened and told the eighth prince that this was the Kingshuan Pavilion, not the royal palace, and his highness is her guest, and if the eighth prince hits him, then the hostess will have to intervene. To which the eighth prince replied that Zhang Ruachen had disgraced the royal family. And the girl sitting with the eighth prince thought that why the seventh prince is the prince of the whole world, and the ninth prince voluntarily becomes the toy of a dissolute woman. Seeing how they look at him, Zhang Ruachen doesn't understand why they are both looking at him so strangely. But in any case, the ninth prince had better go. 
and Kingshu and Kin told Zhang Ruachen, who was leaving, to look in from time to time. She'll take care of him, and if the Ninth Prince needs resources for cultivation, then let him not hesitate and go to his slave. Zhang Ruachen returned home with his purchases and, picking up the Blue Abyss, thought that 800 years had passed and a lot had changed. Things had become different, and now the ancient sword no longer had its former sharpness. To restore the writing and the power of the sword itself, a blacksmith of at least the fifth level will be required. But is there a similar blacksmith in Yunwu County? Even if he turns into a piece of scrap metal, Zhang Ryuachen should still take it with him. As a reminder that only by becoming stronger, the ninth prince will be able to take revenge on Kai Yao. I wonder what effect the other sword he bought has. Zhang Ryuachen took out his sword and activated the writing. And then the prince noticed that after activating the letters of power, the sword of the radiant soul became almost 50 kilograms heavier. This sword is too heavy, the ninth prince can't control it at all. But if Zhang Ryuachen can learn how to summon the four letters of power and use them skillfully, then the power will be unimaginable. But the prince can't activate the second letter with his current amount of true Kai. He needs to try another writing attribute. He activated the writing of electricity and realized that 30,000 silver coins had not been wasted. Zhang Ruachen should hurry up with training and activate all 14 letters as soon as possible. And thus, the ninth prince will be able to use the potential of a true fourth rank combat weapon to the fullest. Two months later in the Jade Palace, the eighth prince is training, and he finally broke through to the minor stage of the yellow area. Lady Zhao, the eighth prince's mother said it was great. Even now, the cultivation of Jai, as the mother calls her son, cannot be compared with the level of other princes, but when the father sees his progress, he will definitely reward his son. The eighth prince said that in any case, someone has already reached the bottom, and his presence makes Jai look even better. The mother asked what he was saying about the ninth prince. He had only recently received the sacred mark. Perhaps he hasn't even completed the cleansing of the bone marrow and pulse yet. Most likely, the ninth prince will not take part in the annual test. Laughing, the eighth prince said that it was not for him to decide whether he would participate or not. Lin Family Martial Arts Arena Ning Shan is also training hard. She trains the exercise hearts of heaven. The crowd that gathered around Ning Shan was delighted with her. They said she was a daughter of heaven itself. Now their family is in safe hands. My father said that Ning Shan's talent in the art of swordsmanship amazes him. In less than three months, the daughter managed to master the sword technique of the spiritual level. Now she will be the brightest star of the upcoming annual exam. Ning Shan said that her long road of cultivating the sword following the heart also contributed to this, and that's why she managed to learn this technique so quickly. Her father told her that there were only 10 young geniuses in the whole city who managed to reach the level of sword following the heart before the age of 20, and Ning Shan was only 15. And she has limitless possibilities, so she has to keep practicing. Zhang Ruachen has been cultivating in the crystal space for almost half a year. His Kai reserves are full, and his physical characteristics have reached their limit. Now it's time to master the small stage of the yellow area. Zhang Ruachen is much weaker physically now than in his previous life, but after such a long cultivation, the ninth prince can easily open the eleven meridians in the minor stage of the yellow region. He drank the bone marrow washing liquid again. Zhang Ruachen broke through to the small stage of the yellow area. Now he needs to check what he is capable of now. Zhang Ruachen doesn't know how strong he has become. A few days later, deep in the mountains of the royal palace, Zhang Ruachen came there to train and test his abilities. Not bad. The explosive power of this palm is equivalent to the power of eight bulls. He needs to test the sword technique again. His current supply of true Kai is almost enough to activate two fingers at the same time. Zhang Ruachen activated this technique and was delighted. This technique can only be performed when the sword follows your heart. Zhang Ruachen must already be close to the heart of the sword. If this technique is performed in public, then their eyes will pop out. And the ninth prince decided to try something else, more precisely, the protective sword technique. After trying it, Zhang Ruachen realized that this technique would be enough to defend against the entire arsenal of the Yellow Area Martial Arts Master. To hone these techniques, the ninth prince will have to train here until the test itself. The day of the annual exam has arrived. Zhang Ruachen, coming out of his room, asked Sister Yun that the annual exam is today. Yunner told him that, yes, and asked his highness to be careful. After all, there are rumors that the eighth prince has broken through to the minor stage of the yellow region, and it will certainly be aimed at the ninth prince. Zhang Ruachen then told Sister Yunner in secret that he had actually broken through to the minor stage of the yellow realm as well. 
However, he only opened 11 meridians. That's why he still has a lot of work ahead of him. Hearing this, Yunner was very surprised and said that his highness knows that only true geniuses are able to open the 8 meridians of the small stage of the yellow region. The 7th prince opened 10 meridians and that was enough for him to gain real fame. And the girl asked Jang Ruachin to be careful. The 9th prince assured her that he would be careful. Yunner was very happy and said that she would help him change into royal clothes, and after that Zhang Ruachin could go to the martial arts arena on the royal mountain. When Zhang Ruachin came to the room, he asked Yunner if his mother would be watching the annual exam, to which the girl, putting the ninth prince's hair in order, replied that of course, but she did not know that her son would take part in this test. She would be very happy if she could see Zhang Ruachin become a martial artist. The girl also said that his majesty, the ninth prince, really looks more like a prince than any other prince. Outside, Zhang Ruachin told Sister Yun that they were going to the royal battle arena. Everyone has already gathered at the royal battle arena. The king of Yunwu County asks that the seventh son has not returned yet. The queen told his majesty that the seventh prince sent a letter half a month ago. He couldn't come back because of an important matter. And besides, with his level of cultivation, there's no point in participating in the annual exam. To which the king replied that if the seventh son could not take part in the annual assessment, then there would be nothing to look at this year. Lady Zio said that although the seventh prince would not be able to take part in the annual exam, but the ninth prince has the opportunity. After all, three months ago, the ninth prince received the sacred mark. The king was delighted and asked, turning to Mrs. Linny, why she did not immediately tell him this joyful news. Linny hesitated and said that the ninth prince had just received the sacred mark. It's not something worth bothering the king for. To which the king replied that the very fact that the ninth prince managed to get the mark was worth it to arrange this competition. And he asked where the ninth son was now. Let him be told that the king wants to see him. Then the eighth prince told his father that everyone had arrived on time, except for the ninth brother. He must have become too arrogant after receiving the sacred mark. But then Zhang Ruachin appeared and told his eighth brother that he really thought it was worth saying something like that about someone behind his back. We need to show respect to the king. Then the crowd was alarmed, and someone asked that no one had misheard. He really asked his brother to show respect to the king. And the eighth brother himself was delighted, thinking that the ninth brother wanted problems. The show is about to start. The king menacingly asked Zhang Ruachin that he called him king. The queen immediately became alarmed and said that as the ninth prince, he dares to disown his father. The mother tried to protect her son, saying that Chen must have accidentally misspoke. But the ninth prince stood his ground. He said it was all right. A father should teach his children. Since birth, Zhang Ruachin was a weak and sick child. So what did the king teach him? He helped his ninth son at least once. And not to mention fatherhood. A husband should be loving and moral. And did your highness take pity on his mother when the queen beat her? Zhang Ruachin's mother has been bullied all these years. And what kind of kindness did the king show to her? They and their mother were thrown out of their place of residence at night in the middle of winter and forced to move to a side hall. Where is the morality here? Since the king was not the ninth prince's father and his mother's husband, wasn't Zhang Ruachin right when he called him king? The king was confused. He asked the queen who had given the order for the ninth prince and his mother to move into a side hall. The queen glared at Lady Zio, and she thought that how could she betray the queen, even if it was her order. The woman fell to her knees and said it was her. Then the king asked that she did it alone. Lady Zio gave a positive response. The king said that if she wanted to take full responsibility, then from now on Lady Zio would live in the Zai Hall. And already addressing Zhang Ruachin, the king said that it looks like he has become a real martial artist, not like before. Today, the king forgives his bloodlust, but only for the first and last time, and asked if Zhang Ruachin wanted to take part in the exam. To which the ninth prince replied without hesitation that of course. Laughing, the king said that Zhang Ruachin was indeed the king's son, he had a lot of courage, and announced the start of the annual exam. Mo Hanting told Kingshuan Kin that in the past, the royal family had already sent invitations to Kingshuan Pavilion, but Madame had never responded to them. But why did she decide to attend this ceremony this year? To which the hostess replied that if she meets someone who is interested in her, then she tries to find out as much as possible about him. And she herself wondered that the ninth prince was a weak and sick child. They were in a difficult situation together with their mother. So where did he get the money to purchase cultivation resources in the Kingshuan Pavilion? Mo Hanting told her that the first round of the martial arts exam would begin soon. The smallest slab weighs a hundred pounds, and the largest weighs a thousand. A little girl entered the arena. All the viewers started to support her, saying that the princess is so cute. 
I wonder what her strength is at such a young age. The girl picked up the stove without any problems and threw it. So small, and already so strong. Mo Hanting said that the young princess received the sacred mark at the age of four, and now she is able to lift a hundred pound stone slab. The hostess said that there is also sorting by age. A talented girl on the line. Won't she be next? And the next one was announced by the daughter of the head of the Lin family, Ning Shan, 15 years old. The girl commanded the plate up, and it rose, and then Ning Shan threw it. The audience was delighted. The man said it was just amazing. A new genius was born in the Lin family. The girl standing next to this man said that the physical characteristics of a woman's body are not comparable to a man's. And yet Ning Shan is able to lift a stone slab weighing a thousand pounds with one hand. The king asked the queen that this girl was a genius, where did she come from? The king is sure that she will not yield even to the nine princes. To which the queen replied that she was the daughter of the head of the Lin family, Ning Shan. And the queen also considers her extremely capable and wants her to marry the seventh prince. To which the king replied that he remembered her very young. And he remembers that at that time they were close with the ninth prince, which is why he wanted to betroth them. But, unfortunately, for some reason this marriage was cancelled three years ago. The queen said that the king must be a little confused. Given Ning Shan's talent, the ninth prince is simply not worthy of her. And the difference in their strength will only grow. Why not marry her off to the seventh prince, then? And in this way they will be able to strengthen the Lin family's connection with the royal one. The eighth prince told Zhang Ruachen to be careful. And then suddenly he will be crushed by a stone. And he will break his back. The man supported the eighth prince's malice and said that the ninth prince should not disgrace himself and take part in the annual competition. Another man said that Zhang Ruachen, most likely, had not even cleaned his veins in these couple of months. The man is sure that the prince will not be able to lift even the smallest stone. Walking into the arena, Zhang Ruachen ran into Ning Shan. The girl told him that he shouldn't have come here. With his strength, the ninth prince couldn't even lift a 100-pound stone slab. Zhang Ruachen would only make a fool of himself and disgrace concubine Lin. So why is he still trying to take part in this exam? To which Zhang Ruachen replied that Ning Shan is really gifted. But you should not consider everyone else garbage. At parting, Ning Shan told the ninth prince to take care of himself, and she thought that she was only trying to convince him because they were friends in childhood. But Zhang Ruachen is so stubborn. Why is he trying so hard to make a fool of himself? When Zhang Ruachen entered the arena, the entire audience was confused. They said it couldn't be. He is 16 years old, and he is going to test himself with the first stove. The ninth prince is the same loser as before. And Kingshuan Kin, who was closely following Zhang Ruachen, said that Chen is capable of a lot, right? Is Zhang Ruachen going to lift the biggest slab? The audience started shouting that he couldn't do it. He just went crazy. He's going to disgrace himself. The eighth prince said that Zhang Ruachen is an idiot. Even after 30 years of training, he can't lift a thousand pounds. Zhang Ruachen tossed the slab, and it flew straight at him. Everyone started shouting again that he was crazy, the stone slab would crush him. He's just going to die. But he succeeded. And then there were cheers that the ninth prince was simply amazing. Still, the members of the royal family are really amazing. And the eighth prince was at a loss, asking how such a thing was possible. Ning Shan, who was standing next to the eighth prince, asked that when did he manage to become so strong? Was he deliberately hiding his strength? King Shuan Kin thought it was interesting. Zhang Ruachen turned his Kai into a burst of energy and used that energy to extinguish the falling slab. His fine control of true Kai is even better than that of many martial artists of the Xuan kingdom. Zhang Ruachen's mother even burst into tears with happiness, saying that he had succeeded. She had been waiting for this day for so long. Standing nearby, Lady Zio thought that if the ninth prince had achieved such success, then they should stop insulting concubine Lin in the future. The king said that Zhang Ruachen did well. It turns out that the ninth son is a late flower. The king is waiting for his performance in the next test. A man came out who said that the second round of the exam, hunting on the royal mountain, hunting is dangerous, so only those who have lifted the heaviest stone slab can participate in it. Zhang Yuxi, the ninth princess, told ninth brother to be careful when hunting, because she is his main opponent. And she added that the 8th prince also wanted to lift the last slab, but injured his leg. Then they announced that each of them would have 5 arrows. They should be used to kill first rank beasts. The more wild monsters they kill, the higher their strength will be rated and the more points they will get. They will be able to participate in the third competition only if they kill the beast. The royal mountain is full of dangers. There is a possibility that they will die. If they encounter a second class beast, they should immediately run away. Let the hunt begin. Ning Shan, jumping on the horse, told Zhang Ruachen that, 
Pure strength is her weak point. Now it's time to demonstrate her true power. The girl hopes that the ninth prince will not leave her too far behind. Zhang Yuxi told the prince that she would go first. It's finally time for the main show. Already on the mountain, Zhang Ruachen thought that the ghost rabbits had low speed and weak defense. A great target for hunting. He had already aimed at the rabbit, but thought that it was not worth wasting arrows on a first-class beast. But then one of the brothers appeared and killed the rabbit, saying that the ninth brother was participating in the hunt on the royal mountain for the first time. Why didn't he even try to kill this beast? A man should have the courage to do this. The number of wild beasts on the royal mountain is limited. Five arrows may not be enough for five beasts. Don't come back empty-handed. Zhang Ruachen thought he was right. The prince needed to hurry up. He could hear the bulls bellowing from there. He saw there the ninth sister with three huge and terrible bulls. Noticing Zhang Ruachen, Zhang Yuxi said that ninth brother is one step behind. These bulls are hers. The girl shot a bow and hit the bull. Zhang Ruachen, seeing this, thought that she was strong. Lin Na, looking at the young man, was surprised by his abilities. Because he had been training for only three months, how was this possible? The girl thought. The young man behind her was thinking that he should have been more careful in the next round, because in just a couple of months, the ninth prince had become so strong, and this happened extremely rarely. All the spectators in this place were surprised. The king, addressing Ji Kan, asked to bring him the royal heavy Xuan bow. He wanted to personally hand it to his ninth son. Then the ninth prince asked the king to stop, and they killed the strongest beast of the first class together with the ninth princess, and therefore he could not take all the credit for himself, the young man addressed the king. The girl standing next to the young man told her father that his daughter was in danger during this hunt, but she managed to survive thanks to the help of the ninth brother. During the hunt for the strongest beast of the first class, she was of little use, so the ninth brother fully deserves this award, the girl said, addressing the king. The king, looking at all this, said that he was very pleased with such modesty and friendship between brother and sister, addressing the ninth son. He said that it was up to him to decide who owned the heavy Xuan bow, and threw the bow directly into the young man's hands. The young man, holding a bow in his hands, said that he was not good with a bow, he was only good with a sword in his hands. So turning to his king, he asked that this bow go to the princess and giving it to the girl, Shishan, saying that what a generous brother he was. The young man, looking at the happy girl, said that she deserved it because without her help he would not have been able to kill the blue flame deer. But the guy thought to himself that if he and the ninth princess became allies, then it would be much easier for them and their mother to be in the palace. The girl, continuing to hold the bow in her hands, said that she would not give it up then and would try in the next round of the competition. She was sure that the young man would enter the top five, so she asked him not to give up. And the host announced that in the first match of the finals, the leader of the ninth district, Yu Zai, would fight Lin Na from the Lin family. Everyone stood around him and waited for the crowd to react. The girl standing next to the presenter said, addressing Lin Na, that she couldn't wait to see how strong her blade had become. After that, taking out her sword, she used the blue water poetry technique, attacking a girl named Lin Na, who stood with an unperturbed look and waited for an attack that was heading straight at her. A fight ensued between them and Lin Na was able to repel the blow. At that moment her opponent began to attack her even more, but Lin Na reflected all the blows flawlessly. Ryuachin, who was watching from the side, thought that, unfortunately, the difference in their strength was too great. And Lin Na went on the attack, but the opponent was able to repel her again. Then she said that it was not the end yet. A fierce battle continued between them. At that moment, Lin Na used the technique of draining the splitting heaven. And when Jiaqin saw this, he shouted to his sister to be careful, because Lin Na's sword was almost near the princess's chest. And addressing the princess, Lin Na said that the girl had lost. The princess, approaching the ninth brother, said that she was not inferior to the girl in cultivation, but she could not understand why she was losing so quickly. Jiaqin said that the difference in their understanding of the dream and the girl will understand what he is about when he reaches the area in which the sword moves with her heart. Looking at the ninth brother, she said that it was his turn to fight. After all, it was said that his opponent was capable of killing a barbarian with his bare hands, so the young man had to try and not fall into the dirt in front of such a strong opponent. At that moment, a young man approached Jiaqin, saying that he had heard that his highness was good with a sword, and he did not know how to use anything like that. So how about a fist fight so that everything was fair, he asked the young man, to which Jiaqin replied that he was ready to fight using his hands and feet. All the tribunes were indignant at what they heard. Just because the Bai family was famous for its hand-to-hand -hand art, was it some kind of mockery? Because the ninth prince was already one step behind this young man, he could not defeat him in any way 
Everyone thought and understood that it was a completely unfair fight. At that moment, the young man from the Bai family was already full of energy and ready to go into battle. Using his fatal blow against our hero, the young man was also ready and decided to use his strength to resist the guy who offered him to fight with his fists. So they clashed in battle, and all the spectators were surprised by their strength, which spread throughout the field. The sister understood that the winner was already determined, looking at the fight that unfolded right in front of her and thinking about her ninth brother, stopping the blow of the young man. Our hero said that he lost. Flying back the guy did not understand how the ninth brother could be so strong, because he had just used the power of nine bulls in combination with the martial art of the middle class. It was simply impossible that the young man could defeat him with only one blow. Jang Ryuachan, addressing the guy, said that this only meant that the strength of the nine bulls was not enough to defeat him. At that moment the young man felt a powerful pressure from the ninth prince, which emanated from him while he was talking. The king who was watching him and his faithful subjects also stood and watched as fascinated. The subject said that what an amazing control of power the young man had. Instantly gave his palm a twisting force that dislocated Bai Wanli's arm. The king was laughing at this moment, because he wanted to see what his ninth son could surprise him with. The man reported that the ninth prince Zhang Ryuachen and Lin Na from the Lin family would meet in the fourth match of the final. At this moment the audience was saying that the Ninth Prince and Lin Na were cousins. The Ninth Prince of Childhood was in love with Lin Na, but apparently she was not interested in the fragile sick Ninth Prince, so she she broke off her relationship with him. It was the girls on the podium whispering among themselves. It was very interesting for everyone to find out what was going on between the lovers. Hearing this, the Ninth Prince thought that it was some kind of coincidence and he was wondering what would happen next. At that moment his sister giggled thinking that it would be a great show, because at that moment Lin Na looked directly at our hero, and the sister told him about it. Lin looked at the young man directly from the crowd, realizing that a fight was waiting for them, after which they met eyes. The sister, hugging the young man, said that she knew that he liked the girl, that's just not mutual, so he could not feel sorry for her and give his all, because she couldn't wait for the guy to avenge her for her. But Jochen just kept silent and didn't say anything at that moment they met eyes again with Lin. Taking off his extra clothes, he was ready to fight, so they stood in the arena to fight. Lin, despite the young man, thought that in the past his tackles seemed stupid to her, but today she will be able to take advantage of his infatuation and she decided to turn to her cousin. The girl said that she did not expect his cultivation to be so fast, because it was just amazing. She informed him until they started the fight. After that, she decided to use her feminine charms saying that she and her cousin would really have to fight, asking the young man with each other. He knew how important it was for her to get into the top four, but the girl thought to herself that she was sure that the hero would retreat after all he was always very loyal to her. The young man, looking at Lin, said that it was also extremely important for him to get into the top four, so here is his suggestion. He can fight with her without using his sword, and then the girl took out her sword saying that she thanked her cousin for his generosity. So they stood until she pulled her sword out of the scabbard and attacked our hero. The young man stood still and watched what the girl's attack was. Her sword rapidly began to head towards Jachen. But he dodged and then the girl decided to use her running clouds and flowing water attack to attack the young man. But he dodged here. Then she used the remnants of a likely wind strip and attacked Jachen again. But the young man again deviated. She started attacking again and then our hero again deviated then she saw that there was an illusion in front of her. The girl understood that she would not be able to attack at the same pace for a long time and would have to use her last move. And then, gathering all her strength and all her might, she used the attack, Rainy Harvest, to finally deal with the guy and attacking him with her sword. Jochen again dodged her attack at this moment. Being at the very edge of the field, he realized that he could no longer dodge her. Looking at the stands, he realized that there was nowhere to retreat and using his two fingers decided to attack the girl with his attack. Then she did not understand if he really wanted to defeat her with his bare hands, because it was too naive. But it was at this moment that he used all his might to attack and they clashed in a blow. The sister who was watching this did not expect such power, because the ninth brother had been hiding it all this time. It was amazing, attacking Lin Na with his powerful blow which consisted of only two fingers, he said that she lost. At that moment the girl who would have attacked him was defeated for her it was impossible and she fell right on the battlefield, attacked by our hero and struck. Everyone watching from the stands was surprised. The sister thought that this guy really did not know pity because he tore her clothes right in front of everyone. Everyone thought that he had just received the sacred mark. Perhaps the talent of the ninth son is comparable to the talent of the seventh. The man thought that his nephew was really very strong because he overcame us laziness with just one blow. 
For the young man at this moment, when he won, he saw his cousin falling and approaching her, in the rays of the sun. He said that it looked like he had won, turning to his cousin looking at him amazed. The girl said that she had not lost, turning to him, she was talking about that they had to continue the battle, trying to take up their sword. But the young man said that there was a huge difference in strength between them and it was simply pointless to fight on. The girl, trying to get up, said that he did not dare to look down at her from above. She still has an ace up her sleeve and at that moment she stood up using her might. But Jochen did not even pay attention to it, just standing with his back to her, and silently. She at that moment went straight to him and wanted to attack the young man. The sister, seeing this, shouted to the ninth brother to take care of his sister. At that moment, one of the girls was shouting that Lin Na was going to sneak attack and the ninth prince would die. And if the ninth principal dies because of this attack, then the Lin family will come to an end and the man screamed that Lin Na would stop. But the girl already used the force splitting the heavens to attack Jochen. But it was all useless. The young man jumped up dodging her attack and used his strength again. The dragon flying into heaven and at this moment she realized that she could not dodge. The young man struck down Lin by attacking him with just his bare hands. The next moment he was already standing and the smoke dissipating between them showed that our hero was standing right next to the girl. And the father ran to Lin Na shouting that he was thanking the ninth prince for his mercy. Raising his daughter, he asked if she was okay. The young man did not care, he thought more that he won. Lin, lying on the rock she had fallen on thought that Jochen had forced her to go through the humiliation that he had forced her to go through today. In the future she would return it to him doubly. The girl was very bitter about what she experienced today and therefore she promised herself that she would not forget it. The hosts reported that the ninth prince Zhang Ryuachen and Zhu Kai from the state mansion of monsters will fight in the next duel. The whole arena rejoiced after learning that there would be such a great fight. At this moment, the young men entered the ring. Zhu Kai suggested to his majesty, how about a sword fight? The guy had a huge sword behind his back and the young man agreed. Apparently it didn't matter what to fight on. At that moment, his sister threw a sword to her brother from the stands. Grabbing this sword, the young man thought that three ice seals and three power seals of his strength would be enough to activate everything. While he was considering the sword, his opponent did not wait long and saying that the young man was so arrogant that he considered his sword during the duel, attacking our hero. But when the young man saw this, he immediately jumped to the side. Then his opponent thought that our hero was caught and attacked him with his ball right in the stomach. The sister sitting in the stands heard that the girl said that Zhu hit the ninth prince, but she thought to herself that the ninth prince had very little combat experience. But he was cunning as a fox and could not be hurt by such a reception. And then the sister tried to figure out what her brother was up to again. Jochen jumped aside and said that if Zhu did not fight at full strength, he would lose, which made Zhu very angry, because he was really underestimated by a sick loser in his opinion. Then they clashed again in battle, Jochen decided to attack Zhu, and he defended himself from his attacks and then also went into battle. Jochen said that no matter how many times he used the same technique, the result would not change. Why would he not change his technique and Zhu's power hit Jochen again? He said that it was not the end yet and tried to slay our hero with his huge sword, but the young man only dodged his attacks and repelled them. Looking at Zhu, he said that this was all that the young master of the state mansion of masters was capable of. It upset the young man very much, but he still talked about the guy not being arrogant, because he would see how the young man would cope with the blow that he had prepared for him. But at that moment Zhu attacked the young man, so he already broke the stones in the arena. Our hero managed to jump aside holding his sword in his hand. Zhu realized that the young man was very far away, which means it was a trap, because he intends to make him waste his strength and Kai, enough to exhaust the opponent. Jochen said that now it was his turn to attack, and lifting up his sword, Jochen used his strength, a huge ice flower formed above the ball, which surprised Zhu very much. Seeing an attack called Splitting the Heavens, our hero tried to attack and attack Zhu. The same tried to repel this attack using his giant sword as a shield. But it did not help at this moment either the young man was defeated with just one blow, realizing that he had lost. Jochen defeated him with just one blow, and the young man fell under the onslaught of his strength at that moment. Everyone on the podium was very surprised, because it was incredible that a martial artist of the end of the yellow region really lost to a low-level martial artist. Everyone said that the ninth prince was really unpredictable. Lin Na, looking at this, said that he also uses the technique of possession of the heavenly heart ball. Maybe he is the mysterious stranger they met at the auction house. She asked her father, but he said that he was afraid that everything was not so simple, because it was not worth making noise and he offered his daughter discuss it when they get home. 
The elder watching from the stands also said that His Majesty is the ninth, a true genius. But in the final match he will play against Sidhu Linjiang, the young master of the Sidhu family. Given the current difference in their cultivation, his victory is simply impossible. Still, there were people in the stands for Jiaqin and they were madly worried about him. The girl sitting next to the elder said that she would not have said that the young man would not be able to win, because geniuses are called that, precisely because they are able to work miracles. She was wondering what else the ninth prince could do and how he could get out of the situation. The host was announcing the final battle. The ninth prince Zhang Ruachin is against Sidhu Linjong and the Sidhu family. The young men met in the ring and Sadu said that he was sure that he would take first place in the hunt on the royal mountain and was very surprised when the ninth prince took it. The guy was talking to Jiaqin, so he wanted to defeat him and take back his glory, to which Jiaqin replied that he would lose even more of his fame. The sword of Sidhu immediately burst into flames and he shouted that it was necessary to stop talking and show him all the power that the ninth prince had. At that moment he was heading straight towards him and trying to attack the young man. Ruachin, seeing this, realized that the young man was too fast and perhaps he could not dodge him. But he succeeded and he realized that he had run away from his attack very much. Tarhiro tried to attack the young man from behind. He did not run away. He called it just a tactical retreat and using his might. He decided to attack the guy from above, the same dodged his blow, and so they clashed in their battle. Our hero attacked the young man and he, reflecting his blow, asked was it really all that the guy was capable of. Seeing this, the young man was very surprised and then he tried to attack our hero, throwing him back, saying that he tried to withstand this blow, which he is now using against him. The blow was called the spirit of the snakes of red flame everything was on fire, and it was as if a snake was rushing after our hero who was trying to escape from this attack. The young man understood that if he did not dodge this attack, he would get serious injuries right in front of him. He saw this huge snake that was rushing straight at him opening its giant mouth. At that moment, looking at his sword, he realized that he would have to use the technique that he had thought about earlier, and then he used the ringing of the heavenly sword. It was not clear from the stands what was happening far away from them, so someone thought that the ninth prince really withstood this powerful blow. The mother, looking at her son, thought about letting nothing bad happen to him. She was very worried about him then the sister, turning to her, said that, addressing her highness, that there was no need to worry so much. The ninth brother is much stronger than it seems, so he will be fine. The young man repelled the attack using his own, saying that his opponent was not able to defeat him, fighting with half his strength. Then he was burning with fire, saying that he wanted to use the full force of the battle with the seventh prince. But since the guy asked so, he decided to show him his true power, addressing Jiaqin said I'm full. Sidhu raised his axe into the air, which was engulfed in flames and wanted to attack our hero. Then Jiaqin realized that the young man was attacking and it was necessary to repel his attack. He took out his sword and reflected the flames that were moving directly at him using a plum opening the heavens. But this attack passed by the young man and did not touch his honor I was thinking about whether it was too weak the way he was attacked by Sidhu after the words he said to him and our hero decided to go straight into a frontal attack, straight to his son, who saw this and said that the guy was not smart at all. He could not use his strength in the air. At that moment, Jochen attacked the young man, who, as they say, is an inch longer by an inch stronger, so he told him to see how he fights against Jochen using the advantage of his long spear. They clashed in the air again, using their powers. Blue and yellow lightning flew all over the field. At this moment both of them touched each other. Sidhu was hit on the cheek and he bled and our hero was hit right in the stomach. Feeling that he was wounded, Sidhu shouted to Jiaqin. How dare he hurt him? Did he really want to die and used all his might to attack the young man? Jiaqin said that Sidhu was right. He could not use his strength in the air, but now for him, Sidhu was like a living target. Falling said Jiaqin. Sidhu did not understand if he really thought that, because he would not allow anyone to defeat him and decided to use the final blow of the fiery one. At that moment his axe was burning with fire and Sidhu wanted to attack directly on Jiaqin jumping up in the air and attacking him from there. Our hero carefully watched this and waited for the young man to really start fighting with him in full force and therefore began to repel his attack so they clashed with their swords again. The girls watched them from the stands, saying that his destructive power was amazing, whether everything would be fine with the ninth prince. However, another girlfriend said that in any case one of them would suffer and it was such a pity. The elder, standing far away, said that the potential of the ninth prince was incredible in a short period of time he managed to rise to such a high level. He could not believe that the young man was fighting on equal terms with the first genius of the family. It was simply unthinkable. 
The woman sitting next to him said that there is a big difference between a talented person and a genius. In this case, the ninth prince is a genius. Perhaps in the future even more attention will be riveted to the ninth. The elder, hearing this, was amazed at the woman's insight, and she thought to herself that Jachin, what he also wanted to surprise her. Jachin said that further fighting was simply pointless, holding his sword in his hands, despite his opponent who was almost hit although they were almost equal on the battlefield. But our hero was sure that he felt the difference in their strength, and that he would get nothing from this if he continued to fight further, so our hero ordered him to surrender. Sidhu was almost on the verge of his hand was in the ice that our hero left behind. But he said that it was necessary to stop talking, and he wanted to continue this battle, after which he decided to attack our hero with his attack of stones. But it was useless against our hero, he just beat off these stones. Looking at Sita, he asked if he did not want to accept what Jachin told him. Then he had only himself to blame for what would happen next. At that moment the young man rushed to attack directly at Sita, who did not expect it at all and was very surprised that the young man was too close to him. After that, our hero attacked Sidhu stood on the spot, and Sidhu understood that he was amazed, but he proved to everyone that he had not lost yet and flew into the attack directly on Jicheng using all his strength. Jachin, standing far away from Sidhu, used the gallop of the barbarian elephant and said that if he wanted to fight, then it was possible to fight. A gallop is a three-act gait of an animal at three tempos with a non-stop phase. Wild horses go into a gallop when they need to escape from predators or just quickly overcome a short distance. This is the attack our hero used. When Jachin tried to attack him, the young man simply put his hand forward and realized what a violent force Jachin had. It was no wonder that he was so confident in himself. Jachin shouted to his son that it was over, it was the last attack. And he used the sky-splitting plum again, attacking the one who understood that he had lost and fell straight to the ground. Our hero stood even in spite of him. All the spectators in the stands realized that Sidhu had lost. The annual exam was over and the ninth prince, Ruachin, took first place. Everyone was rejoicing, surprised that another genius had appeared in the royal family. The revival of the Great Jun district was just around the corner. The sister and mother also looked at Jicheng and the mother wiped her face from her tears, and the sister just smiled, because she believed in the young man. The woman who was next to the elder said that everything was as she expected, so he had to keep an eye on the ninth prince. The elder of course agreed, saying goodbye. The king rejoiced saying that Jicheng was really his son and asked to give the ninth son the armor of the fiery ice unicorn. Everyone else understood that the more talent, the faster it would die, because Mother Queen would not allow the young man to grow. The queen was tired of saying, addressing Han Kinglo, that she did not need to say what was required of this girl. Standing next to the queen realized what was required of her and immediately disappeared. An elder came out on the battlefield, saying that the pond of the merciless god is located under the Hall of Ancestors, in order to enter there. The young man had to bow to the emperors of the Kunlun kingdom. There was a statue of the emperor in front of them, and especially the young man had to bow to the great and mighty empress of virtue. Everyone bowed to Empress Jai Yao. This world is under her control and she was the best of the best and everyone hoped that she would live forever. But the young man had a completely different opinion and therefore he did not bow. Then a man turned to him, asked how he dared not bow before the queen, addressing this prince. He asked why he did not bow and did not give the mail to Queen Jai Yao. The young man said that he bowed his head only to heaven and to his mother, but definitely not to this woman, because he knew that Jai Yao, when he completed his cultivation, he would take revenge on this woman, because once she betrayed him. Everyone else said that one day his rebellious temper would get him into trouble by talking about Jicheng, but he didn't care. The pond of the merciless god, Jachin came to where he should have gone down and started his training. Everyone was talking about him remembering that the power of the blood essence was extremely dominant. If the young man felt that he could not cope, he had to get out immediately. Otherwise he risked his life. Right in front of him was a bloody pond in which the young man had to climb. Jachin understood that this was the first step on his path to revenge. I turned to Kai Yao. He said to himself that she had to wait and see what would happen. The young man was ready for what was waiting for him and was going to go down into this pond, taking off everything. Lin Na thought that this was also a great opportunity for her to surpass Chen Ryuachin. She also found herself near this pond and entered it first. As soon as her foot touched the water, she thought to herself about what kind of violent energy it was. If she thoughtlessly dived deep into the pond of the merciless god, she could just die. Then Jachin also entered the water, and everyone looked at him thinking that the guy had gone crazy. This furious energy would just tear him apart, because the young man was already waist-deep in the water, unlike Lin Na, 
who only stepped with one foot. The girl thought to herself that only Jachin himself would be to blame for his death, seeing how he was already waist deep in the water. Her only regret was that she would not be able to defeat him on her own. Three days later, Jachin was sitting in the water trying to concentrate and not paying attention to anything. The others were sitting on dry land and also trying to concentrate. Then the elder, looking at all this, thought that the seventh prince could hold out in the middle of the merciless god pond for three days. But the ninth had already surpassed this result and he had to report it to the queen soon. The young man, after sitting in this pond for three days, opened his eyes and realized that his physical abilities had greatly increased and it was time to return to the middle yellow area. He managed to break through to the middle stage of the yellow area. Now he will most likely be able to open the scroll that he once found. The young man imagined how he opened it and it turned out to be harder than he thought the scroll resisted and this scroll should have been several hundred feet away. The young man thought, putting his maximum effort, he ordered the scroll to open and at that moment he was able to unfold it. Looking at the scroll, he thought that there were really such tall trees that he saw on this parchment. The scroll depicted a giant tree standing in the middle of the hills along which the river flowed. Then someone turned to him saying that he was ignorant and did not know about the sacred tree that holds the kingdom of Kunlun and it disappointed him. Hearing this, the young man was very surprised and asked who it was who was talking to him then the voice answered him that this voice was from a scroll. Looking at the scroll again, the guy saw a cat and the cat informed him that he was the emperor of the slaughter of heaven and earth. But he made a mistake and was sealed in this scroll and only the young man was able to get him out of here. Jochen asked why he had to let the cat out, then he replied that he could teach him the secret code of space and time. It was necessary to open the second page and then the young man, after looking at it himself, would understand everything. Opening the page, the guy realized that there were eight spatial patterns and if he studied them all, he would be able to open a small space. It was very surprising for the young man. The cat said that if the young man could cultivate the seal of time, he would be able to stop time, so he needed to let the cat out and he would teach him everything. The young man, looking at the cat who asked to be released, thought to himself whether it was wise to just let this cat out. Then he asked him what he needed to do to get him out. The cat began to explain that it would take a drop of his blood for the scroll to recognize its owner. After that, when the young man poured his true energy from it, the seal would be removed and the emperor would be able to get out. The hero bit his finger trying to bite it until it bled and thought that whoever does not take risks does not drink champagne, so he had to try. The cat, looking at all this, said that this flower was called a picture of the gods of heaven and earth. It was created from a leaf of the gods of heaven. Now it was a scroll of a young man talking about the young man rescuing the emperor. The cat thought to himself that everything was so close, he was almost free. At that moment, blood poured out of the young man's finger and dripping onto a scroll of parchment. The young man suddenly felt a surge of strength from this parchment. Black energy came out of it, meowing saying that after 100,000 years he was finally free. Looking in front of him, the young man saw a cat that materialized in front of him, saying that he was the emperor of the slaughter of heaven and earth. He would need one short to crush the young man and the cat tried to attack our hero. Jachin, looking at this, easily deflected the cat's blow that he flew away and went up to him and pulled out his sword. Then the cat said in horror that he was just checking the guy's cultivation. In fact, he was not going to kill him, so he asked the young man not to do anything stupid. At that moment the young man's sword hit the cat on the head, that he was very scared. But only a bruise formed there and the young man asked if the fat cat really thought that he would believe him. Then our hero began to attack the cat. The cat seemed to reflect all his blows at this moment. The young man thought that he had hit him several times with a sword, but the cat did not receive any serious damage. This cat was really unusual. The cat, looking at the young man, said that his theme was invulnerable and the young man could not kill him, so he offered a truce. When Jochen heard that he could not kill the cat, he invited him to go back, to which the cat said that he did not want to return and looked at the guy with horror. But it was too late, and the cat went back to the scroll. Jochen said that now he was the owner of this painting of the gods of heaven and earth. He could return the cat to the world of the scroll just by thinking about it. At that moment the scroll was sealed and went straight to the young man, who said that the cat needed to sit there for now because he didn't have time now they needed it was hard to get to the inscription guild in the palace. The guild of inscriptions is one of the strongest organizations in the kingdom of Kunlun. 
consisting in the largest alliance with chemists, blacksmiths, animal tamers, and magicians. A beautiful place towered over which a large palace, people walking along the street, and a carriage that rode with guests. The carriage that people were watching was completely different. It was said that it was the ninth prince's carriage. The maid behind the reins completely fits the portrait that Miss Han gave them. These people were supposed to kill the prince outside the palace when there would be few people around. At that moment, Jochen looked out from the cart and turned to Sister Yun, saying that it was necessary to wait for him at the intersection. He would go buy something from the Guild of Inscriptions. Jun obeyed him and decided to stop the horses. It was a moonlit night, and the young man headed into the house. There were two people standing in front of him. One of them asked if the ninth brother was already a martial arts genius. Then why did he come to the Guild of Inscriptions? He thought to himself that after the exam he and his mother lost their power, so he wanted to do blacksmithing. But this kid came here it was the 8th prince, who was unhappy that the ninth came to this place. The young man walked past them, not even paying attention to him and his companion. But the companion asked to wait for his highness for a minute, because Xiangling arrived here to express her respect to him and the guild. At that moment the girl tried to run to him, but the eighth stopped her, who addressed her and said that that the girl had forgotten what had happened between him and the owner of the Kingshuan pavilion, so she shouldn't have approached the guy, she should have stayed away from people like him. The girl pulled her hand out of her brother's hands, saying about his highness that the prince was young and talented. She did not believe that the young man could do something like what the eighth had said earlier. The eighth was too surprised. Turning to his sister then, she said that his highness between men and there is a difference between women. So she asked to behave decently, and breaking out of his arms, she ran to the prince asking him to wait for her. Then, walking next to the prince, the girl said that Xiangling had studied the outlines of her childhood. Perhaps she could help his highness. The young man thought that perhaps with a little support he would be able to hone his method of outlines faster and looked at the girl at that moment. The eighth at that moment realized that he had been rejected and thought that Jochen would regret what he had done then. Surprised, he saw in front of him the charioteer Jochen and the cart that stood in front of the guild. He thought that he had not found his way to get even with the young man but realized that this was his chance. The young man approached the carriage and Yun greeted his highness. Then the prince said that he wanted to return to the palace and asked to take him to which Yun replied that this carriage was the ninth prince and she could not do it. Then I turned to her with contempt asking, but they were both princes and isn't there a reason why she couldn't take him and at that moment he hit the girl, saying that some maid dared to disobey the prince's orders and that she should get out. The girl fell and watched the prince leave, and he said that he still offered to take him. If she dared to refuse, he would make her life and the life of her family turn into a living hell. The girl, looking at the prince approaching the cart, understood that she had no other choice. Sitting in the carriage, the prince reasoned that Jochen must have obtained this power with the help of some treasure if he captured her. He could use the girl to blackmail Jochen and force him to give him the treasures, and when he became a strong martial artist, he would kill Jochen and turn Chan Ziangling into your toy. So the cart began to move away from the guild, and the girl took the prince to where he said, at the same moment they were being watched from the roof. This was exactly the gang that was supposed to kill the prince. One of the spies said that the cart was approaching and it was necessary to start attacking. The second thought that the murder of the prince was very exciting and both rushed to the cart. Releasing an arrow from the bow, the girl stopped the cart and hit the prince straight. The arrow passed through him and wounded the prince, to which he thought about how someone dared to attempt his life. At that moment a weapon was brought up behind him while the prince stood and could not understand what was happening. After hearing the strange sounds, Yun wanted to stop the carriage and after she did, she decided to turn to his highness, asking about what was there and whether everything was alright. But when she saw what she saw, she was shocked and screamed at the whole neighborhood. At that time, the moon was shining brightly in another place and a woman was talking to the rabble that was lying on the ground, saying that now they had problems because of them. These were the same two girls who attacked the carriage with the prince. Privately, the woman thought that the city would be alerted by the murder of the eighth prince, and they would no longer have the opportunity to kill the ninth. At the same time, the girl was holding in her hand a weapon with which she had just dealt with her subordinates. After that, the girl soared up and thought to herself that she had to immediately return to the queen to make a further plan of action. It was the queen's maid who sat next to her when she watched our heroes battle from the stands. At this moment, while all those events were taking place, our hero, along with Xiangling, were walking near the guild and then Xiangling, addressing his highness, asked if the guy had a level 20 mental strength, because it was because of this that he shocked Master Zorn. The young man replied that since the girl was now a disciple of Master Zorn, she had to train well and while they were talking, 
The young men did not pay attention to anything, but as soon as they came to the place where his cart was standing, he could not understand where Yun and the cart had disappeared. In principle, then a guard on horseback approached them. After looking at him, Jachin could not understand what a member of the royal guard was doing here. While the man who got off his horse addressed his highness saying that the eighth prince died in the attack, the king asks the young man to return to the palace immediately. Xiangling, hearing this, said that it was impossible, because they had just recently seen the eighth prince. The girl was very shocked by what was happening and what she heard. Ruachin thought to himself that Sister Yun would not have left without warning him, and the eighth prince died in the attack. He hoped that these two things were unrelated and that Yun was safe. At that time, someone in the palace was talking about what impudence there was, hitting his seat with his fist. It was the king who asked who dared to kill a member of the royal family. All his subjects, bowing their heads, said that perhaps this incident was somehow connected with the cult of the moon demon. Perhaps they, they decided to use the death of the eighth prince to test the strength of their district and the likely cultural experts are going to inflict a massive blow on the empire. It was his advisor who said that the only thing he could do to divert suspicion from the queen was to blame a cultural demon for everything. The man thought to himself, saying all the previous words to the king that it was a demon cult. Someone had already gone inside the building and said that it could not be that the eighth prince was killed by the people of the demon cult. The advisor and the king looked at the incoming it was the ninth prince. The young man, entering the building, said that this was refuted by the fact that the prince was killed in his carriage on the way back to the palace which means that he should have been the target of the attack. The ninth son was right, the moon demon cult always acted resonantly. If they really wanted to provoke the royal family, they would have come up with something better than just killing the eighth son. The king said, and turning to Ji Kian, asked him to make sure to investigate. The princes and other young masters, turning to the advisor, he asked everyone continue their training within the walls of the palace. A month later, our hero trained until he fell. He thought that in his previous life he managed to open only 33 meridians. He never managed to open the three remaining meridians of the meridian, the chakras of the meridian of the blood spirits, and the meridian of the soul. If a martial artist manages to open the meridian of the chakra for each subsequent year of training, a new layer of rings will appear on his body, his protection will increase and perhaps he will become invulnerable to sword and fire attacks. The blood spirit meridian is a legendary meridian associated with blood. The meridian of the soul connects the physical body with the soul, also allows the soul to leave the body and travel 1,000 miles from it. Little is known about these meridians, but probably he will be able to open the meridian of the chakras and our hero thought to himself, dripping with sweat, after his stormy training. There was a cat sitting next to him, who said that he knew how to cultivate the chakra. If he released the cat, the cat stipulated. This time he would not deceive. After thinking about it, the young man immediately took out a scroll and decided that it was necessary to release the cat. Looking at the cat, the young man asked him to tell something useful, otherwise he would never leave the scroll again. The cat, trembling with horror, said that the young man should not worry. The answer was literally in the young man's hands. If he imagined himself as a tree that creates new rings every year, he would be able to cultivate the chakra. At that moment our hero was looking at the tree on the scroll that was right in front of him. Then reaching for the scroll and imagining all that the cat said, he received those very cherished rings, thinking that it worked. The hero thought to himself that he managed to cultivate the chakra if he continues to cultivate at the same pace. He will definitely become even stronger than in his previous life. When the cat saw what the young man did, he did not understand how he was really able to open the chakra, because he said it just like that and did not think that the young man would really be able to cultivate it. Who was this young man who was standing in front of him? The cat thought out loud. Then when he saw that the guy had done all this, he asked to take him to the store to buy a blacksmith furnace and he would teach the young man how to create a ring of space. The young man, looking at the cat, said that if the code decides to escape somewhere, he will immediately return it back to the scroll. Our hero still did not trust the cat after what he did. Furnaces for melting are quite expensive, and the young man just recently acquired high-level potions, so his wallet was empty, he thought. The cat said that in this world only a young man will be able to create a ring of space. If he starts selling them, he will make a fortune in himself. Taking the cat our hero decided to hit the road. But the cat screamed for the young man to let him go, because the cat was not a pet. He was the king of the earth. Our heroes got to the city and the young man took his sister and Xiangling with him. The sister carried the cat, and Xiangling wanted to gently stroke him. The cat liked it all very much. 
from the building, someone asked who this person was, traveling in the company of two of the most famous beauties in the whole city, the ninth princess and Xiangling. Then the second, addressing brother Liu, said that it was the ninth prince, at the moment the most popular person in the city. How could he not recognize our hero? Of course, I heard all this. Brother Liu thought about what it meant that this was the same person and if he had a high level of cultivation, then he would like to fight with him. Then turning to his brother told him that Liu was actually more interested in Miss Xiangling and right. And if he did not take the initiative, then she will become the wife of the ninth prince. Yug and Ludichin, who were watching our hero from the window, were fed up. Liu said that his position in the city was no worse than that of the ninth prince, so getting a woman for him was only a matter of time and leaning on the windowsill, he jumped straight down to our hero. Our hero, seeing this, thought about how idiotic his appearance was. It must have been this guy from some rich family. At that moment the young man went downstairs and turned to Miss Lin asking if she wanted to keep him company and walk around the city. When Miss Lin saw Mr. Liu, she said that she and the princess and the ninth prince were heading to the martial arts arena, so she was forced to refuse him. Then Liu said that his majesty the ninth prince was also here, and he introduced himself as the young master of Wu City. The Wushu Palace belongs to his family and could he join to the guys? Our hero, looking at him, thought that the young master of the city had a rather famous personality, and decided to see what he was like, so he allowed the young man to go with them. So they all got to the martial arts arena together. Liu said that if his highness also wanted to fight, then first the young man had to sign a life and death certificate. Because if the ninth prince died in the arena, then nothing good would come of it. Jachin was thinking to himself about what kind of guy had a foul mouth, why all the guys in the royal city behaved exactly like him. Our hero clearly did not like it. They came to the arena and saw someone fighting on it. One guy with a red ribbon on his head defeated another by chopping off his head. He said that he had asked him to admit defeat. But the young man did not listen to him. The young man with the severed head managed to win seven victories in a row. But that's all it was equally destined to fall from the fan. Xiangling thought that when addressing his highness and said that the young man defeated the martial arts master of the yellow region with such ease and was our hero sure that he wanted to take part too. But this did not frighten Jochen and he was certainly confident in his fighting skills. He wanted to fight in this arena despite what he had just seen in Xiangling's warning. The sister, looking at her brother, told him that she knew that she could not stop him, but asked him to promise her that he would admit defeat if he faced an invincible enemy, to which the young man replied that his sister would not worry, because he would cope and entered the arena. All the spectators were indignant who it was and who dared to come to the martial arts arena at such a young age. Someone said that it was a typical fame seeker, and dozens of his kind died in this arena every month. The crowd was indignant. At this moment, Liu looked at despair and thought to himself that this was a great chance. If the guy dies in the arena, then King Jun will not be able to do anything. Everyone was watching this fight, which was about to unfold and waiting for something interesting. Our hero's opponent was Hao from the Hao family. He challenged and asked the young man to draw his sword. Then the hero said that the young man was unworthy of this. He was afraid that if he drew his sword, he would severely injure his opponent. Our hero told his opponent. The same one, thinking that it was too arrogant, immediately flew to attack our hero. Jochen stood calmly and waited for the young man to attack him, saying that he was unworthy and attacked him in response, with just a wave of his hand. He was immediately defeated and looking at the back of the outgoing winner, who said that the young man recognized that he was unworthy of him. He asked him and said that he thanked the guy for that he spared him. The crowd cheered. All the spectators asked who this mysterious guy was, then someone said that it was the ninth prince. He received the sacred mark. On the same day as this guy who spoke about it, it meant that he was also chosen by the gods in the future he will definitely succeed. Looking at this, Liu kept thinking that he wanted to take this opportunity to humiliate the young man. But he did not expect that the guy would be the center of attention. Everyone said that the ninth prince was a real genius. The sister was thinking that the ninth brother was incredibly unpredictable. What kind of power was he hiding? Looking at him, the girl thought. While everyone was praising the guy, the enemy attacked him with a sword, but this did not frighten him in any way, and he pushed the young man away with just one hand, so it was with all the others who went at him. Everyone was defeated trying to attack our hero. Everyone saw that the guy won four matches in a row. Each time he threw his opponent out of the arena with one blow. What kind of guy was he? Everyone thought. This was watched by a young man with a fan who fought until our hero came to the arena. 
and thought that the young man did not use a sword, but each of his attacks had a very creative form. It seems that he reached the stage of the sword following the heart, the guy with the fan thought to himself. At the same moment our hero he struck again and attacked another opponent. The sister, looking at her brother, thought that the ninth brother was really incredible and defeated the martial arts master of the yellow area with one blow. Ziangling sitting next to her said that his highness must have broken through to a higher area after the annual exam. Despite all this, Liu asked his subordinate to find Han and tell him that he was needed. The subordinate unconditionally followed his orders. Fan thought that the guy was only 16 years old, but he had already reached such a level and he could not be left alive. Then a girl with a whip came into the arena saying that she greeted his highness and apologized if she somehow hurt him and started her attack. The young man thought that it was interesting because she had an unusual whip in her hands. A young man dodged her blows, and then decided to attack himself by approaching the girl so close, which surprised her very much and was able to hit her with just two fingers of his hand, pressing on her pain points, where she was holding her weapon in her hand. The weapon fell out of the girl's hand, and the young man walking away from her and turning his back spoke about her surrendering. Then she thanked his highness for his mercy, rubbing her hand and admitting defeat. This time, the guy who had fought with the fan before decided to join the match, saying that in the ninth match it was his turn to put an end to the prince's victory and entering the ring he was ready to fight our hero. Jochen saw that it was the same guy with the fan and of course he was interested in fighting with him. Entering the arena, the young man said that he introduced himself as Zhu Bingsheng and greeted her, addressing his highness the ninth prince. Looking at the young man, Jochen thought that outwardly he was one in one like Liu, since people from rich families always looked so stupid. The guy thought to himself. Addressing his highness, Zhu said that in their battle, he advised the young man to draw his sword at that moment. The guy was hiding behind his fan and smiling at our hero. Jachen, looking at him without much enthusiasm, said that if his strength showed him worthy, then he would really draw his sword. At that moment, the guy was standing and knives appeared from the guy's fan and he addressed his highness saying that he should have been careful, because it was his fans of steel bones that nine powerful martial artists had already died. After hearing this phrase, our hero realized that something was wrong, and then he saw that the young man had launched his attack. Jumped up with his fan, Zhu said that he hoped that his highness the prince would not become the tenth, and decided to attack our hero. The young man, looking up at the jumped Zhu, said that he had come here to kill, that he would not become ten then it was necessary to see if he was strong enough for this. Going down and attacking our hero powerfully, that Jochen even had to get his sword, because the young man was really strong and was worthy of his sword. Then Zhu talked about the young man to stop talking nonsense and start attacking if he could. Liu Fan, looking at the ninth prince and the guy with the fan fighting, said that even Zhu fought on equal terms with the prince. It was difficult to predict the winner. At that moment his subordinate brought to Liu the one he needed. It was the Han Axe that had arrived at Master Liu's request. Axe Han was a half-orc warrior and looked like a half-human half-animal. Standing next to Liu told him that there was no need for this courtesy. They needed to watch the young man in the arena. If Zhu also lost, then Axe Han had to go out there in the next match and finish off the young man. Axe Han said that he would not let Liu down. If Zhu did not kill the young man, he would kill the young man even if it cost him his life. His eyes were burning at the moment when he said it. Our hero continued to fight with his strong opponent, repelling his attacks and attacking in response. Zhu realized that the young man had destroyed his shadow with a few swings of the sword and he was much stronger than him. The young man was already holding on with the last of his strength. Then Jochen, walking from behind, talked about what the young man was thinking, that he still had time to relax, because it was some kind of self-confidence and our hero used a divine heartbreaking plum to defeat his opponent at that moment Zhu was smitten. The sister said that the young man was a real wolf in sheep's clothing, and she was also worried about him. If his father found out about it, he would be so happy that he would invite all his ministers to the banquet. The girl from the stand said, Ziangling, watching his highness the ninth prince, said that why didn't he leave the arena, did he really want to continue fighting? At that moment, the young man felt some kind of strong murderous aura and looking back saw that he was being attacked by a half-orc. He jumped up in the sky and was ready to attack our hero, attacking him directly from the back. But our hero managed to dodge this blow. The Hanax said that the young man was really strong and that he was glad that he had to kill him. The girls, when they saw Han's axe, said that it was very big trouble. They were very surprised that he entered the ring against our hero and were very much afraid for the young man. The Han axe said that the young man was lucky because two beauties were worried about him. From this he wanted to kill him even more and therefore asked to taste his axe and attacked our hero again. 
While repelling his attack, Jiaqin thought about who it was, because his power was so fierce that it was even difficult for him to repel this opponent was not like an ordinary person. He was someone else. At this moment, the sister was shouting at the ninth brother to admit defeat. Ax Han is a madman obsessed with martial arts. Not a single martial artist who fought with him could survive. Xiangling picked her up, saying that it was Liu Fan's half-human servant. He would definitely kill the ninth prince. She said, he shouldn't have fought this madman. The girls were very worried about the prince and tried to make him give up. The orc was talking about addressing the guy that these two girls told him to admit defeat. If the young man did not listen to them, then the hand axe would cut him in two with his axe. The young man stood and watched, listening to every word of his opponent. At that moment, Liu addressed him, saying that if his highness was afraid of death, then he should admit defeat, otherwise he would die in this arena and he would not be able to explain it to the king. The guy spoke from the podium. Royan just listened to him without turning around and saying nothing. Then, looking at his opponent, he said that it was still unknown which of them would live and who would die, because they had not yet started their battle. Then Liu shouted to the guy that he did not know what he was doing. He began to turn to the axe of Han, saying that this one should demonstrate his strength to the ninth prince and not let him underestimate himself. The Han axe on the background of the prince was really a giant half-wit who looked very strong and addressing the little prince he was telling him to enjoy his last moments on this earth, rushing to attack our hero. The young man also talked about the big guy trying and making him feel what fear is. At that moment, the Han Axe began its attack directly on our hero with its giant weapon, to which our hero asked if this was really all the orc was capable of, repelling his attack with his ball. The orc, getting into the taste, told the guy that if he wanted to die so much, he would gladly dig his grave for him and again began to attack our hero. They fought in a terrible fight so that everyone was afraid for the ninth prince. The sister, looking at the ring, hoped that the ninth brother was not injured, because nothing was visible because of the energy that only flew around the ring. At that moment, the fog began to dissipate and it was clear that the Han Axe was attacking our hero, but being such a weakling, he was simply unworthy of the screaming blood that flowed in him, our hero said, and also that the orc disappointed him. Therefore, the young man, reflecting his blow, began to attack the orc. He did not expect this at all and decided to use his power. Then our hero, also using the power of his sword, decided not to yield to him. The young man wanted to see how many blows his ball could withstand the body of the proud orc and began to attack him. At some point the young man managed to inflict damage to the orc and he praised him for the fact that the young man managed to inflict a serious wound on him. His eyes were burning and he was full of rage and it looks like he will have to send the young man straight to hell, the orc thought, summoning all his might. The orc was fully armed and again began to attack our hero of the summoning with all his strength. The young man immediately felt that the strength of his blows had increased very sharply, and he understood that now he needed to be on guard and used all his defense to defend himself from the blows of the orc, which did not weaken only attacked our hero. Jumping into the air, the orc again tried to break through our hero's defense, but the young man said that if he wanted to kill him, then he would have to destroy his defense, whether the orc could cope with it. He, looking at our hero, said that his chatter drove him crazy and from this he only became angry and began to attack the young man even more, but he could not break through his defense in any way. Then the orc again decided to use all his might to attack the young man, and our hero saw that the guy could enter berserk mode. It was very interesting watching the axe, our hero thought. The audience said that after orc stimulates the blood of the spotted lion in his body, he becomes nine or ten times stronger than the bull. Axe Han has clearly gone crazy in the opinion of all viewers. My sister screamed at my brother to admit defeat, because he was not worth playing with death. Liu also looked at the guy and thought that he was a good fellow who made Han's axe fly into a rage. But, unfortunately, if the young man loses, then only death awaits him. The Han axe was already insanely strong, from the fact that he used his strength and decided to try to break through our hero's defense again. Using an earth explosion, he attacked the young man. Jachin thought that he wanted to continue the battle, so he couldn't waste too much Kai. He had to wait until the orc destroyed his defense and when he relaxed, he would deal him a decisive blow. At that moment, the sister saw that the Han Axe had destroyed the ninth brother's defense, and the young man, seeing this, thought that it was necessary to attack right now, so using his sword, he decided to defeat the orc. Realizing that he had lost, Axe Han thought that some kid had defeated him in his berserker mode. It was incredible and with great force he fell right on the podium struck by our hero. All the spectators were surprised by what they had just seen. Because even the half-orc Han Axe sticks to the feet of the ninth prince. How could he be a loser? 
because he is just the real pride of heaven itself. Sister hugged Xianling said that it was a great victory and another victory for her brother, who will officially become a martial arts master in the yellow area. The girls were so happy that they did not even notice how they started hugging, after which they went to the sides looking contemptuously at each other. Liu was angry, saying that the Han Axe was garbage, because he could not kill the Ninth Prince who had been a loser for all these years, calling the orc the worst garbage, because now the young man will have to do everything himself, which he did not expect at all. The ninth prince won nine matches, one more victory and the young man will advance to the martial arts master of the yellow region. The host said, and if someone is ready to challenge the prince, then he was invited to the arena. The whole hall cheered and applauded the prince while he stood in the arena and proudly waited for his opponent. Then the opponent started jumping out into the arena, saying that he would like to test the fighting skills of His Highness the Ninth Prince. After hearing this, the guy realized that someone was attacking from behind and decided to dodge. The opponent said that the Ninth Prince was indeed a real genius, but he could not defeat him. Liu, who was ranked 11th in the yellow area, took the stage. The young man, looking at him, thought that unlike him, he was full of strength, and our hero should finish the battle as soon as possible because he no longer had the strength after so many fights, but he offered Liu to fight. Liu said that he would not stop until he personally buried the ninth prince in the ground and summoning all his might. Liu was ready to fight with our hero. Liu went to attack our prince, and our hero decided that first it was necessary to test his strength in order to draw further conclusions, so they clashed with swords in their duel. Liu said that it must have been difficult to imagine that the young man defeated Han's axe with such techniques and Liu was a little disappointed, so he decided that it was necessary to finish with the guy quickly, and informed him about it. At that moment, their knives uncoupled, and they dispersed to different corners of the arena. Liu told the young man that he had heard that he was good with a sword, because what a coincidence it was. Liu was also an excellent swordsman and decided to use the meteor sword technique by pointing it directly at our hero. The young man understood that it would not be easy to return from all the balls, he could rely on only one technique and looking at the attack that was coming straight to him, he decided that he needed to open the meridian eye right now. It was a technique that he had left for a snack, but decided that it was her turn. The young man, looking at the opponent, understood that with the meridians of his eyes open, he could easily dodge the energy and the sword, and at that moment the young man began to dodge his attack, asking Liu, or was it really his entire attack? Liu asked the young man to stop being so arrogant and again decided to attack him with his sword attack. Then seeing this attack, the young man realized that the swords had become much faster. She had to use her attacks much faster. Dodging them, the young man ran straight at Liu. The same one tried to attack our hero again with his sword attack and seeing that the guy was too close, he realized that now the young man could not dodge the attack with a high radius of defeat and decided to attack him at that moment. Jochen realized that the attack was very strong. The thick fog from the explosion obscured the entire arena, and no one understood what was happening on it. The sister, looking at the arena, began to call the ninth brother, because she could not understand whether he was okay or not. Xiangling sitting next to him was also very surprised. Liu appeared out of the smoke and asked Miss Zionel if she had seen everything. Because the so-called genius she was talking about was not his equal, was the girl sure that the young man was the one she wanted to follow? Jochen, thanks to Liu, said that he was very flattered that he raised the dust now the young men will not catch him. Thanks to the open meridian eyes, such conditions were better suited for reading attacks than ever. While Liu was talking about how cool he was and bragging to the girls, Jochen went on the attack and attacked the young man with his fast speed. Liu, seeing this, did not understand what kind of speed the young man had, because he was already very close to him and he did not expect it at all. Then our hero attacked him with a ball. Jochen was able to wound Liu right in the neck and trying to dodge his blow. He thought about how the young man was able to wound him. How was it even possible? And taking out his sword, he again began to attack the young man again and again. Our hero dodged his attacks, and then they clashed again in battle. Their swords crackled with the energy that roamed in the air. At some point, Liu could not stand it and asked the young man to go to hell again directing his attack from balls at him and saying that the young man's reserve of strength was coming to an end. He was sweating the same thing to Liu, because both of them were already exhausted by each other's attacks. Liu thought that the guy was laughing at him, because he was a genius, the strongest of geniuses. Did Ruachin think that he was able to make him spend all his kai, because the young man was going to kill him with the next attack? 
Looking at this, Jochen said that he talked too much because he was becoming more and more like a dog barking at him. From these words, Liu Fan went berserk. He did not have time to chat with Jochen as he spoke and decided to attack him with the meteor sword technique again. Then our hero used a plum splitting the heavens and their techniques collided again, forming a powerful explosion, raising dust in the arena so that people watching it again did not see what was going on there. After looking at all this, the sister and Xiangling were very surprised. They were afraid for the young man again. And Xiangling said that she was afraid that even the duel of the high levels of the yellow area was not as destructive as the one in front of them. Two figures standing watching the fight, one of whom was a father, told his son, who was still too impulsive, to be taken to the infirmary. It was Liu Fan's father, his subordinate was standing next to him and said that the strength of the ninth prince was unpredictable. If this continues, he will surpass even the seventh prince. The man said that when that time comes, they will help the ninth prince. If they both suffer, it will be the best outcome for them. Jiaqin was standing, and next to him was a girl who congratulated the ninth prince on becoming a master of martial arts of the Yellow Region. 100,000 silver coins would be transferred to his car. The girl reported, all the spectators rejoiced, because it was incredible that the young man managed to become a master of martial arts of the Yellow Region on the first day on arena. The royal family was indeed full of talents. I wonder who is more talented than Ryuachin or the young seventh prince. Jiaqin thought that it was stupid. Martial artists are fighting to the death for the sake of this stupid card that was handed to him, which the young man was holding in his hands at that moment he saw a girl running straight at him, but not one but two, which greatly surprised the young man. It was his sister Yuzayangling. The sister said that the ninth brother was just amazing. She sent a letter to her father and she was sure that they were very happy now. The young man answered the ninth sister that he was too cramped and had nothing to breathe because both girls jumped on him and hugged the young man with all their strength. The rest of the girls watching this said that, the genius was always surrounded by some beauties. The young lady of the Lin family is really ungrateful, they said to reject the ninth prince so harshly. The sister envied the young man, because now he will be able to get to the pond of the barbarian god once again. Hearing this, the guy's eyes lit up and asked his sister if she was serious about saying this. He asked them to hurry back to the palace. Night came, the king's chambers of the district, which was protected by the guards. Our hero came to his father and he, addressing the ninth son, told him to tell him how many meridians the young man managed to open. Then the hero reported that he managed to open the 27th meridian. Hearing this, the king was very surprised and congratulated his ninth son. From now on the young man had to hide them. The fiery ice armor Killen would help the young man in this, so he asked not to forget his son to wear it. The king also took out a fourth-class medicine cleansing the body from his robe, a Killen pill. He asked the young man to take it when he entered the barbarian god's pond and began his cultivation, thereby enhancing its effect. Holding out the box to the young man, he said that his ninth son, given that he was born into the royal family, if he did not cope, he would be expelled and after listening to his father, the young man accepted everything and went on. The queen at this moment was tearing and throwing as the ninth prince became a master of martial arts of the yellow region. She could not continue to let him become stronger. This made her very angry and turning to her subordinate, she asked what the queen meant, then turning to King Glow. The queen asked the girl, because she had already broken into the area Xuan. Is it right? During this month she wanted to get the ninth prince's head, no matter what it cost, the queen turned to King Glow. King Glow replied that if the ninth prince did not leave the palace during this month, then what should they do? Then the queen calmed her anger, looked at her subordinate, said that she didn't care about it. She said that whatever it took, this problem had to be solved. King Lo understood her queen and listened to her further. The queen said that she would strangle him in the bud and see what the belated genius would do then. And she addressed the prince to herself, who very much spoiled her plans and annoyed the queen to the point of impossible. Lin's house. The old man was sitting and talking about how he had just returned and heard that a new genius had appeared in their district and this genius was Jochen's grandson. His grandson. He thought it was time to let go of what happened three years ago. It was Lin Jingai, the last head of the Lin family. There were three people standing in front of him. The old man told them to take the time to apologize to the girl. After all, she was their sister. Besides, Jochen and Lin were childhood friends and as he remembered, they were engaged. Everyone was watching and listening to the old man. Then he asked why they didn't answer anything. What happened? After all, all the young men stood silently and listened to him. At this moment, Lin Bei's second son replied that a couple of months ago, the fourth sister came here with his ninth highness trying to establish a relationship. But the elder brother humiliated her and drove her away. He was sure she still holds a grudge against them. 
Lin Zhizhao's third son said that his brother had overdone it too much because they were relatives. How could they treat them like that? Enraged, Lin Jingai said that the young man was a scoundrel and now go with him to these people and apologize to his sister and Jia Chen. Because it was ignoble on his part, turning to his father, he understood what his feelings were. But as the head of the family it would be too humiliating for him to ask forgiveness from his own sister. The son answered his father. The same one asked if the young man dared to expose the Lin family in a bad light. Did he not understand that his stubbornness could destroy the future of their family? Why was it necessary to stoop to their level and apologize to them? The young man said. And then they saw that Chen Yu had returned back. He was Lin Fengxian's son, a servant of the Seventh Prince. He was talking about how His Highness the Seventh Prince had sent him here to sort out a couple of problems, like his cousin. Hearing this, Lin said that His Highness had sent him here to get rid of the Ninth Prince, because he was related to him. To which the young man did not understand why everyone was so alarmed. Because the master wanted the young man to die, so that's how it should have been. Addressing his grandfather, the young man said that later they should not blame him, that he did not warn, if grandfather turns out to be on the wrong side. When the master breaks through to the next level from the family, Lin will have nothing left. The old man was thinking about what this rebel was like. Then the young man, turning around, said that by the way, after his request, the master promised to take Lin as a concubine, and then he would personally discuss it with the queen. The brothers, looking at each other, were perplexed. One turning to the second brother asked. The father's anger was now directed at the elder brother and Chen Yu. Perhaps he would not be angry at them. To which the second replied that he did not think so because the father was furious. Addressing the seventh prince, the old man asked how things were going with Lin Na's engagement. Then the son said that this was the wish of Chen Yu and Lin Na. It seemed to him that the Lin family could rely on the seventh prince. The old man realized that it seemed to him more that the Lin family became slaves of the seventh prince. And at that moment, the pond of the barbarian god, our hero came to him again and again used his abilities to cultivate energy. It took him seven days to completely purify the kill and pill that his father gave him. The power of the blood ritual in the barbarian god's pond can help him better understand the meridian of the blood spirit, the meridian of the soul. So the young man cultivated his energy sitting in a huge ball of blood right above the pond. Ten days later, our hero continued to cultivate while sitting in the pond of god. There was pure energy around him and he tried his best. At that moment, the young man realized that he had reached the absolute yellow region and opened the 36 meridian. It was so unimaginable that he felt the true power. At that moment, flying into the air and concentrating his energy, he realized that it was the meridian of the soul. And it was incredible, the young man seemed to have separated from his body and could do anything. The cat who was watching all this thought to himself that this guy was really able to separate his soul from his body and it just couldn't be. Only a martial artist of the absolute heavenly realm can do such a thing. Given this strength, it is a martial soul. If he manages to cultivate it, he will be able to use the spiritual energy of heaven and earth to attack his enemies. Moreover, this valuable space-time fighting spirit, which will eventually be able to use the power of space and time in battle with the enemy. Through long cultivation, this guy can really get close to that person. The next moment, the young man was already training near his house, honing his skills, his sister was watching. Turning to the ninth brother, she asked if the young man was still practicing the technique of his palms. She had heard that Lin Na was engaged to seventh brother and asked if the young man had heard about it. Then our hero, looking at his sister, sweating after his long training, asked what this had to do with him. Since his sister was so free, maybe she was going to the martial arts arena with him. This interested him much more than the engagement. The sister was very surprised by his suggestion. Did the young man really want to go to the arena again? Because she heard that he had been training in the barbarian god pond for 24 days. Did the young man manage to break into the absolute yellow area? The sister of her brother asked. Then the young man rubbed his head after training, being a little shy and told his sister that it happened somehow by accident. Then she took his hand and persuaded him that the ninth brother was a real genius compared to her, and she was a real mediocrity and invited him to go and open her eyes, to which the young man running after his sister, he asked her to let him at least change, because he was in the same clothes in which he had been training all morning. They went to the city, and the brother followed his sister, asking why he had to put on a hood, why she asked him about it. The sister, addressing her brother, said that his past performance in the arena made the young man the most famous person in the city. Now the guy was a real star, so he would have to cover his face so that he would not be surrounded by fans, the girl said. At that moment, Kinglo was watching them, holding her weapon in her hands and sitting high on the building, 
When she saw the prince and his sister, she thought that she finally had a chance and this time the prince could not get away from her, as the girl thought. Everyone crowded around the arena and no one understood what was happening and why there were so many people. Someone from the crowd said that he heard that a swordsman killer appeared here, who cuts off the heads of his opponents and it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, it didn't stop him. His eighth victim was lying in front of people, under white with sheets. The only thing that scared him was the fact that he was only 15 years old. Hearing about this, the brother said the swordsman killer, saying that it looks like he had very unique attacks. He would like to learn something from this man. Then the sister looked at him and listened to what he said, said that it was impossible not to worry about such a brother as our hero. Immediately, the killer, whose name was Ali, appeared. It was a young man with a sullen appearance who was watching everything that was happening. Our hero said that the young man is naturally able to force the energy of the sword to follow his heart. His sword has reached the middle stage of the heart, which also includes a killing Kai. The sister, listening to her brother, said that the young man did not look like a pure-blooded person. Rather, he looked like a demonic wolf and a half-human and asked only to look at his ears and red eyes. It was scary. At this moment, a young man approached him. He asked if it was really another tired of life. It was Axe Han, asking Ali the guy who was the assassin's swordsman approaching him. He said that he was only a pathetic werewolf compared to the orc, because he was Axe Han, who would deal with the young man. In the next moment, the guy's eyes flashed, and he dealt with Hanum's axe with just one blow, cutting his weapon and dealing with the orc himself. The ninth brother and the ninth sister were watching this, they didn't even have time to catch how fast it was, because everything happened in a second. The sister, turning to her brother, asked if Han's axe was really killed with one blow, whether our hero would be able to resist this guy's sword. The young man, addressing the ninth sister, despite her, said that a month ago it would have been difficult to say, but now he was confident in himself. The sister, rubbing her head from the fact that the young man was too self-confident, said that she did not understand anything at all. It was really incredible to have such a brother, but at the same time it scared the girl. She confessed to her ninth brother. At that moment, someone called out to them from the arena and the guys turned around. Someone said that addressing a cousin, that three years had passed since their last meeting. Turning around, they saw half a man and half a woman. It was the famous cousin of our hero, the servant of the seventh prince, who said that I missed our hero very much. Jochen said that they really hadn't seen each other for a long time. Addressing his devilish cousin, he didn't expect to meet a young man in the yellow rank martial arts arena. Hearing that the young man called him devilish, the prince did not like it very much and he asked how he dared to laugh at his shortcomings when addressing this guy. At this moment, all the spectators in the arena, addressing the tenth, said that this young man Ali really killed ten people. Ali raising his hands up, addressing the man, said that he fulfilled his promises to her and won ten matches in a row. His last body lay in front of him. Lin, looking at the young man with burning eyes, said that Ali was incredible. Many doors were opened to him with all his abilities, and why would he remain a servant of the Lin family? The blushing young man said that all he wanted was to be near Miss Lin, that was all he needed. Miss Lin thought to herself that it was disgusting, if this half-human slave wasn't so useful, Lin wouldn't let him address her. Turning to her cousin, Lin asked if he had to fight with all lie, how many blows he could withstand. Then our hero said that she should appreciate that someone with all her heart wants to protect her. At this moment the sister gave her brother standing up and asked the ninth to be careful. Lin, looking at the young man, said that he had already become a master of martial arts of the yellow list. So why would he go to the arena again? Maybe they wanted to fight and at that moment the tenth said that if all I killed the guy right on the stage, then it would only be to his advantage our hero immediately climbed on the stage is ready to fight. All the spectators cheered and when they saw the young man, they said that it was the ninth prince, was the young man here again. If he wants to earn money again, he will have to defeat 10 yellow list martial artists. Someone said that it was impossible. The members of the royal family would not risk their lives for a couple of silver coins. Moreover, in the Yun domain, no one has ever managed to defeat 10 yellow list martial artists in a row. Even if the seventh prince could not do it, then no one can. Immediately, Liu appeared who said that the young man was lucky to defeat him last time. But this time he told the ninth prince that everything would be different, addressing the young man differently. When Jiaqin saw Master Liu, addressing him, he said that if Mr. Liu wanted to be the first so much, then he could attack him. So their new battle began. Liu, seeing our hero, who was standing without a single weapon, asked if he was going to fight him without a ball, because he was already armed with his sword, but that our hero replied that so far he was going to fight him that way. 
Liu, of course, got angry and decided to attack the guy, saying that how dare he underestimate him and that the young man would pay for his arrogance by using sparkling ice to attack Zha Chen. The young man did not hesitate to use his two fingers to put them against Liu's kick and his two fingers touched together with the points of the ball. At that moment Liu's hand broke in the bones and he felt incredible pain. Holding onto his hand, he shouted to the whole stadium. Then our hero concluded that the young man was no longer his opponent. Liu, dripping with sweat and dying of pain, asked when the hero became so strong. Jia Chen asked why Liu was so obsessed with victory, because he had a good life and his family was rich, why he came out here and made a fool of himself. Hearing this Liu said that he would kill the young man and rushed at him again with his fists. Our hero, turning away from Liu, thought that the young man was stubborn as a donkey and it wasn't even worth wasting his strength on him. But he was like an annoying fly, and therefore turned to him and attacked him right in the head with his foot. The ninth sister, watching her brother, said that he really did not hold back the blow. He did not care at all about Liu. Besides, he did not feel a bit sorry for his cousin in front of everyone, she thought. You will hear the words Lin curse the ninth princess. Did she dare to mock her in her presence? A little more and Jiaqin will fall from all eyes sword and then she will watch her sister sing then. Liu was lying on the ground, and our hero was standing next to him and looked at how the guy was crying, saying that he would train hard and then challenge again. Liu was lying on the ground completely broken. His teeth were knocked out and he was in despair. After looking at this spectacle, Jia Chen said that Liu was really different from the rest of the rich kids and he would wait for Liu's call. After that, the young man went to the arena to fight with his next rivals. Jia Chen was fighting with another opponent, and the presenter announced that our hero was the winner. This was the case with each subsequent opponent who decided to challenge Wu Jia Chen. The next opponent lost in the same way, and our hero won two victories in a row already three in a row, so there were five victories in a row, six and seven. Everyone was surprised to see how the young man could win seven victories in a row. The audience was so surprised how the young man defeated seven yellow rank martial artists with one blow. Only a month had passed, the young man really was a real martial arts genius, the viewers who watched this thought. Of course, there were a lot of girls among the audience and they said that the ninth prince was very handsome and they would give 10 years of their lives to marry him. They were all madly in love with the guy, and the young men did not understand at all what was wrong with him. My sister, watching her ninth brother, thought to herself that the once ridiculed loser had been reborn into a proud prince, whom everyone looks up to, she was very proud of him, like his sister. Lin Na, who was watching all this, was very unhappy that the young man was the center of attention again and turned to all lie who was standing behind her. The girl said that it was now his turn, because the young man dared to humiliate her, so All Lai was obliged to kill him. All Lai obeyed Lin implicitly, saying that he was ready to fight the guy. They went out to a duel. The host announced that all the people were waiting for the start of this match, in which the swordsman killer All Lai would challenge the talented prince of the royal family Zha Chen. The young men stood opposite each other and All Lai said that the guy was really strong. But he insulted Miss Lin, so All Lai had to take the young man's life. Jia Chen, addressing the guy, said that there was a fatal flaw in his possession of the ball. He would never defeat him. Perhaps the young man would even die, so our hero suggested that it was better for him to retreat. But All Lai was confident in himself in the same way and said that they would only find out by fighting each other. Our hero, addressing the young man, said that there is a ban on martial art, the technique of the ball taking life. This is a really powerful technique, but every hit with the ball causes huge damage to his body. At that moment, Lai's eyes lit up red and grabbing his sword, he said that since the young man was aware of his technique, then he should understand what it was capable of. Our hero also grabbed his sword and, addressing the young man, told him that his technique was not complete. If he did not want to retreat, then he had to show how strong he was. Lin, seeing that they were still talking, ordered All Lai to start the battle and stop talking. At that moment the guy rushed to attack our hero. Seeing the wolf rushing at himself, our hero decided to open the meridians of his eyes and began to fight with him using his sword and repelling the attack of All Lai. Their red eyes shone in battle and energy dissected the entire field. This was closely watched by the audience who saw two very strong rivals fighting in the air. Jia Chen's eyes were burning red and black. The young man thought to himself that the young man's speed was much higher than Liu's. This would be an excellent training to improve the reaction. The guy thought to himself. Ali, seeing the young man's smile, did not understand how he had enough time to laugh, because did you really think that was all that Ali was capable of? He asked the guy. 
The spectators watching their fight could not follow the movements of the guys in any way, because this was the true speed of the martial artists of the Yellow Region. They were so fast that it was very difficult to see something, but people only saw their shadows and continued to watch the fight with bewilderment. Lin rejoiced, she also watched the fight, thinking to herself that what a wonderful feeling it was, because one talented swordsman would die at the hands of another and for her sake. She had a feeling as if she was holding them in the palm of her hand and only she was behind everything. The guys continued to fight and Jochen asked All Lai to admit defeat, because if he continued, he would fall from his ball due to his exhaustion. For All Lai, it was an insult, as an ordinary person dared to think that he could be stronger than him and he decided that he would show him the true horror of his werewolf clan. At this moment, their young man's eyes were burning like never before. He was angry and his strength was really running out. But he wanted to continue fighting along with the battle for Lin's hearts. Jochen, holding his sword in his hands, was ready for his attacks and said that if the young man still had powerful techniques, then he could go forward, otherwise he was afraid that All Lai would not have a single chance to defeat him. At that moment, All Lai began to transform from his human form into a beast using his full powers. Seeing this, the sister shouted to the ninth brother to kill him. If the young man awakens his wolf blood, then trouble could not be avoided. But our hero said that his sister should not worry, Lee was waiting for this moment. Then the young man awakened his wolf essence and really became more like a wolf than a man. Lin, watching this, told Jiajin that they were friends in childhood. If he had not humiliated the girl, she would not have killed him, but now he will pay for his carelessness, watching the girl from the stands. Seeing the guy in wolf form, our hero realized that he was a worthy opponent and took out his sword. Then Ali, addressing the young man, said that if he wanted to fight, then he should come forward, because all this chatter was completely unnecessary. Then the young man only had time to turn away, as the wolf ran straight at him, seeing out of the corner of his eye that he began to attack. The young man realized that the guy was too fast and he could not dodge his attack, so he tried to block the young man using his defense, which he successfully broke through. Seeing this, Jochen was scared and put a block. The wolf said that now the young man's shield was broken and he had nowhere to hide. But Jochen was not going to hide, so he decided to immediately attack the young man using his sword and his hand strike. Seeing this as our hero deflected all lies blow, Ninth Sister hoped that this was the end. Lin Ninchen thought that she could not even think that even All Lai would lose to our hero. In the stands, the girl shouted that the Ninth Prince was so strong. He defeated the assassin swordsman so easily, and among the geniuses of the same age, the only one who could defeat the Ninth Prince was the Seventh Prince. All the fans were indignant that the young man was so strong. All Lai, realizing that he had lost and lying on the floor, asked our hero why he did not kill him, to which the young man replied that he had never killed and would not. But about himself the hero thought that unless he met someone who really deserved it, then he would kill him. All Lai, looking at the guy, said that he owed him his life and in the future he would definitely repay him. When it was over, All Lai was dragged into a dark room where Lin asked to break his arms and legs. The girl was beside herself with anger, she was just furious, because this damn swordsman was not even able to kill the prince and she said that it was not worth taking such a useless person as All Lai as slaves the more she thought about it. The angrier she stopped and asked to kill the young man. The young man did not expect such cruelty to himself, because he had always been on Lin's side and at that moment he was hit so hard that the only thing he saw was Miss Lin leaving him and still thought that he would give his life for her. Tears welled up in the hero's eyes. He could not to believe that such a thing had happened to him. The young man was lying on the ground and at that moment our hero approached him, seeing him with his sister. The sister told the ninth brother that the guy was badly injured. His arms and legs were broken and they could not save him. Even his own master did not care about him. Then the hero said that if they leave him here, the young man will definitely die, and therefore he asked to call two people, because they had to take him with them to the palace. Whether he will live or die now depends only on his willpower. While the young man was saying this and looking at all lie, who was lying on the ground, he was thinking about what happened to him once, when a loving person betrayed him and he was able to return and survive after that. So they headed their carriage to the palace and at that moment Kinglo saw that it was the ninth prince's carriage. All this time she was watching him, waiting in the wings and rushed to attack her, saying that the young man died trying to break his carriage and kill the ninth prince himself. The cart was broken, the horse was lying to the side and Kinglo realized that she had let the young man slip away again. At this moment, the young man, addressing her as the murderer of the Black Region, said that she personally came all this way to kill him and it was a great honor for him, sinking to the ground behind Kinglo, our hero said. And on the other hand, the ninth sister went straight down and told the woman not to worry, because they weren't going to kill her. 
They just wanted to know who she was and who hired her. Kinglo, looking at them, thought that it was two children of the end of the yellow region who dared to say that they would spare her. As if they had the opportunity to kill her, Kinglo told them. At that moment Kinglo grabbed her weapon and bent towards her sister. Then the brother shouted that the ninth sister she was careful because the woman was coming at her directly with a weapon. The sister was thinking that the ninth brother really underestimated the War of the Yellow Region. Did he really think that she would not be able to defend herself from such an attack? Holding her umbrella in her hands and deflecting all the blows of the woman, the ninth sister said. Kinglo looked at this as the fact that the girl was unworthy of Kinglo fighting her seriously. And at that moment Kinglo went straight to the ninth brother. So the sister shouted for the young man to be careful, because the woman was heading straight in his direction. Pushing off from the tree, she flew straight towards the ninth prince, attacking him with her dagger. The young man reflected this and said that this was to be expected, because she was an expert in the black area and much fiercer than the yellow experts. But the hero was able to repel her attack. When she heard this, she asked if he really believed that she was like Liu, or someone like him and at that moment her dagger took on a life of its own, enveloping the prince's hand, that he could not cope with this woman just like that. Was very surprised by the possibilities of the dagger and then began to fall, and the woman stuck out a claw from his hand that was fatally poisoned and could kill a young man. Then the sister screamed to heaven, saved her brother, attacking our hero with her claw. Kinglo wanted to hit the young man right in the eye, but the hero quickly realized and was able to repel her attack with his two fingers, directing them directly into her hand, so the woman was not ready for such an attack and weakened away from the prince. The young man, looking at this, said that next time they would send someone stronger than this killer, because someone of her level could not even claim to be his sparring partner. Attack the girl again? The young man said, looking at how the girl could not repel his attacks. He thought that it was ridiculous, she could not be someone like the War of the Black Area. And capturing the wing, he wanted to attack her again. The girl thought that the young man's cultivation was only a yellow area, but why was he so strong? She could not repel his attacks and was defeated, to which the sister, addressing the ninth brother, said that the girl was still a woman and maybe there was no need to be so cruel, but that the ninth brother he replied that the woman was a murderer and gender does not matter. At that moment, the sister realized that the young man's tongue was even sharper than his ball. Kinglo was startled and lying on the fragments of a large stone. She could not move and only looked at the young man who came up to her saying that this was her last chance asking who wanted to kill him so much that the woman said. But she used all her strength to attack the young man again. Her body was embraced red energy and on her leg was a weapon that could hit the prince right on the cheek. Our hero did not expect this at all, so he did not have time to dodge her attack and was wounded, to which the girl thought to herself that her murder had failed. She had to get out of here despite the fact that the young man was still in the yellow area, and he lacked combat experience. He was still very strong and she managed to escape, our hero only watched as the girl ran away. King Lo thought to herself that the ninth prince's strength was comparable to an expert from the middle of the black region. She needed to get out of here immediately and report all this to the queen. Our hero, who was running next to the girl, said that even after the excitement of the spiritual blood, her speed did not increase much, although she was only in the middle of the black area. At that moment they both ran across the roofs and Kinglo realized that the young man had just recently reached the yellow area, so how could he become so fast and be able to catch up with her? Our hero was fighting with Kinglo, who was trying to escape from him on the roof. But at that moment she was thinking that this guy was very fast and very hardy, if this continued, she was afraid that she would be caught alive. Therefore, he decided that it was necessary to act and decided to use a hidden weapon after seeing this on the hero realized that the girl would attack him now and was able to fend off this blow. Kinglo, seeing that the young man was able to fend off her hidden weapon, understood that she would not be able to escape from him at this moment. Jochen tried to attack Kinglo, saying that if she thought she had only one hidden weapon, then she was mistaken and attacked the girl with her hidden weapon, which she did not expect at all and fell from the roof right to the ground. Approaching her, Jochen thought that it was necessary to take off her mask and understand who the person who wanted him dead was and it was necessary to look at her face. Only he wanted to push the mask away, as the girl was ready to attack our hero using her claw again. But the young man threw her aside and pulled out his sword he said that they could still do everything for good or for bad if she wanted. But so far it seemed to him that he would have to force this information out of the girl. Kinglo, seeing how the young man was heading towards her with the sword, said that she sacrificed too much for the sake of killing the young man and she did not want to let him know anything. At that moment she saw something in her mouth and the young man saw how she began to evaporate. 
Kinglo said that maybe she didn't manage to kill the young man today, but in the future others will definitely come for her and her body dissolved right on the floor, and only her clothes remained. The sister, who came to her brother, asked if the ninth brother was okay and what happened to this killer. Then the young man said that she had died. The girl swallowed a pill with poison and her body evaporated. The young man was wondering who was able to prepare such loyal killers. The sister turned to the ninth prince, saying that if the girl was dead, then they had no evidence left and she was thinking how the prince thinks it will be possible to find the one who pulls the strings. The guys were standing near the clothes that remained from the pursuer. Jochen said that he had a plan to lure the snake out of his lair, and turning to his sister. He said that he needed his sister to arrange some kind of show for him this time. When she heard what her brother was saying about the show, she asked again. Because she did not understand at all what it was about there was a speech. At this moment in her chambers, the queen was thinking that Kinglo's killer still hadn't returned yet and it had to be that something had happened to her. At that moment someone came, saying that there was bad news, then the queen asked why there was a panic and asked to tell what happened. The girl who entered the queen's chambers, it is said that the ninth princess said that she could not kill the ninth prince from Kinglo, and was caught by one of the generals of the royal guard, she was sent to the imperial prison. She also mentioned that the ninth prince managed to see Kinglo's face before he fainted from his injuries. Hearing this the queen was indignant because the imperial prison was not what she needed at all. The queen thought to herself that if his majesty found out that Kinglo was his maid, if he saw her in the imperial prison, then everything would be over. Addressing her maid Zhao Lin, she said that the queen wanted the girl to do everything possible to save Kinglo before his majesty arrived at the imperial prison. If things were bad, then it was necessary to kill Kinglo and get rid of her body. The maid understood and was ready to carry out the order. Zhao Lin asked the queen that the ninth prince had seen Kinglo's face. When it starts, he will understand everything. To which the queen said that she would send two juniors to kill him. The young man would never wake up again. Rising from the throne, the queen said that the four of them were her heart and soul, her sharp blades, and while they were with her, no one would be able to shake her position in this palace, so her warriors needed not to disappoint the queen. Zhao Lin, looking at the queen and kneeling in front, said that she should be calm, because he would not disappoint her for anything. The next day, the queen sat on her throne and asked Chen Yu about the marriage of Ninchen and the seventh prince. She put all the responsibility for this ceremony on the young man, asking what he thought. Then bowing before the queen, he said words of gratitude for her mercy. Then a girl came up to the queen and addressing her, saying that all three of her students were caught by the royal guards. They swallowed a pill with poison and killed themselves. Hearing this, the brother and sister realized that it was bad. The queen was angry and saying about Jochen that it was not bad and she really underestimated the young man at that moment the queen was angry. The queen, sitting on her throne, thought that if they didn't get rid of Jochen now, then in the future he would become a big problem then. The young man, addressing her majesty, asked why they should not hire black market assassins, so the investigation could not lead to them. When she heard this idea, she told the guy that she was giving it to him and if the young man copes, he will benefit the entire Lin clan. The young man, hearing this, addressing the queen, said that she could not worry and just leave it all to him. With his word he guaranteed that the queen would receive the head of the ninth prince as soon as possible. The queen, looking at him, said that it was great and she would wait for good news. The Jade Palace In the Jade Palace, ninth brother and ninth sister were sitting talking to each other. The ninth one said that the person who was put in prison was in the region of the earth. His master must be very powerful. To which the sister replied that it was very bad, because the person who was planned to save the prisoner, as well as the two who planned to kill the young man died. They poisoned themselves because of then their bodies were corroded and no one was able to identify them. The young man thought to himself that initially he thought that the culprit was someone from the royal palace. He heard that today four servants of the queen were sentenced to death because of their misdeeds. It couldn't be a coincidence after all. Four servants are most likely the same murderers. Apparently for this the queen herself is standing. The young man thought to himself. The girl, addressing the ninth brother, asked if that swordsman killer had woken up. Would he like to see him? Then hearing this, the young man said that if this was the case, then he wanted to go to him. Our hero understood that he was still not equal to the queen and should rapidly cultivate and count on victory in the future. When Yun saw his highness, she said that Ah Lai had finally healed his wounds and his broken bones had also healed. But he looked very lost. For the whole day he did not utter a word. 
as if he had lost his mind. Our hero understood that mental injuries cannot be cured so easily. Whether he recovers or not, now depends on him and on his own determination. The sister, standing next to her brother, said that if the young man had time to worry about others, then it was better to think about the situation in which our hero himself was. Pointing at the young man, Yun said that he had been sitting all day and drawing something on the ground. Some face similar to Lin Ninchen saw the sister and realized that the young man was drawing her. All I was sitting under a tree and sketching Lin Ninchen's facial features, right in front of him at that moment our hero came up to him asking where All Eyes' sword was. The same replied that his meridians were destroyed and he would no longer be able to wield a sword. The guy was drooping there was absolutely no life in him. Our hero, hearing what All Eyes said, asked if his meridians were destroyed. Did he become disabled and if that was the case? Then in that case, as a young man had the strength to draw someone's face, our hero asked to see the young man who he turned into because of some woman. Apparently he I overestimated him. At that moment, the stick that the young man was drawing began to shake, and our hero realized that his words had an impact on All Lai and decided to continue his monologue. Turning to All Lai, he said that the girl did not even consider him a person, but he still treated her like some kind of goddess. The young man was to blame for what happened to him and he was worse than garbage. These words had an effect on ALM and jumping up, he said that who does our hero think he is? If he had not saved his life twice, he would have finished him off long ago. Jachin said that the young man could not even be compared to him even if he cultivated for another 10 years, to which, upon hearing this, ALM shouted that he was not garbage and was able to attack our hero using his powers. Seeing this stupid attack, our hero realized that garbage is always garbage and voiced it, saying that why did he save the life of such garbage at all, pushing the young man right into the tree. Then he got angry and decided to attack our hero again. But our hero was able to give him change again, saying that that the guy didn't even have the strength to answer him. How could he even consider himself his opponent being a piece of garbage? So our hero continued to beat the guy and while he could not answer him with anything, seeing this Yun was surprised by what was happening with the ninth prince and what was with all lie. Then the ninth sister, turning to Yun, asked the girl not to worry because the ninth brother was just trying to bring the young man back to his senses. Half an hour later, the young man was lying on the ground and asked Jochen to stop. At the same time, the young man still asked if the young man still wanted to remain a piece of garbage. The young man reluctantly said that he was a swordsman, not a piece of garbage, and thanked the young man for opening his eyes. Jachin said that he had no need to thank him and that the young man was able to sort himself out thanks to his own willpower and what he planned to do next. Our hero asked him. The guy, getting up from the ground, said that with his meridians destroyed, he would not be able to break into the yellow area, so he was thinking about getting spiritual drugs that would help her help him restore his meridians. Jachin said that he had a scroll with martial arts techniques here, which only a person with destroyed meridians can cultivate. And if his will is strong enough, and he will have the opportunity to cultivate a unique martial arts technique. Hearing this, All I was inspired. He asked if this was true, because his rescuers were Jachin. The young man thanked him. All I believed that he owed his life three times to his savior and he would do anything for the young man if he needed it in the future. Hearing this, Ruachin was pleased and told Yun to take care of All I's accommodation and told the guy to take advantage of this opportunity and cultivate diligently. Then the young man went about his business leaving All I sitting on the ground. The ninth sister, hugging the guy, told the ninth brother that he had never been to the royal arena, so today they would go there and cultivate together. The young man was pleased with what his sister said and agreed with her. Yun watched the guys leave. Night came and the guards guarded the peace of the palace. In the palace, a man was telling his majesty that a chick that has never left the nest is not destined to become an eagle. Did it not seem to his majesty that now was the right time to send the ninth prince for an internship? An advisor told him to the king. The king, looking at him, said that it was really so, he managed to break out of the yellow area so quickly. Who knew maybe he could make it to the Yun Tai sect in time? Advisor, saying that his elderly servant thought otherwise, the seventh prince is already on an internship in the Yun Tai sect, and if the ninth prince also arrives there, it will not lead to anything good. The king said that it was true, the bank owner from Wu City told him that he wanted to recommend the ninth prince to the Wu City training palace so that he could practice cultivation. The king's advisor said that this was the training palace of the city. Alas, this school has much stricter requirements than the Yun Tai sect. Only a few are destined to get there. The king, hearing this, said that he thought that the young man would be able to get there with a 90% probability, because when he reaches the black area, 
he will personally ask him if he is interested in this offer. The martial arts field of the royal family. Our heroes have arrived at it again to fight powerful opponents. When he saw those with whom our hero was destined to fight today, he thought that the young kingdom controlled only a small state located on the border, and yet there were a lot of geniuses in the royal family. Ninth sister said that she didn't expect the ninth prince, also known as the incomparable genius, to be shocked by something like this. The young man, addressing the ninth sister in such a way that even though he is a prince, he has been to few places, unlike the experienced ninth princess, who has a lot of clothes for cultivation, but chose exactly the one that resembles a female killer. When she heard this phrase, the girl thought that the young man spoke like some kind of hillbilly. Adjusting her tail in her new outfit, the ninth sister asked if it seemed to the prince that this suit was very functional and stylish. While the guys were discussing it among themselves, someone came up behind them. This someone said that he heard that the ninth brother made a series of ten victories over the military from the yellow list and took first place in the same list. Hearing the voice of our hero realized that it was the sixth prince. The young man, looking at our hero, asked if he would be so kind as to show them all his might. It was the fifth prince, and the sixth prince said that they were wondering how strong the ninth brother was compared to someone from the black region. Both of them looked at our hero. Then, turning to the ninth brother, the young man said to let his third brother teach the guy a couple of lessons. He asked Jochen to demonstrate his true potential to their brothers and sisters. Upon hearing this, the ninth sister told her third brother that he had already reached the middle of the black area, and the ninth brother was only at the final stage of the yellow, didn't it seem unfair to him? Our hero, seeing how his sister protects him, thought that among all his brothers and sisters from the royal family, only this stupid ninth sister treats him like family. Seeing how the ninth sister protects her brother, she asked if the defeat from the elder brother would not be a good lesson for the ninth brother. Clapping his hands, the tenth said that it was perfectly said, addressing the third prince. The words of the third prince make sense. His cousin may not want to accept this challenge because he was afraid of losing, or he was not taken seriously by the third prince, considered him an unworthy opponent. He addressed. Seeing the damn brother and sister duo, ninth sister was thinking that Lin Chen Yu and Lin Ning Shan had arrived, and ninth sister, addressing them, said that this was the royal family's martial arts field. What were they both doing here? Lin Cheng Yu said that by the queen's order, he and Lin Ningxian were allowed to practice here, along with princes and princesses. Then, addressing them again, the ninth princess said that she was afraid that some people would not become a phoenix. Even if there was no such opportunity, what did Sister Ningxian think about it? The princess was interested. Hearing this, the girl was angry again. How Zhang Yuxi dared to mock her, because one day she would pay for everything. The girl thought to herself and was angry. Again shifting the attention of the third, the brother turned to the ninth brother and asked if he would fight with him or not, or if he really looked down on him. The young man, looking at his third brother, said that if he thinks so, then the young man will fight with him. Turning to his dear ninth brother, he hoped that the young man would not lose after the first reception, otherwise he would simply destroy the entire reputation of the yellow list. Hearing this, Ninchen did not think, did she hear right? The third really agreed to fight with the ninth brother. This show would not be missed, and she could not wait for him to be beaten. Everyone entered the arena and the two brothers had to fight. The third brother was fully armed and wanted to use the fist of a wild bull to attack our hero. The young man realized that the third brother was going to suppress him with pure force and decided to dodge his attacks. The third brother saw the young man dodging and said that he was very fast. But did he really think that it would be enough against the third brother? Ryuachin thought about whether it would be enough against him depended on whether he could hit it at least once. The third brother attacked our hero again, asking what speed is capable of against absolute strength. Our hero, having heard this, said that in this case he could not wait to see this absolute power turning to the third brother. Standing fully armed, the ninth brother was addressed by the third and said that how he cultivated the fist of a wild bull to the ninth level, which is harmful to the strength of 81 bulls, was the young man really sure that he could withstand at least one of his blows. At that moment, our hero realized that the third prince was too strong and attacking him. Our hero could not dodge, and the third brother shouted that the young man really could not dodge this time. The third used all his might to attack our hero. Seeing this, the sister was very surprised, turning to the ninth brother. Lin Ninchen, watching the fight, thought that the ninth prince had been hit by a direct blow from the third prince and even if he did not die, the wounds from this blow would be simply terrible. Her cousin was standing next to her, who was also watching all this from the side. The third, standing near the wreckage, said that it looked like the speed that the young man was so proud of could not save him this time. 
But our hero was already behind him, and using the palm of the Prajni dragon and elephant, he wanted to attack our third brother. The same in response used the fist of a wild bull to answer the ninth. There the hands clashed in an attack forming a powerful column of energy, after which they bounced off each other on the sides. Jachin asked if this was all the war of the middle of the black area was capable of, to which he replied that he had just started. The guy's eyes were burning and he was already furious. The third prince wanted to use the blood rainbow against our hero. Seeing this, the young man thought that a warrior in the middle of the black region has such a sparring, a partner who still needed to be searched for. It was necessary to use this opportunity to the fullest. Everyone saw that the third brother was furious and now the ninth brother was in trouble. The ninth princess thought to herself that the color of his rainbow was quite pale, and it looks like the young man reached the middle of the black area quite recently. Perhaps his brother has a chance to defeat the third. At that moment, the third brother was rushing straight at our ninth prince, and he was dodging his attacks and carefully watching what the third prince would do next. Addressing Josh, the prince asked if the young man thought that he was safe if he dodged his blow. Because it was a trick at that moment our hero received a blow from the third prince and he said that if this was all that a genius from the yellow list was capable of, was it really some kind of that's a joke? While flying in the air, Jochen thought to himself that the third brother was able to send him flying by inertia alone after the impact. He had a serious force at all and our hero understood this. While he was thinking about it, the third prince was approaching him. The prince said that each of his blows was comparable to the strength of a hundred bulls, addressing the ninth brother and asking him to receive a blow, which he addressed directly to him, that our hero was unable to resist it. After seeing their battle, the sister shouted to the ninth brother if he was alive, to which Lin Ninchen said what happened to the ninth princess, whether the fact that her beloved brother was being beaten hurt her. The ninth princess was thinking to herself about what kind of girl was annoying. The ninth brother was so cute, so why his cousin was so annoying, she could not understand in any way. At that moment, the third prince was standing in the arena, watching what was going to happen next, and our hero attacked the prince right in the back. The third prince realized that the young man used this smoke to attack him and it was true, our hero, hiding in the smoke, attacked the third prince directly in a frontal attack. The third prince told his brother that he was naive if he thought that he would be able to defeat him with such pathetic tricks, and after all, the difference in their strength was too great. The ninth prince was thinking that what should be expected from the wars of the black region, in other things, the third prince is weaker than other representatives of the black region, our hero thought to himself, looking at the prince's attacks. The brother and sister standing nearby thought that Zhl Chen's cultivation was much stronger than the tenth prince thought, and the third prince could not defeat him. Lin Ninchen thought that the third prince was not very smart, but he had a strong cultivation and it looks like Ryuachin lost in this battle, she said. But then the girl's face was distorted by a grimace, because it was simply impossible. Because the young man does not leave a single chance to the third and he only has to retreat, she said, seeing how Jiaqin was fighting with the third prince and it was not the third prince who won. But our hero, Lin Ninchen said that you need to look at how the ninth prince enters the earth. He just exhausts the third prince. Then her brother said that it may seem like he is taking all this damage, but in fact everything is different. The level of how a young man controls his power is beyond his imagination. However, it's still worth thanking the third prince, if it wasn't for him, they would never have known the true powers of Jachin and, apparently, they will have to double the reward if they are not going to hire assassins for the ninth prince. The ninth sister, looking at the fight between the guys, thought that everything would continue like this, then she was afraid that the ninth brother would be at a disadvantage and then, addressing the ninth brother, the girl from the stands threw him a sword, saying that the two of them had too much difference in cultivation and had to stop fighting with him head on and take this sword. Grabbing the sword, the young man thought to himself that in fact he wanted to continue practicing palm techniques against him, but there was nothing to be done and he decided that it was possible to fight with the sword, saying that it was possible to finish this battle quickly. Using the Heaven's Path technique, our hero began to attack the third prince, and they clashed again in battle. The third prince, jumping, said that the young man was very strong, but no matter how strong he was, he still remains a warrior of the Yellow Region and there was no way he could defeat the third prince. Looking at the third prince, our hero did not take it seriously, and started attacking him with his sword again, so much so that the third prince was defeated. Lying on the rocks, the third prince began to cough, because it was very difficult for him to move after the attack of our hero. Looking at this, the tenth sentence that the young man gifted the third prince with two swings of the ball and if he is allowed to grow further, he will soon become a huge problem. 
Lin Ninchen, despite this, said that the third prince was a real trash, he could not humiliate Jiachen, so he also allowed him to show off, which the girls really did not like. The sister, looking at all this, addressing Jiachen, said that he was a scoundrel, because he could have won a long time ago, but still preferred to make his sister worry, the girl did not like it. Everyone else watching this fight said that the ninth brother must have held back in the battle against the third brother, otherwise he could have defeated him from the very beginning of this duel. The third prince, looking at all this, could not believe his eyes and said that it was necessary to fight. Once again turning to the ninth prince, he tried to reach out to the departing young man, saying that he had not lost yet and asked him to stop. Hearing this, Jochen turned to the prince and said that it was enough, but is it so important who won and who lost? There is no point in a duel, the victory in which has long been a foregone conclusion. At this moment the young man gave the ninth sister a sword, thanking her for him. Grabbing her brother and addressing him, she said that why didn't he tell her that he would be able to defeat the third brother, she was terribly worried about him throughout the fight. So they left the arena again, and an angry Ninchen watched them. She knew that they were showing their close bond in front of everyone and her blood was starting to boil from this. Then Lin Ninchen turned to the ninth princess saying that she had heard that they had reached the realm of the ball following the mind and she suddenly also wanted to try her hand, so she asked if the girl would like to fight with her. The ninth princess, looking at Lin Ninchen, said that she certainly wanted to fight with her and take revenge on her for the last time. She had been waiting for this opportunity for a long time and since the girl herself offered her to fight, then they could start and Lin Ninchen was the first to rush into battle, asking for forgiveness from Her Highness using the noise of the Blue Sea. Her Highness rushed at Lin Ninchen, so the girl clashed in a duel. Lin Ninchen understood that her ball possession had advanced a lot since the last battle, thinking about the sword of the Ninth Princess, but it was still not enough. The girl also attacked her with her sword, saying that she had found her way through her defense. Seeing this, the Ninth Princess was surprised. She did not expect this in any way, and tried to repel Lin Ninchen's attack, also shouted for the ninth princess to surrender, knocking her sword out of her hands, because, like last time, she said that victory was hers. Lin Ninchen, holding a sword, and looking at how the ninth princess lay defenseless, said that isn't the ninth princess called blessed, but she couldn't even hold her sword in her hands. It seems that the difference in their strength was only big and only grew over time. Getting up from her knees, the ninth princess turned to Lin Ninchen and said that she had done this on purpose to embarrass her, to which the girl said that why would she have dared to humiliate the ninth princess, she just did not expect that the ninth princess was so bad with the ball. Hearing this, the ninth princess was very angry at Ninchen. Then at this moment, Ruaj raising his sword said that he was addressing Ninchen, saying that her cultivation was already at the level of the highest yellow region, which is a whole stage higher than that of the ninth sister. Did the girl really think that such a victory proved her superiority over her? It was so infantile. Seeing that the ninth brother entered the battlefield, the sister did not understand what was happening. Lin Ninchen, looking at Ruachen, asked if she was infantile, because everyone present saw how she defeated the ninth princess in one move. Her abilities could not be compared with Ninchen's. Hearing this, the young man said that in this case they needed to have another duel between them in a month and if she wins, he will apologize for the words he said today. At this moment, the ninth princess was sitting on her knees behind her brother and was saying that if she lost again, the young man would be humiliated. He would have to apologize to this girl. Really, thinking to himself that, was the ninth brother really going to apologize to this Ninchen for her sake? Hearing these conditions, Ninchen was interested and agreed, telling Jochen not to forget his own words. She couldn't wait for the day when the newly minted genius of their city would beg for forgiveness on her lap. Then the young man said that if Lin Ninchen lost, he would apologize to the ninth sister in front of everyone, and the girl agreed. Watching Jochen leave, she thought to herself that she would certainly not apologize. The young man was so naive, in her opinion, and how good it was that they concluded this dispute before his death. Leaving the arena, the brother turned to his sister saying that he was not as simple as it seems. If he offered this deal, he was sure of the victory of the ninth sister, saying that the girl was vigilant. The girl replied to her brother that he was thinking too much, because thanks to the help of the pills that he brought, she would soon reach the peak of the yellow region and the ninth princess would not be able to defeat her in any way. After hearing this, the young man talked about her trying to reach the peak of the yellow area as soon as possible, because once she reaches it, he will also give a pill of black blood, which will help her move to the black area. And turning to Ninchen, he said that if she reached the black region, then with her talent she would easily enter the Yuntai sect 
and the ninth princess was only a step on her way. On the other hand, there was the ninth prince, but the girl said that he should not worry about the guy, since he crossed the road to the queen, then he won't live for long. But before he dies, she wanted to humiliate him thoroughly. The ninth brother and the ninth sister remained on the podium, and turning to her brother, she asked if Ninchen must have used some secret medicines that helped raise her cultivation level so quickly, and she will only become stronger this month. The girl was afraid that her chances were close to zero and that her brother had overreacted. Looking at his sister, Jochen asked if the ninth sister did not trust him. Did she forget that he had reached the yellow region in just six months and hearing this? The sister was surprised. She remembered exactly this and asked how her ninth brother did it. But then the girl realized and apologized, because it should have been that it was a secret and she shouldn't have asked about it. Looking at her, Jochen told her not to worry, because she practices the form of ice, spiritual exercises of the lower class, right? The girl looked at the floor and said that it was already incredible that their royal family had three spiritual exercises at all, even though of the lower class, so she had no choice. Jochen leaning into the princess's ear said that if the girl kept his secret, he could give her a spiritual exercise of the ghost level. Hearing about the ghost level, the ninth sister was surprised. The sister turned to the ninth brother asking where he found such an incredible technique as far as she knew the highest level of exercises of the Yun Tai sect, also of the ghost level. The brother reported that the exercises he wanted to pass on to her were called the Tian scripture. It was divided into seven levels and she would be able to reach the peak of the yellow area by studying only the first level of the technique. A couple of hours later, our heroes went to study techniques and sitting on the floor near the campfire. The sister turned to the ninth brother and told him not to worry. Even if mom and dad asked her, she would not say a word and keep a secret at any cost, she told the young man. Jochen said that by practicing the exercises now, the girl will be able to condense true Kai inside her body, which will help her reach the peak of the yellow area. Turning to the ninth brother, she really did not know how to thank him for such a valuable gift. Looking at the ninth sister, the young man said that they were blood relatives with her, so he didn't need any thanks. But a month is not such a long time, so they will be glad if the girl starts practicing as early as possible. Coming closer to the study, the girl said that if he was not her brother, she would not mind marrying him. The young man was uncomfortable with this and then the sister apologized that she would no longer tease him. Leaving her brother, she said that she needed time to start practicing and then defeat the girl Lin Ninchen, so that the efforts of the ninth brother would not be wasted. She said that she would make her regret her actions that the girl dared to commit against her brother. Twenty days later, our hero continued to cultivate his strength and was watched by a cat who thought that this guy was already overflowing with Kai. I wonder if he could reach the highest cultivation area. Looking at the hero, the cat thought. The young man hovering in the air said that now his blow was equal to the strength of 99 bulls and already in the next and he was already a step away from the next area in which the blow would be equal to the strength of 100 bulls. Looking at the young man, the cat thought that although the difference in one bull was insignificant, in fact, the transition to the next area makes the young man much stronger. Jochen turned to the cat, thinking that if he raised the level of technology, the brawny dragon and the elephant to the third, then the force of his blow would reach the strength of 100 bulls. To which the cat replied that this was true, since his technique is still only of the second level. It does not reveal its full potential. Looking at his hands, Jochen said that he needed combat experience, but there is not a single worthy fighter in the royal palace right now. But if he leaves the palace, the queen will definitely try to kill him. And at that moment the young man guessed that he could practice killing animals on the royal mountain, so he would not have to leave this as the kingdom. Hearing this, the cat thought that the young man had gone crazy because it was pointless to risk his life for the sake of training, especially practicing killing wild animals. But our hero went to this place and saw the first animal with which he was ready to fight, realizing that in battle his speed does not compare to the speed of the silver lion dragon and it was necessary to guess the opportunity to attack, otherwise he would die at this moment the animal roared and headed straight at our hero attacking him with his powerful claws. Seeing this, our hero also rushed to the attack and realized that now was his only opportunity to attack the animal. Using an elephant gallop and jumping high up, Jochen began to attack the dragon, saying that this was not all. At that moment he was able to defeat him. Two people were watching the battle and the girl, addressing the commander, said that maybe they needed to help the ninth prince. But the king ordered them not to interfere with the ninth prince, even 
Even if the young man was in danger, they watched him from the mountain, and our hero was training in the gorge. After defeating the dragon, the young man thought about what it means even high-level animals pretend to be dead for the sake of survival, realizing that this was not all, and at that moment the dragon tried to attack the hero using the energy of its mouth. The young man flew into the air and used the dragon strike to finally deal with the dragon. To himself, Jochen thought that it seemed with his current strength, he would be able to stand up for himself for a while. A defeated animal lay behind him. The guards approached the young man, wanting to find out if the ninth prince was already capable of killing the silver lion dragon. It was becoming increasingly difficult to predict what the future of this prince would be. The commander, looking at the defeated animal, told his colleagues to sell this corpse and send money to the prince, to which the subordinates accepted the order and were ready to do what the commander told them. It was a bright sunny day outside and the lake, which was located in the mountains, was a great place for the cultivation of our hero, who sank to the very bottom of it and tried to figure out what else he needed to do, who, having reached the peak of their strength, the heroes used the third level of the dragon's bravado, and the words of the elephant, the return of the dragon from the elephant. So he trained and cultivated his strength next to this lake. At some point the force was so strong that the subordinates watching this did not understand what was happening in this lake. The subordinate asked the commander what was going on. Then the commander saw that it was a blessing and it was necessary to kneel immediately they all knelt. The young man, realizing this, realized that this was a blessing. He had not experienced anything like this even in his previous life, looking at the ray of light that went into the sky right in front of him. This ray of light was so huge that those who were in the palace did not understand what kind of ray of light it was, because they had never seen anything like it. Turning to his majesty, they asked if he knew what it was. His majesty said that although he, too, had never seen such a thing according to the ancient scriptures, he believed that it was a blessing. The young man fell into the flow of power and thought about how beautiful it was and so it was true that when he reached the absolute realm, a blessing was bestowed. He finally took his first step to become a powerful warrior. At that moment all the power accumulated in his forehead. The young man thought that, further being the son of a king, he had never seen such pure energy and if he managed to absorb the energy of the blessing, he would reach the black area without any problems, and his hands itched to apply a new force. At that moment, the young man tried to make a blow and the energy disintegrated. At that moment the commander said that this was important information. He had to immediately pass it to the king and ordered the servants to stay here and protect the prince. At the palace, Ji Kain came and gave the king all the information he saw. Then the king asked if he was right and was completely sure that the ninth prince had received the blessing. Ji Kain said that he was sure he had seen it with his own eyes and would never lie about it. Then the king sent him and said that they had to meet the ninth prince on the royal mountain. He obeyed his majesty. The king also said that Ji Kayan had to keep it a secret and from now on he and his subordinates would guard the ancient temple located on the royal mountain and should never leave it. When he came to his son and saw him cultivating energy, the young man immediately felt from behind that someone had come. Then, addressing the young man, the king asked him to relax, because he had heard that the young man had gone here to cultivate, so he came to check on him. Was the young man able to reach the black area and then the king asked him to try to attack him with his most powerful blow, to which Jachin, of course, agreed. Looking at the king, he wanted to use the return of the dragon and the elephant to earth and began to attack his father. The same looking at the young man who entered the attack thought that in such a short period of time his son was able to get incredible power. Our hero attacked the king and thought that even though he used all his strength, he still could not break through the protective kai of the king. While the father, the king says that he was happy to watch the growth of the young man. However, he expected more from him and was able to repel the blow of his son so that the young man had to get down on one knee. The king, looking at his son, who fell into the lake and stood in front of him on one knee, said that it was not bad. His palm strike was the strongest among the warriors who reached the highest degree of the black region. He told the young man that his ability to control the force was at the same level as the warriors of the earth region. Looking at his son, the king talked about what it seems. The young man had indeed reached the absolute stage of the yellow realm. Otherwise he would not have been able to get such power with his talent in the future. He would definitely surpass the king. If he continued to stay in this place, then only waste his talent. Rising from the water, Jachin asked what the king was talking about and he said that he had chosen two ways for the young man about which he was going to have lunch with him. In the first, the young man joins the Yun Tai sect, thanks to his talent. He will quickly become an outstanding student and then the young man asked what was about the second way and the king told him that the second way would be much more difficult and asked if the young man had ever heard of a market martial arts school. 
our hero asked if his father had talked about the martial arts bank that organized the school. His father replied that it was so. The school was located on the ridge of Omen and they recruited from all 36 kingdoms for training, so there the young man would be able to face greater danger. After hearing this, our hero said that he chose the second path. He would enter the market school of martial arts. The father was glad to hear this and said that it was excellent, as expected from his son, the sets will be announced within a month. As soon as this becomes known, the king will ask someone to take the young man to the Ridge of Omen and our hero said that he would return back to this house and start packing. In the house, he looked at all Lai, who was training and thought that he really was gifted, because he had grown incredibly in such a short period of time. At this moment all Lai continued to train, and our hero looked in the corner and watched the young man who cut the leaves around him. Having risen, the guy said that it was not bad. He saw that the young man had finally perfected the first movement of the ninefold samsara of the magic formula, to which all I replied that it was really so and turning to his master. He said that with this technique he was destined to embark on the path of a murderer, and he would like to test himself on the black market. After hearing this, our hero said that it was good and probably the young man would be able to find his way on the black market, so he supported him here. They were interrupted and Yun said that a maid Lin Ninchen came to his highness and she was with a message. After hearing this, our hero was surprised that it was a maid Lin Ninchen. Yun reported that one month had already passed and they were invited to watch the battle on the martial arts field of the imperial family and Jiaqin realized that he needed to go there immediately and asked if All I wanted to go with him, who replied that of course he wanted to go with him. Then our hero thought about himself that Lin Shan herself personally sent a message here. She must have been very confident in herself and he was wondering how the Ninth Sister's training went. The martial arts field of the Imperial family. The sister, seeing the Ninth brother, greeted him when she saw that he was here, and she also greeted All Lai, who also came with his brother. Lai Ninchen, who was standing next to her, was very surprised that the young man was still alive. Her cousin and the guys who were standing behind him could not understand if that young man had not served Lin Shan and after all, he was very lucky that he had not died yet, so what if the young man was still alive? His meridians were destroyed and now the young man was not capable of anything. One of the guys turned to All Lai and asked if he still served Lin Shan, how he managed not to kneel before his mistress. Then looking at this guy, the young man understood that it was right that this young man was the one who dealt him the last blow on the back. Then this guy dealt him the last blow with a stick and the young man was very angry. Then the guy was scared when he saw his look. His partner asked how he was afraid of this all lie, if he was disabled, and turning to all lie and asked how he the servant behaved so disobedient. After that, he decided that he would need to teach a lesson to the shameful service and decided to help his mistress. Then all lie, dodging and attacking at the same time, was able to defeat the guy. The sister, addressing her brother, said what happened to All Lai and why he had such a strong thirst for murder. Then Jochen said that the young man chose the path of the Reaper, so from now on his life will be filled with the desire to kill. Watching All Lai fight with Lin Ninchen's subordinates, she was horrified, because the young man killed the guy with just one blow, and she couldn't even follow his movements, and this surprised the girl very much. And her cousin standing and looking at all this, says that as expected from the merciless butcher of the Lin house, All Lai. His cultivation became much stronger compared to the last time, and his movements could not be followed by everyone. All Lai was talking about how it used to belong to the Lin family, but now it was just All Lai standing in front of him. He no longer has anything to do with the Lin house. Lin Ninchen, addressing the young man, said that he was too naive. Once he became a servant, he would remain forever. Was he able to reach the Black Region? Why not come back again? If he could win their trust, they would reward him generously. If not, the young man would die. All I told the girl that he agreed to serve and only because they saved his life, but they personally killed that All I and now there was a free man in front of them. If the girl continues to insist on becoming a servant again, then she will be sure that her life will not last long with such a servant. Lin Ninchen, looking at the young man who was talking to her so boldly, was very angry, because as he dared to talk to her, she wanted to call the guards, but then Jochen said that he was buying this servant. Here Lin Ninchen, turning to her cousin, asked if she really understood correctly that the young man was ready to beg her, to which Che said that the girl could call it whatever she wanted, because it didn't matter. Lin Ninchen, looking at her brother, said that if her own cousin begged her, then how could she stay away and said that she would sell the young man for one million silver coins. Speaking next to her brother, the ninth sister told Lin Ninchen that it was a real robbery, 
Even a servant who reached the first step of the Black Realm was worth no more than 10,000 and that the girl had gone crazy. And Lin Ninchen, addressing the ninth princess, asked her not to pretend to be a noble girl if she had nothing to pay with, and a good person was worth the money. At that moment, Jia Qin agreed and said that he would send the girl a million silver coins within a month. The ninth princess, hearing this, told her brother that Lin Ninchen was just taking advantage of the opportunity. Why did the young man want to do this? Then Jia Qin, looking at All Lai, said that compared to his talent, this amount was mere pennies. All Lai, of course, called the young man his savior and was shocked that the young man could make such a step for him. Lin Ninchen rejoiced and said that she had accepted the homage. This money would become her dowry when she married the seventh prince, and she thanked her cousin. She held the contract of the Lin household servants in her hands and was insanely happy with what she had done. The ninth princess, looking at Lin Ninchen, thought that the girl was terrible, and her arrogant face infuriated the ninth princess. She could not hide her contempt when she looked at the girl. Jia Chen, taking the purchase contract from Lin Ninchen's hands, said that his cousin helped him get such a talent and at the same moment the contract was torn and from then on all lie no longer belonged to anyone and finally found freedom, exactly at the moment when the young man tore the contract. Seeing this, all lie was simply amazed, looking at the young man. He said that he was his savior and he would definitely repay him for everything. All the spectators watching this picture thought that the young man had gone crazy. The ninth prince could spend one million silver coins in order to buy a servant, and then just cancel the contract. It was simply unthinkable. Everyone thought that the ninth prince must not have been incredibly rich. Other young men, looking at him, said that the ninth prince was so generous when things concern the needy, and they need to side with the ninth prince. Everyone was for the young man and talked about how noble he was. The ninth princess said that even though her brother had already made a decision, she would not let this Lin Ninchen girl get off so easily and she asked the girl to shove her pride somewhere else. At that moment both girls were standing in the arena. Lin Ninchen, looking at the ninth princess, realized that she had a good mood for this battle. Looking at the ninth princess, Lin Ninchen asked, she was just wondering if her arrogance would remain if the girl lost to her for the third time to which the ninth princess said that this time she would give her all for the sake of victory. Lin Ninchen said that if so, then she would like to change the rules. If she holds a victory over her, then the girl will not need to apologize. Instead she wants her cousin to do her one favor. And so Lin Ninchen turned not only to the ninth princess, but also to the ninth prince, asking that he I thought, saying that she would not let him offend. Jia Chen was sure that his sister would not come out the loser and therefore agreed with her, saying that he accepted this offer. Lin Ninchen, turning to him, said that since the young man agreed to the conditions, then he could not refuse later. When the girl defeated the ninth princess, looking at her brother, she said that he should not worry, because she would not let him down. Looking at his confident sister, Ryuachen thought about whether she had reached the cultivation of the first level of the Tian scripture and was so confident of her victory. At that moment both girls began to attack each other saying that there was enough talk and it was necessary to fight. Lin Ningxin rushed into battle. At this moment our hero thought that the girl was almost at the peak of the yellow area. How did she manage to improve her skills in such a short time? He looked at the battle between his ninth sister and Lin Ningxin. The third prince spoke of how Lin Ningxin's cultivation was far superior to that of her sister. Their ninth brother was too young and too impulsive. Then the fifth prince said that if Lin Ningxin wants the young man to kneel before her, wouldn't it hurt the reputation of the entire royal family? At that moment the girl stood next to them and shouted to her sister about that she would succeed, because she could not let her brother fall on her knees in front of Lin Ningxin calling the girl a tough woman. Lin, in a fit of battle, talked about how hard the ninth princess would not train. Lin would always be one step ahead of her, to which the ninth princess replied that unless the girl was at the peak of the yellow area, and it turned out that they were with her on one level. The battle was fierce and jumping back, the ninth princess decided to use her technique against Lin, to which she said that the girl was still no match for her, even though she did and used the sacred sword against the blue sea sword technique that the ninth used sister, and their forces clashed. In the next moment, Lin Ningxin used her technique so that it hit the ninth sister's hand in which she was holding the sword directly, injuring her hand, making it very difficult for the ninth sister to fight now. Ningxin, addressing the ninth princess, said that the girl disappointed her. Even after a month of hard training, the girl could not cope with her, for which her sister said that even if she had to give Lin this fight, she would not allow her brother's name to be discredited and spoke about so that the girl does not dare to neglect her will. Ruachin, hearing this, said that the sister did not come close to Lin Ningxin. He watched their fight from afar and asked the ninth sister to keep a distance as well, in order to force the girl to use up pure Kai. 
They continued to fight again and Lin fiercely attacked the princess, saying that even under the leadership of Ruachan, the girl could not defeat her. Then, seeing the anger of Ninchen, the princess understood that her brother was right, it was impossible to let the girl closer, and she began to dodge her attacks. Seeing this, Lin Ningxian asked if the girl wanted to run away, and if so, she still could not do anything more against her and started attacking the princess again. She tried to defend herself and dodge her attacks to try to do what she said brother. And it worked. The girl's pure Kai was severely depleted, and now the princess had a better chance of winning the battle with Lin Ningxian. Lin Ningxian was exhausted and thought to herself that this Prince Ryuachan, if not for his shouting from the stands and helping the ninth sister, she would have already fallen from her sword. At this moment, the brother shouted to his sister to keep running and wait for the right moment to attack. Next to Ruachin was Lin Ningxian's cousin and said that, as expected from his talented cousin, the young man was able to direct the girl with just a couple of words, and since he helped the princess, he asked if he could help Ninchen, to which our hero said that he certainly could do it. And then the cousin shouted to Lin Ningxian, since the ninth princess liked to run away so much, it was necessary to use the deadly sword technique of the house of Lin to cut off her retreat. Hearing this, Ningxian listened to her brother and wanted to see how then the princess could resist the technique of the house of Lin and she decided to attack her with a deadly sword technique. The ninth princess was not ready for this and when she was hit, she was amazed. But her brother shouted for her sister to use the blue sea technique to attack. And with all her strength, the girl, grabbing her sword, decided to use the blue sea sword technique, attacking Ningxian, which exhausted the girl very much and was able to hit her then. Her brother yelled for her sister to finish the job and use ethereal oblivion. The girl deflected her latest attacks from Lin Ningxian. Using ethereal oblivion, the princess began to attack Lin Ningxian. The same saw that she had no chance to escape and that the attack was coming right at her. At that moment everyone on the podium shouted what had happened to their lady. Then the cousin thought about that it was not enough to kill Lin Ningxian. Ryuachan, who was also watching the battle, shouted to his sister not to let her guard down watching what Lin Ningxian would do next. The girl tried to get up, looking at the ninth sister. The ninth sister, looking at Lin Ningxian, said that they were both injured. Did the girl still want to continue the fight? Then she tried to get up and gather her last strength and asked if the ninth princess was joking with her, because she was an almost defeated opponent, and whether she wanted to she will end the fight in a draw. At this moment, she was grabbing her sword and her cousin was yelling for the girl to attack with the god ball technique. Lin Ningxian listened to your cousin did exactly what she could to hurt our princess, then thinking to herself what a terrible ninth princess was, she could not understand how she dared to beat her majestic princess, it was completely unforgivable. The brother shouted from the podium for her sister to take three steps to the left, turn around and strike with the sword. The girl would follow his advice and be able to strike Lin Ningxian, so they clashed again in battle which was watched by a very large number of people. Ryuachan thought to himself that if the fight continued, both girls would be seriously injured, which was not at all what he wanted. Then, drawing a sword from All Lai, who was completely surprised by this technique, Ryuachan jumped onto the podium and told his sister to watch him hold the sword using the destruction technique. Seeing this, Lin Ningxian was very surprised, because she had never studied this destruction technique. What she had to do she did not know at all. At that moment our hero showed his sister the destruction technique and how exactly it should be used. Then the sister attacked Lin Ningxian, and she tried to dodge. At that moment the girl realized that this was her chance. The ninth sister pointed her sword directly at Lin Ningxian, and held it near her neck, saying that she had won. Lin did not expect this at all, because she was confident in her victory. Despite the sword that was right next to her throat, she understood that she lost today to the ninth princess. Watching this from the stands, the cousin thought that even after taking Ninchen's immortality pills, she still lost to the mediocre ninth princess. It was incomprehensible to cousin Ningchen. He did not expect that the one he admired would be so dishonored in battle. The subjects also did not understand how the lady could lose. Someone shouted that everything was so fast that no one saw or considered anything. Then the sister shouted from the podium to her ninth sister that she had defeated this ferocious girl, the pride of the royal family. That was her sister's name. Ruachin was completely sweaty and as if he was continuing this fight, he was very worried and looked at what was happening next. To which all lie, who was standing next to him, who heard this phrase, said that he thought that the young man did not know how to worry. Standing behind Lin Ningxian, the ninth sister, speaking to sister Ningxian, told her not to move. 
it would be bad if she accidentally hurt her face. Then Lin said that if the girl really had the ability, then she should have fought her again if only not Ryuachin. She would never be able to defeat her. The sister said that the outcome of the battle was already decided. So why did the girl want to fight her again? Then Lin, realizing that she really lost, asked the ninth princess to make a bet. If she loses to her, she will become her servant for 10 years. But the ninth sister was not interested in this. She said that since the girl lost, she had to kneel and apologize. Otherwise her face would suffer now. To which Lin Ningxin said that she made a promise to apologize, but did not promise to kneel. But the ninth sister, since she won, she wanted the girl to kneel down and apologize, otherwise she would hurt her face. At that moment, she pressed her sword so that blood came out of the girl's neck. Then, seeing this from the stands, the cousin ran to Lin Ningxin and asked the princess to spare his sister. Hearing that Lin Chenyu, who was running closer, the princess was talking about him being nothing more than a servant of the seventh brother. Did he really think that he had the right to talk to the princess with all his anger and all his power in his voice? She ordered him to kneel too, which surprised the young man very much, and he began to tremble and fear in front of her. Turning again to the line of repair, she asked Nine the sister heard the young man what she said to him and she again ordered the young man to kneel. But what was he lynching? She was shocked by the fact that this insignificant girl boldly dishonored him. But anyway she was princess so he had to kneel and turning to the princess he asked and calmed down and also talked about how to reduce immediately knelt down and asked for forgiveness. The ninth princess, standing in the arena next to Lin, said that if she paid her one million silver coins, she would be able to pay off the punishment and not kneel. Then she asked where she was supposed to get a million and the ninth princess said that Lin Ningxin could have demanded them from the ninth brother. Lin Ningxin understood that for the Lin family, one million is too large a sum, Lin will kneel in front of the girl, but will cause damage to Ryuachin, and then kneeling and turning to the princess, gritting her teeth, Lin Ningxin asked the princess for forgiveness. She talked about how that Ningxin made a mistake and asked to be forgiven while kneeling before the ninth princess. The ninth princess, seeing this, did not expect Lin Ningxin to kneel. It looks like the ninth brother will have to spend all the money. The people from the stands and the third and fifth princes were watching all this. The fifth prince talked about how he did not expect the proud sky goddess Lin Ningxin to kneel before the ninth sister. And the younger sister talked about how she was not a sky goddess at all. Because her sister was able to make her kneel, the ninth sister is the real goddess of heaven. Watching all this, Lin's subjects were surprised that the mistress knelt down and did not believe that it could be that the princess insulted their mistress. Rising from her knees, Lin Ningxin, turning to her brother, said that within a month he had to remember to send one million to Lin's house. The young man watched this completely from the side and understood that the ninth princess was beside herself with anger. Her cousin took her by the arms and tried to take her out of the arena. When they left, Ningxin cried and reported that the princess had humiliated her very much, and she had to die for it. The girl did not want to see her in Ryuachin anymore, to which the door brother told her not to worry, because he had already offered a reward for her head Ryuachin and if the young man dares even one step to leave the palace, his death will be inevitable. Ningxin shed a tear and said that she would train and one day personally kill the princess to quench the hatred in her heart, to which, turning to his sister, the brother said that when she reached the absolute region, he would recommend his Tianzong palace for training. Wiping her tears and smiling, the sister asked if she could meet the seventh prince there, then hugging and stroking her sister on the head. The young man said that the seventh prince was a student in the inner palace. If the girl received his patronage, she would not be lost. Ruachin told her sister that today she greatly humiliated Ninchen, and in the future the girl would probably use any methods to take revenge on her to which the ninth sister said that she did not want to humiliate her, but only tried to help him return the money. Besides, even if she lends her a little courage and the girl still wouldn't dare to touch their royal family. Ruachin, standing in front of his sister, hoped that this would be the case and told her to take the pill of immortality, because it would increase the success rate of the breakthrough by 30% at that moment. The young man gave his sister the box in which the same pill was. The ninth sister wanted to thank her brother for being able to share such a thing with her, and taking his face she said that he was so good and asked him to accept her gratitude. Then hug him and teasingly said that she would miss stinky brother at that moment tears poured from her eyes, and the young man did not understand at all what was so wrong here, too, embarrassed by how her sister expressed her feelings. They walked out of the arena and the princess walked in front, Alai and Ryuachin walked behind her while addressing as Alai. 
the young man said that he would leave for Washi Academy in a month. But there was someone he was worried about, then all I asked if she was whether this sister, to which our hero admitted that it was so, because she treats him like a relative, he cherished such affection. Ruachin explained to All Lai that Ninchen would definitely take revenge on the girl, and maybe even try to kill her. Then All Lai replied that the young man should not worry while he was in the city. He would definitely secretly protect the princess, and that he would not allow the Lin family to kill her. Turning to Ali, our hero said that he would help the young man atone for his guilt, and he would help him protect his loved ones. Now they did not owe each other anything and could be friends on equal terms. Hearing this, Ali was surprised. The young man was a prince, but he was ready to put up with his status as a prince and a slave could be really ordinary friends. And surprised by this, Ali understood that he wanted to protect the prince and his family without fail. A month later, our hero was facing his relatives, and the woman who addressed him as Little Chen said that the animals were shooting in the Thai mountains and that the young man had to be careful, it was his mother. Ryujin said that his mother thought too much, because there are a lot of warriors in the Washi Academy, and these wild animals would not dare to approach him, to which the mother replied that she and Ryujin were separated for the first time and she asked her son to take care of himself, because she heard that the young man quarreled with Ninchen again. But in the end she was his cousin and hoped that the young man would someday be able to forgive her. Ruachin, looking at his mother, asked if it was old man Lin who asked me to convey these words to him. He told his mother that he promised that as long as they did not provoke him, he would not touch them. But if they dared to insult her mother again, he would erase on the ground at that moment. The sister hit the young man on the head, saying what kind of nonsense that fool was talking about and said, hugging his mother, that she would take care of the ant so the young man could leave calmly. Our hero said goodbye to his relatives with his sister, with his mother saying that he would wait for his sister at the Ushi Academy. Looking at his brother, the sister thought that she would also train and reach the absolute realm, then she would definitely come to the academy ears. Watching her brother leave with these thoughts, the sister made a promise to herself. The queen at that moment in her palace said that everything was in vain. They had been looking for an opportunity to kill the prince for a whole month, and now they were just watching him go to the Ushi Academy. In the future, he will only become a bigger problem. The queen was tearing and throwing and she did not like the situation that was developing. A young man fell at her feet, saying that the girl should not worry because the prince left the city, now it was much easier to eliminate him. The queen, looking at him, thought she wouldn't chase him to the Washi Academy to kill him, to which the young man replied that without the protection of the royal family, Ruachin would be naked and they would liquidate him, so the young man vouched that the prince would die in a foreign land. Our prince was riding a horse and seeing him from afar, the girls shouted for everyone to look, because it was the ninth prince who arrived at their palace, all talking about having reached the absolute realm not so long ago, and thought that the young man was the most talented person whom they knew. All the admiring glances of the girls were fixed on our prince. Kaizai also looked at our hero, who did not understand the general exclamations at all. Next to her was a young man who also did not understand why everyone greeted the prince so much. The prince stopped, getting off his horse, then turning to his highness. He was told that Liu Mei had been waiting for him for a long time. And then the prince, seeing the spoiled Liu, asked if he had personally deigned to meet him, to which Liu said that his highness misunderstood. Liu apologized to our hero for what happened in the past and after he lost twice to our hero, he thought a lot and decided to live a new life. Liu said to the young man that he did not expect that after that he would reach the absolute realm. Our hero, recalling the last battle with Liu, and thinking whether it was the same spoiled Liu whom he remembered, the young man imagined to himself how Liu looked before on the battlefield. Looking at the young man, the hero said that he congratulated him in this case, since he embarked on the true path. Rubbing his head, Liu smiled at our hero and said that if it were not for the support of his highness, he was afraid that he would never have reached the absolute area so quickly. At that moment some man began to pass by everyone. Then everyone understood that it was the owner and he was here. The owner approached our hero and, turning to the ninth prince, said that the former owner and the current king were also friends from childhood and he hoped that he would have a good relationship with his son. He meant our hero by him. Looking at the owner who was standing in front of our hero, the young man understood what pressure was in front of him. This owner should not have been so simple, since the young man felt such power. Turning to his uncle, the young man said that Liu was very polite. If his son really reformed, then he would be ready to open up to him. Looking at the hero, the owner understood that the young man kept his cool even after he intimidated him and the spirit of the guy is not inferior to the spirit of the king. He immediately understood this. Liu stood next to him, and therefore, bowing his head in front of the young man, 
He said that Liu was too reckless and not cold-blooded enough, he should have learned from the prince. Liu, bowing his head in front of our hero, said that even without instructions from his father, he would willingly learn from the prince. Our hero, looking at all this, thought that Liu was also considered a young genius, and if he can start life from scratch, then he can discard old hostility and become his friend. After that, in the sky, everyone suddenly saw a red hawk that was circling over the school, and when they saw it, someone shouted that it was really a bloody hawk. It was in the top three most powerful animals. Its combat power exceeds the strength of martial arts masters. Is it really all we were going to fly to Tianmo Mountain right on this hawk? It was a nightmare. A man flew on a giant bird that descended from the sky and their owner greeted the elder, saying that they had not seen each other for a long time. Washi Bank Elder Zion Anchen flew exactly on this bird and said, Elder Liu, this year several dozen people will take the Washi Academy exam. He was interested in it. Then the owner told him not to worry, because this year the number of people taking the exam is more than last year. Who knew what surprises these young men could provide them? The elder asked whether outstanding talents were born in Washi and whether they were able to get into the top 10, to which the owner said that it would be much more interesting if the elder saw everything himself. At that moment Ryuachen and Liu standing behind the owner watched their conversation. Everyone sat on a giant hawk and flew straight to the mountain, sitting on a bird. Then a girl approached our heroes, seeing her, our hero thought inquiringly what she wanted. Turning to his highness, she asked if he objected if she sat next to them, to which our hero politely replied that the girl could certainly sit next to him. Looking at her, Liu thought to himself about what a beautiful figure the girl had and could not look away from her. But at that moment she sat down next to our hero. Ryuachin thought that her outfit seemed hostile to him. At that moment, looking at her legs, he remembered the many King Liuo who were able to hurt him right in the face. Liu, turning to the prince, asked really, he was really calm, because this woman was called Kaizai and she is not only beautiful, but also in the lower level of the absolute realm. Maybe she will become their classmate. To which our hero closed his eyes and calmly answered brother Liu, that he wanted to start life from scratch. And if so, then he should have started by getting rid of the nature of a womanizer. Looking at our hero, Liu said that such a charming creature was right in front of his face, and the young man did not even move. And indeed the talent of the Washi Academy at that moment, Liu's face was completely incomprehensible how the young man could behave like that. Hearing this, the girl thought about what sweet speeches were between the guys. If the prince died by her hand, then he should have considered this luck, she thought to herself, and at that moment a needle appeared from her fingers, which was poisoned. Our hero noticed this, when she saw the prince's gaze, the girl did not understand whether he noticed or not. And if so, how was it possible? At that moment she was removing the needle behind her ear. Our hero, of course, noticed everything right away and when he saw how the girl puts her needle right behind her ear, he thought that it was really a needle again. This was very disappointing for our prince, because he thought that it was already somehow ordinary. The partner who was with Kai's eye, seeing that she could not do anything, thought about what a useless woman she was, because now he would have to do everything himself. The young man carefully watched Kai's eye, who was unable to do what was required of her, and therefore decided to go into battle himself. Our hero was sitting quietly and did not touch anyone. At that moment the young man behind him tried to attack him and then seeing this, the hero thought that in the space closest to him nothing could be hidden from his gaze and turning his head back the hero saw how to the needle was pointed at him again. Stopping the enemy and taking a poisonous sting in his hand, the hero said that it kills people without sound and wind, without even leaving blood. Were these really professional killers right in front of him? Our hero asked. Realizing that the young man was able to repel his attack, the guy thought that it was impossible that even the greatest martial artist who had reached the absolute realm would not be able to detect the poisonous sting, let alone catch it, which shocked the attacker very much. When the killer realized that our hero had discovered him, he understood that he had only to attack in the forehead, so the young man held his knife in his hand. Seeing the knife, our prince understood that the young man wanted to kill him, relying on his stupid tricks. Then our hero decided again use your two fingers to attack the opponent. An elder intervened in the fight, who told the impudent man how he dared to be daring right in front of him and attacking the young man in the head. He was able to repel his blow so that he could no longer attack anyone than Ryuachin and Liu. Seeing this, thought that the elder Zai Nanchen had put opponent with one finger. The elders of the Ushi Academy were very difficult. Seeing what happened, Kai Zai understood that if she had attacked first, she was afraid that she would be completely unable to withstand the elder, who killed the opponent with one with one blow. The enemy and the knife flew away from the elder and from Ryuachin, 
who was watching all this, approaching the enemy and placing his fingers directly on his throat, Liu said that the enemy was dead. Everyone who was on the bird, all the students were absolutely shocked by what was happening now. Then the elders, turning to everyone, said that it was a poisonous sting in a fish intestine sword, it was definitely a killer from the underworld. The killer from the vast kingdom made his way into the academy, and the elder did not expect such a thing. Turning to our hero, he asked what the young man had done and why the killer from the underworld wanted to kill him. Turning to his uncle, Liu said that this was the ninth prince of the Yunwu kingdom. He was a martial arts genius. Pointing at the young man, his new friend said. Then, looking at the prince, the elder said that it is undeniable that you need to be a genius to reach the absolute realm at 16 years old. But with the talent of the seventh prince that reached the absolute realm at 12 years old is incomparable and told Liu to throw the body from the blood hawk. He did not want it to dirty his hands, and then Liu obeyed his uncle and carried out his order. A dead body flew down right with the bird. Our hero realized that it was all over, but there was only one enemy left and he stood right in front of the girl who was sitting right on the bird. Seeing the legs that came up to her, she was shocked and only looked at the floor, thinking that she hoped that the young man did not understand that she was the killer, because the young man had only reached the absolute area, why such pressure was coming from him. At that moment, our hero was standing right above her, and she felt his aura, realizing that she couldn't just sit, she needed to attack, because right in her hand under her outfit she had a knife hidden. While our hero was standing and looking at the girl behind him, Liu called the prince, saying that the academy was still far away, so it was necessary to sit down and rest at that moment. Our hero turned around and walked away from the girl, and then Kaizai realized that she was lucky too because if she pulled out a knife, she would immediately immediately lose her life. Looking at the guy, she understood that he was hiding something, and it was not yet clear what, so she needed to find out what it was, otherwise she would not be able to kill our hero so easily. Ryuachan sat down while they stared at him in the back and Liu approached him, turning to the prince, saying that the prince should not worry. As soon as he enters the Ushi Academy as a killer, they can't do anything to which our hero replied that he hoped it was so. The queen hired killers from the underworld. Even at the academy, our hero thought his ears would be unsafe, and he understood that he had to be careful when he reached the heavenly region. He would return and settle old scores with the queen. The blood eagle flew high over the mountains high in the sky and reached its destination to Washu Academy, which was guarded by a protective magic barrier then. The elder shouted who guarded the magic field they should have opened the gate, and the gate opened in front of the bird so that it could fly out into magical barrier and landed right on the square at the Washu Academy. A young man descended from the bird and they thought that it was a martial artist from Yunwu. After all, this is a small kingdom and there were few talents in it. Our hero, going downstairs, looked at a huge stone, on which it was written that it was the Ashi Academy. The young man understood that the person who won these four symbols must have reached the celestial region of Asha. Here our hero was distracted. Someone said that only these few people from the Yunwu realm would take exams compared to the Ziffing realm and there were very few of them at that moment. Our hero and Liu turned around and saw new faces in front of them. Three young men stood in front of them. One of them was Shen Mengxi from the Ziffen Kingdom, who, turning to our hero, said that he did not mean anything like that. He just thought that the Yunwu Kingdom was only getting worse from year to year. Then this in a moment, another young man appeared next to our hero and asked how he dared to insult the warriors and their kingdom. It was Zhang Heng. He challenged Mengxi, saying that he wanted to teach the young man a lesson. Then Manxi gave a signal that it was good if the young man stopped his three attacks, then he would take back his words. Then after hearing this, Jiang Heng did not understand what three attacks the guy was talking about. How dare he underestimate him and said that he will make the young man regret it. Gathering all his strength into a fist, Jiang Heng began to attack Shen Manxi with all his strength. Everyone looked at the fact that Jiang Heng's true Kai was in the form of a fire dragon and was incredibly strong and there should be no problems. All the girls who watched the battle said this. Looking at all this, our hero thought that this Shen Mengxi was far from simple and he should have been ready to save the guy at any moment. Our hero was ready looking at the battle that should have been right in front of him. The young men started to fight and at one point Zhang was defeated, to which all the girls who watched this fight said that the young man was very fast and strong. Ryuachin also watched the battle closely. Then the opponent said that the current fighters could not even catch the movements of the opponent, and he was disappointed. The amazed guy was lying right in front of him, and then Shen said that such a scum was not worthy to be a student in the Ushi Academy, and it would be better if he got rid of him. Manxi's strength was already gathered in his hand and he was about to attack Zhang Heng, 
who was lying on the ground. At that moment Liu shouted for the young man to be careful, because they were going to attack him then his attack was stopped by our hero, who was able to protect his future colleague. Seeing this, Mengxi asked himself, is there someone in Yun who can stop his attack and it was completely unexpected for him. He looked straight ahead and our hero at that moment, turning to Zhang Heng, said that he should take the pill of immortality holding in his hands ball, for which the young man thanked the prince. Our hero, looking at the defeated Zhang, said that he should not thank him, because he had another one and asked the young man not to worry, because Ruachen would take care of the rest. Nancy, seeing this, said that it was very cool. He did not expect that this year the Yunwu candidate would be the prince himself and began to applaud our hero, who was standing right in front of him. Mansi talked about how the prince must be very strong. Could he show them something because he was very interested? The elder and the man who was standing next to him. I talked about why the guys competing in the skills to interfere. Because the elder already wanted to intervene. The young man was the prince of the Yunwu realm. And if something went wrong during the exam, did they really think that the young man would give up? So the elder thought to himself, because since Shen Mengxi now knows who the young man is, he will not attack this with full force. He just wants to shame the Yunwu warriors. Ruachen, watching the guy, said that now there was no exam, but he wounded one of the soldiers and he had to pay his medical expenses. At the same time, the prince told Manzi that if he gave him 30,000 silver, then he would let him go, to which Manzi began to laugh, saying that the prince was afraid that he would not even have the courage to fight with Manzi, saying that it was a shame for Prince Yun. Liu, seeing this, said that Manzi was impudent, because even if he fights against Liu, he will lose, whether he really wanted to fight the prince and, speaking right in front of the young man, he said that he challenged him. Mansi looked at the guy and said that he did not want to fight such a small fry like Liu. If the ninth prince defeated him, he would pay 30,000 to the wounded fighter and apologize to him. Did such a condition go to our hero? After hearing this, Liu thought that he was a small fry and decided to ask Mansi about it because it made him very angry, which the guys standing next to Mansi said that it was true, the prince did not dare to oppose and therefore they had to go back to Yunyu. Ruachin saw this and said that since he agreed, but if the enemy lost, he would pay 100,000 silver coins, to which Mengxi asked how our hero dared to say such a thing. Then the young man, rubbing his hands and saying that Manzi only shouted something loudly and that he had no money, the same one immediately took off his cloak and decided to attack our hero with full force. Heading straight for the young man with his punch, he said that even though 100,000 even a million young men still couldn't defeat him. Our hero saw what an opponent was fast, but still it didn't help him and used a clear look to reflect his attacks. All fists that were sent to study missed by at that moment the prince's fist reached the desired goal and hit Manzi directly in the face immediately knocking out his teeth, that Manzi flew far from our hero. Liu, looking at all this, said that Shen Mengxi was losing, because he told him that no matter how hard the young man tried, he still could not defeat the prince. This amused Liu a lot, but once he himself was the same as Manzi. Looking at this, all the guys thought that they could not see the movement of Prince Shen Mengxi, and the prince was of a completely different level, and they all understood this, watching the battle that unfolded right in front of them. Mengxi, completely beaten in tears and with trembling hands, asked how our hero moved so fast then our hero was already behind the prince neck and everyone shouted that the young man be careful because Ruachin attacked him directly by kicking the young man in the face with his foot. The elder watched this, and the man who was next to him said that from the very beginning the young man hid his abilities and that he was a little worried about Shen Mengxi, and said that he was a non-entity. At this moment, the guy was lying right on the ground, there was no living place left on him, so he asked our hero to stop because he could no longer fight. But when Ruachin came up to him, he said that the young man offered a bet and lost, so he had to carry 100,000. Looking at our hero in tears, Mansi said that he did not have so many only 30,000 silver. Liu approached Ruachin, telling the prince that how could he personally deal with such unworthy deeds for him and how to demand a return of the debt to which the prince said that it was necessary to take it easy with this guy, turning to Liu. Plus, looking at the enemy, he said that the fourth prince and Mansi could not even afford 100,000. Was he really a fool in his opinion? As the young man could personally tell the ninth prince about this before the fight, and now wanted to refuse to pay the debt, at that moment Liu stepped right on the young man's hand, letting him know that his words were serious. The fourth prince lay on the ground and screamed in pain while Liu stepped on his foot. Then our hero spoke about the guy hitting lighter, because he still acted thoughtlessly. At that moment Liu turned to Elder Zai and Elder Sidu did they hear everything that happened here. 
The elders stood not far from the battlefield and they confirmed that paying off debts is the law of heaven and the principle of the earth. The second one thought to himself that this Shen Mengxi hit the whole Ziffin in the dirt with his face. Then Liu asked if Shen Mengxi had heard about this if today he did not bring money, then he would beat off his miserable hand, and then he would either speak directly to Mengxi, who was lying on the ground, still standing on his arm and addressing Liu to asking our prince what he was thinking. Nancy, lying on the ground, all beaten, said that they should not beat him, because he would give the money and ask to be spared. At that moment, he took out a wallet from his pocket, saying that this was all he had. Liu, accepting this package, said that the young man was a rogue, because he had only 30,000 coins. But they would take it away, and then turning to his highness or asking what he would do. Because the young man did not have 100,000 coins, then our hero began to speak. But Liu I understood everything, although the guy thought to himself that he had not said anything yet. At that moment, Liu began to say that Shen Mengxi would be sorry and to himself Shen thought that the hatch was a monster incarnate, and the same one began to deal with him right away. Looking at all this, our hero thought that how good, what's in kingdom, he did not fall into his hands, otherwise he would not have spared him. Our hero was thinking, watching how Liu deals with the enemy. Liu, paying attention, said that the sword of the fourth stage, the lord of the north, costs 10,000,000. The belt decorated with jasper is another 8,000,000 silver. And the young man had as much as 20,000,000. So he took everything that the young man had from him and told him that he returned only 50,000,000. So it was necessary to sign an IU for the rest. Our hero, looking at all this, thought that Liu was a real bully. Bad people had a bad temper at that moment. Liu forced Shen to sign an IU holding his hand very tightly that the young man was hurt again. At that moment, someone appeared next to them and shouted that that was enough to the ninth prince, and Liu said that even if the youth was missing 100,000, they should not have humiliated him, or it was their goal to humiliate Ziphon. In front of them was the prince of the Ziphon kingdom, Huo Xin, surrounded by his two guards, who approached our heroes. Liu looked at him and told the prince to be careful, because Prince Huo Xin and is in the last stage of the absolute realm on him. The jewels of the royal family will not be easy to deal with. Our hero, listening to his friend, realized that this was so. Then, turning to Prince Ryuachin, he asked if only they were allowed to humiliate them, if it was impossible for the young men to fight back. Then the prince said that it was natural when the strong humiliate the weak. In this case, Ryuachin said that there was nothing wrong with the fact that they disgraced the war in Ziphon, to which the prince said that our hero would not be so self-confident tomorrow the exam and he would defeat all the warriors. He thought to himself that especially Ryuachin Ho Zin wanted to make him regret, and turning away from our hero, returning to his palace, he told the prince that they would meet him tomorrow on the battlefield. Then the prince shouted that he would not see him off and wished Ho Zin good roads. Liu stayed next to Ruachin and said that it would not be good, because tomorrow he was afraid that the exams would be dangerous, to which our hero said that it was allowed to kill people during the exam. Liu said that it was not allowed, but the first stage of the exam would be held on Mount Tianmo. They would try to kill them there, Liu said, because there would be no evidence of the murder. Everyone standing nearby understood that everything could end badly for them, and then Jiang Heng thought that it was all his fault. The Sibayan who was standing nearby thought that since they wanted to kill everyone during the exam, why their school could not answer them in the same way. Turning to the prince, the girl said that if they cooperate, they can find serious damage to the Ziphon warriors. All these years, Kaizai held a grudge against Ziphon, it was time to return the favor to them. Ruachin, looking at Kaizai, said that not only was she at the highest stage of cultivation, but her courage knew no bounds. Such a woman is rare, as our prince thought to himself and told Kaizai that if she was determined, he would fight to the end and tomorrow will not make them pay. At that moment Kaizai thought to himself that the young man had trusted and now she had a chance to kill him. The next day came, and while ringing the bell to greet the Washi Academy entrance exams, our heroes Ruachin and Liu arrived at the arena and carefully watched what should have happened now. Ruachin, looking at this, thought that in the end it was the Washi Academy, very powerful energy emanated from them. He thought to himself, and Prince Liu said that if they passed the exam, what color would their clothes be? To which the young man said that clothes in this case, it will be white, because inside the academy there is a strict hierarchy. Only the elders can wear silver robes, and on stage only the head can wear gold robes. The exam consists of two rounds, the first round of hunting for wild animals, the second round is to pass the obstacle. The top 120 of those who compete in the final results will become students of the academy and the historical sieve will continue to announce the rules of the exam. 
The elder standing in front of all the students said that the first stage of the Ushi Academy exam is hunting for wild animals. Those who are in the lower level of the absolute area they need to kill 5 low-level wild animals. Those who are in the middle level of the absolutely area need to kill 10 low-level animals. Those who are in the middle 20. And those who have reached the lowest extreme area need to kill 50 beasts. Those who have reached the middle maximum extreme absolute area need to reach 80. One mid-level animal killed is equal to 5 low-level animals, and one high-level animal killed is equal to 20 low-level animals. And the elder said then, Ryuachin thought to himself that if one of the test subjects here encountered one high-level animal, he was afraid that they would not survive if the youth encountered a mid-level beast, must also die. And the Washi Academy exam is so tough, and it was already too late to refuse. Some people thought. Liu said that the guys should not worry. The exam will be held in a large area, and in theory they will not encounter higher beasts. Then the elder continued her speech and was grief-stricken that before entering the Tianmo Mountains, each participant will receive a unicorn ball that will save them if they find themselves in danger. You just need to crush it also means refusing to participate in the exam. The exam lasts three days, if the required number of animals is not obtained after three days of the participants. He will be excluded, the exam has officially begun. The elder shouted and everyone was jubilant about this, ready to start the exam. Our hero was also determined to think that finally then the exam began and he could show what he was capable of. Huo Zin, who was standing in the crowd, ordered everyone to listen carefully, as soon as they met the soldiers from Yunwu. They should immediately be finished off. The one who kills at least one person will receive two pills of immortality. He addressed his subordinates. And the one who kills the prince? He will reward the treasures of the Lord of the North. Our hero walked through the dark forest and thought about how to pass the exams he needs to kill 40 wild animals and asked if Kaizai, who was walking next to him, was not worried. She said that she would simply kill the examinees from Ziffen by taking away the eyes of the animals from them. Isn't it faster it would be done and squatting down? She took a leaf from the ground, thinking that the smell of Ziffens, who had been here for 15 minutes, she smelled him. Seeing this, Ruachin realized that the girl was trained in the art of persecution. Because how did she know that this was the smell of a Ziffen? Then Kaizai said that last night she secretly made her way to them and remembered the smells of all 660 warriors who were in the palace. Hearing this our hero rubbing her head, she thought that the girl was either a saint or had trained her sense of smell since childhood. Even those who had reached the heavenly region were not capable of this. Kaizai, turning to the young man, said that everything was as he said and one of his ancestors was a saint. But unfortunately the family quickly fell into decay after his death, she is the only one who survived. So after her speech she said that the young man should forget about this. After all, it was necessary to track down this siphon and they ran straight to the smell that Saizai smelled. At that moment, someone was killing the beast, gouging out his eyes. It was a young man who said that there were two more eyes besides this one, whom he had just killed. There were already three animals. Then he heard a sound asking who was among the bushes, saying that they should get out of here at that moment. He saw Prince Yunyu. It was a great fortune for him. Ruachin, standing behind the young man, asked why he was so glad to see him, to which he said that Prince Huozin promised a reward for his head. And since the young man was already at the last stage of the absolute realm, it would not be difficult for him to kill the prince. He considered this moment his sword turned blue with energy and he decided to attack our hero by directing his attack at him. Ruachin, looking at this pitiful sight, said that the young man was still unstoppable and asked if he still wanted to kill him, to which the opponent said that it was impossible, because the young man had only reached the initial stage as he was able to neutralize his breath. Behind him, Kaizai appeared, saying that didn't he know that the prince was the strongest member of the yellow list of Yunwu County. Talking about the prince and standing behind the young man, Kaizai spoke, who in the next moment already cut off the guy's head. Speaking about the fact that ignorance was also a kind of crime. After seeing this, Ryuachin looked at the body and said to Kaizai, because he only wanted to neutralize the young man, why did the girl need to kill him? Kaizai, sitting next to a tree, said that the young man was young, but had already reached the last stage. And if he hadn't died, he would definitely have taken revenge. So it was necessary to hurry up and distribute the life that she had. In front of the girl there were attributes of a bag of money gold and the box in that box was supposed to be the eyes of the beasts. Smiling, Kaizai said that the prince did not lack money, rightly, turning to the prince. And in this case she said that she would take soul crystals and silver for herself, and the prince would take weapons. Was it good for the prince and the prince agreed. At that moment, using his energy, he took away with the ring what he was supposed to. Seeing this Kaizai did not understand whether she was mistaken or not. 
because it was a spatial artifact that the prince had on his finger in the form of a ring. The young man, taking off the ring, explained that he had many patterns, so it suits the girls much more and if she wanted, he would give it to her. To which Kai's eye thought to herself that the spatial ring was a very precious thing, and the prince just wanted to give it away like that she was afraid that the prince was still that fool. Turning to our hero, she asked if he didn't know that a man cannot give a woman a ring just like that, while the young man, rubbing his head, said that it was just a spatial ring. He was only 16 years old. What intentions could he have in relation to Kai's eye? Looking at the young man who was about to give her the ring, she asked to be allowed to take a closer look at it and asked how to use it. Then the young man, giving her the ring, said that the girl should simply pour her energy into him, putting the ring on her finger and thought about what it was incredible. She understood that she wanted to take the ring for herself, but she could not accept it just like that and therefore wanted to offer the young man 30 soul crystals for this ring. But Ryuachin turned away from her and said that this ring was worth at least 200 crystals, and he told her that he was giving this ring means he didn't need the money. Looking after the young man, the girl asked why he gave her such a valuable thing. Was he not afraid that she would kill him and take away other jewels? Then our hero, without turning to Kai's eye, asked if they were now friends. He didn't believe that he might be so unlucky that he ran into a man who pays evil for good. Kai's eye, hearing this, drew her sword and pressed it to the throat of the prince, to which he, seeing his reflection in the silver sword, asked what the girl was doing. She said that everything was very clear. She would kill him and rob him. She informed our hero standing behind him and holding a sword around his neck. Ryuachin, without turning to her, said that if she killed him for money, then this would be a good reason, to which Kai's eye said that his reaction was simply amazing. A sword was presented to his neck and he didn't even show that he was afraid then turning Kai's eye Ryuachin he said that once dying, it's not scary to die again and asked if Kai's eye was ready to kill him. Kai's eye, looking at the young man, thought that he was not at the highest level of cultivation. Then where did he have such a suffocating force of pressure? Your sword, turning away and taking her sword away from the youth, she said she would accept the ring and thank the prince for his kindness so they could continue tracking down the wars in Siphon. The young man, continuing to look back at Kai's eye, thought that she had drawn a sword exactly like Chen and he was not mistaken, she was also a killer from the underworld. In the next moment, Kai's eye was already dealing with another victim, who fell from her hands and sitting on a tree said that they had already killed eight, and there were still twelve left for today should not have finished. Sifin had oppressed Yun Yu for a long time and now there was a great opportunity for revenge. The young man, looking at the defeated one, said that they could cancel their cultivation. Why was it necessary to kill all these people? Kaizai, continuing to sit on the tree, told the prince that the Ziffin Wars massacred his people not because they were good-natured at that moment someone was aiming at her directly from the bow, thinking that he could hit the girl with his arrow. Hearing this Ryuachin shouted to Kaizai was careful, but she could no longer dodge the blow, so Ryuachin grabbed her and saved at that moment an arrow pierced the tree on which the girl was sitting and broke it. Kaizai, peeking out from behind the young man, said that she was almost finished off. There is only one warrior who had excellent shooting Feng family from Ziffin. Feng Jai, it was he who had this great opportunity to kill people with such accuracy, and his bow. Standing in the foliage and holding his bow, pulling an arrow, the young man said that Miss Kaizai was worthy of being a top-class Yunwu master, guessed that it was him, but he was more interested in how the ninth prince noticed him. The prince said that his arrows were bad and he would not be able to hit them. Then when he heard this, the young man said that how could Ruachin laugh at the Feng family's archery technique? Because two years ago in a battle on the river, his grandfather almost shot him father, for which he received 10,000 slaves as a reward. Pulling the arrow tighter, the young man said that as soon as Ziffin destroys Yunyu, the Feng family will receive much more even. The young man will become a servant of the Feng family. Hinting at our prince, the guy said. Realizing this, Ryuachin asked if he wanted to provoke him and then stab him in the back. Then the young man asked how the ninth prince could kill him. Accepting the challenge that had just been thrown at him, Ryuachin pulled out his sword and said that he would try to kill the youth. Kaizai, watching this, thought that the ninth prince was rumored to be a genius swordsman, but she had never seen him use his sword and it was a good opportunity for her to know the true power of the prince. The enemy was about to attack the young man, and he was already pulling the arrow, thinking that he was gone because the prince was already next to him and thinking that he could dodge his attack. The young man began to attack our hero with his arrows, but everything was to no avail. He missed again and again. Looking at this, Kaizai thought that the ninth prince was very fast and it seems that the decision to kill the ninth prince is too rash. It's good that she didn't do it. Watching the fight, the girl thought. 
At that moment, while she was thinking, the prince was already behind Fen, and then, having heard this, he realized that the young man was very fast and tried to dodge his attack with a sword, jumping far back. Seeing this, Ryuachen, looking at the young man, said that he had lost his bow and asked what the guy would do now. But the young man did not give up saying that Ryuachen was in his access zone and spat something in his direction. Seeing this, she understood what it was and asked the prince to be careful. Our hero understood that he would not have time to dodge this attack, which flew right at him and at that moment she pierced him right in the head. Our hero was struck right in the head and Kaizai, seeing this, thought that if Ryuachen died, she was afraid that Feng Jai would kill her. And when he saw this, the young man rejoiced that the prince of the kill died at his hands and the elder of the family would definitely recommend him to the post of heir to the family and at that moment, our hero started laughing and approached Feng, hitting him with his blow. Thinking to myself, the boy was thinking about the Feng family's secret skill that he never misses and catches the enemy by surprise, killing even those at the highest cultivation stage. But the boy did not succumb to this attack. Astounded by this, Feng asked how it could be. How the youth dodged his shot, then Ryuachen asked if the boy had ever heard of the spatial area, and the young man asked again what exactly the prince had in mind. The prince thought that it was the power of the absolute area. As soon as the young man shot him, our hero released the space area, and the shot collided with the space area and changed its trajectory. Hearing all this, Feng asked who would believe in such nonsense, how can such a power exist? Does the young man have a powerful seal of time and space? because since ancient times there has not been a single saint who would possess this seal. The wounded guy interrogated our hero, to which he replied that the young man would die soon, so the prince decided to tell him. Since ancient times, there were only three people left with the seal of time and space, and he was one of them. Fen, hearing this, thought that Ruachin was really stupid, since he easily told such an important secret. If he spread this secret, Chen Ruachin and Yunwu would be under the gun of the whole general discussion. Then Ziffen would surely reward him and his clan. While the guy was thinking about all this, he took out a capsule from his pocket. Seeing this, our hero at first did not understand what kind of capsule it was, but using it Kai's eye, who was next to the prince, said that the guy was wounded, he could not run far, they should have to catch up with him. But Ryuachin said that this was not necessary, because it was too troublesome, and the all-seeing eye was used to find the young man. Looking around the whole forest, he tried to find out where the guy was running and at that moment he found him. The young man tried to run away from them through the forest in the other direction. Ryuachin found him and told Kaizai about this, so heading straight to the side where the young man was running, or the hero shouted to Kaizai to also take her sword and run right after him. Trying to catch up with the young man, our hero used his attack to hit the guy and in the next moment the young man was lying on the cold ground, and our hero was sitting next to him, and the girl was watching from the side. Ryuachin held a box in his hand, and the girl said that she did not think that the prince would kill people, but Ryuachin said that if he did not kill him, then the guy would kill him, because if the young man himself is looking for death, then what our hero had to do. Kaizai, watching this, said that the Feng family had high hopes for this youth, if he died in the exam, they would definitely go into a rage. His older brother is also a student at Washi Academy, and she was afraid that this might lead to trouble. But Ryuachin only told them to move on, because he collected the right amount of eyes and said that the girl needed to try. She understood that she had not yet killed enough the number of Siphons. Kaizai thought to herself that many, when killing for the first time, doubt their souls. She did not expect the prince to hold on so firmly. Besides, even if he was betrayed, he remains generous and generous to follow him is much more profitable than just killing him. The next day, Ryuachin and Kaizai stood near the river. A body lay on the coast of this river and Ryuachin said that it was a warrior of their kingdom and it seemed that before his death he was subjected to countless bullying. Then looking at this the girl said that this method of killing did it war from the Kin family. His scent remained all over here. Then the prince asked who Kaizai was talking about. And the girl replied that it was Kin Huo, the strongest genius of the Kin family over the past hundred years, at the age of 21 he reached the lowest stage of the extreme absolute realm. The girl went on to say that it was said that the youth cultivated the dark art by absorbing a woman. That's why his cultivation speed is so fast. While listening to all this, Ryuachin said that first they needed to bury this girl that was lying right in front of them. They buried her and moved on. At the same time our hero said that he would kill this Kin Huo and the girl said that the guy had reached the peak of the absolute area. It would be more difficult to deal with him than with Feng Jai. Did the young man think about it well? The girl was interested. 
While they were talking, Ryuachin felt that someone was nearby in Kai's eye, realizing that it was a bad thing. Because they fell for the bait at that moment, they heard malicious laughter, and that someone was descending right on top of them on a large bird. This someone, flying up to the ground, said that these two were constantly on guard. He did not expect that they would notice him so quickly, and the bird rushed straight down. It was Kin Huol. The young man, looking at our heroes, said that they really were amazing evenings. At least 15 Sifan warriors died at their hands, Kin Huol said. Then Ruachin, turning to him, asked how he tracked them down. Then someone behind them quietly said that he just found the people they killed and it was not difficult to track them down. Was that true? There was someone behind them who was watching them all this time while Kin Huo distracted them with his speeches flying on a bird in the sky. Behind them was a young man who said that it was much easier to find them on the trail of blood. Then Ryuachin and the girl turned around and saw a guy in front of them who was walking straight towards them. It was Kin Yu. Seeing the girl in front of him, the guy thought to himself that this girl was near the prince was of the highest grade. His eyes burned and looking at her tender lips and slender toned body. He thought that she still had a high level of cultivation. If Kin Yu could absorb her true Kai, she would immediately reach the middle extreme absolute realm. Licking his lips, the young man thought about all this, and our heroes were ready to fight. Kai Zhe said that since they had set up an ambush, it was necessary for everyone to get out. At that moment there were seven warriors next to them who surrounded Kai's eye along with the prince. Descending on the bird, Kin Ho said that the guys hadn't really guessed yet. Did they really think that they had a chance to win? With just one Kin Yu, it would be difficult to deal with, but with Huo Zin and these seven warriors, it would not even be possible to escape. Kin Huo, looking at this, kept saying that even if the unicorn ball was crushed, no one would come to save them, because the elders of Ziffin were responsible for this area. Looking at him to Ruachin, it seemed that Prince Kin Huo planned everything so that he didn't even find fault, and it seemed that they would die today. Our hero said to himself and the girl along with him. Kin Yu answered that only one prince would die, and the young man had other plans for this beauty and he began to laugh. At that moment another guy turned to Kin Yu and asked if he would absorb his Kai, would he give the girl to other warriors? because they too wanted to have fun with a girl. Hearing this, Kaizai asked if these warriors were looking for death and pointing her sword straight at the guy. She tried to attack him. Seeing this Kin Yu saved the guy and it amused him because he saw how angry the girl was. Grabbing her sword with one hand, she saw that the young man had scales on his skin and realized that it was a monsterification. Then she threw back her sword and jumped away from this warrior. Kin Yu said that it was true, it was the green paw of a low-level beast. He improved it now that it was not vulnerable to sword and fire, and at the same moment, Kin Yu decided to attack the girl. Looking at how the young man approached her from the sky and attacked her, she did not keep up with his attacks. Out of the corner of his eye our hero saw this and understood that if he did not help the girl, then he was afraid that it would not lead to anything good. Kaizai understood that she could not dodge the attacks of this young man and then Kin Yu shouted that she did not resist, because it would not make her feel better. At that moment a sword flashed in front of his eyes. It was a weapon that Ryuachin threw directly Kai's eye. Everyone watching the battle did not understand at all how the young man could throw a weapon. Was he really looking for death? And our hero could fight without the help of a sword, so everyone attacked him received the true strength that Ryuachin used in battles. When attacking the guys, he asked if they thought he could only use a sword, because few people know. But his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills are much more outstanding than sword skills. Seeing this was the last thing that the opponents of the Ninth Prince who used Star Strike against them. Kin Huo, flying on his bird and as if he didn't plan to go down to the guys, turning to Kin Yu, he asked what he was doing. He needed to quickly deal with the girl to kill Ruachin. To which Kin Yu replied that it was a high-class toy, talking about Kai's eye, how he could quickly deal with this girl and said that from Kin Huo let him have some fun. Kin Huo was angry and said that he would give the guy 30 warrior girls, so he simply asked to kill the one that was in front of him, to which Kin Yu accepted this offer of the prince with difficulty and decided to attack Kaizai. At that moment she hit the young man, but this attack did not affect him at all and he told Kaizai that she could not run away from him. Kin Yu, looking at the girl, thought that she looked weak, but it turned out to be very strong and he liked it at that moment Kaizai attacked the guy right in the chest with her foot. She thought that she was attacking with all her strength and the young man did not even dodge. Did he really underestimate her at that moment? She again kicked him right in the face and the guy already felt it but continued to laugh at the girl, throwing her own sword at her, then grabbing the sword that the guy threw to her. He thought about what would happen now very interesting battle. 
Kaizai grabbed the sword and used Sword Kai and then a snowstorm to attack Kinyu. But he fought her with only his modified hand and Kaizai thought to herself that his modification was incredible. Even without a weapon, he repelled her snowstorm. Kinyu offered Kaizai to give up because it would be the right decision for her. But the girl, grabbing the sword, thought that she was absolutely not going to give up to this guy. And then he asked her to try the strength of his paw. They clashed again. Then Kaizai the signal came that if this continued, she would be doomed. Attacking Kinyu, she thought that if she didn't cope, she would become a burden for the prince, although she wanted to kill him. But the young man was the kind of person who really understands what friendship is and of course she was very hurt for this. At that moment she looked at our hero and realized that she should have used all her strength to attack Kinyu who was standing right in front of her. Gathering all my strength and trying to attack Kin Yu, the young man understood that it was dangerous because she hit him with her powerful attack. Ryuachin understood that Kaizai's power was so amazing that the girl gave all her best. The attack was very powerful and the fog that dissipated, through which Kin Yu went straight towards Kaizai, who was lying unconscious, raising her leg. The young man said that now he could see how he would have fun with her. But this moment, Ryuachin used strikes of the will of heaven to attack Kin Yu who was standing next to Kai's eye, seeing this guy jumped away, as he was injured and laughingly said that since the prince could hurt him, the prince was really strong and now he wanted to kill him. The clothes on the guy Kin Yu were torn, and the wound that our hero inflicted immediately healed. Seeing this, our hero realized that it was a very powerful self-healing ability, which he did not expect at all and attacking our hero with the tears of the demon Kin Yu ran right at him. Ruachin used the Dome of the Will of Heaven, his defensive attack, which he used against opponents, but this only amused Kin Yu and with exclamations that the guy should die. He began to attack this dome and thinking that he had won. Again Kai Yu grabbed onto Kai's eye to have fun with her. But the girl said that the guy was a corpse looking right behind him. Kin Yu, thinking that he got what he wanted, was completely unaware that Ryuachin was behind him. Who told him to prepare to go to hell and not forget to apologize to the girl that was right in front of him. Our hero was ready to attack the guy. Attacking the young man with his blow. He didn't expect the guy to use the girl as bait to attack him. He didn't know that he treats women like that. He casually spoke to Kin Yu to our hero and tried to attack him in response. But Ryuachin defended himself with his sword against the modified arm Kin Yu. At that moment, Kin Yu's eyes sparkled and he and Ryuachin began to fight in a fierce battle. Looking at this, Ryuachin understood that Kin Yu's forces were striking, although he was holding back every blow. But if this continued, Kin Yu would be able to injure him or break his sword, our hero thought. At that moment, Ryuachin leaned right against the rock that was behind him, understood that he had nowhere to retreat, and attacked the guy, saying that Ryuachin would evade his paw. The hero concentratedly used the all-seeing eye to dodge Kin Yu's strike and jumped straight up high, dodging his strike, while the young man was shocked that our hero had so easily escaped him. Kin Yu thought to himself that the guy saw his movement. Did he really have the ability of the seeing eye? It was impossible they had few talents in Ziffin, but no one could activate the all-seeing eye, and the young man was just a prince from a tiny country on the outskirts of the empire. The likelihood that he activated the ability was extremely small. Kaizai, who was watching the fight, asked if the prince was okay, to which he asked if Kaizai could still fight and standing next to her while looking at the girl said Ruachin. The girl's clothes were all torn, and she was injured, but she was fine. She told Kaizai that together they could win, she would hold the guy back, and he had to deal with the other five wars. Kaizai said that she would be able to hold a maximum of 10 hits by Kin Yu, during which time our hero must kill the others and together they would defeat Kin Yu. To which Ruachin could not agree, he saw that the girl was injured, so he said that Kaizai was supposed to kill those five that were next to him. But the girl continued to argue with our hero, saying that Kin Yu would not kill her, so she could withstand 10 blows, and if it was a young man, he would kill him, to which Ryuachin said that it was unlikely and rushed into battle, to which Kaizai replied that she did not want to die with him, so she also attacked the five that were on her. Kaizai thought to herself that his courageous character is similar to a prince, but this is what makes her look up at him. At that moment she saw how the young man began to fight with Kin Yu, trying to attack him. He repelled his attacks and they clashed again in a wild fight. Distracting from the thoughts of the wars, he asked if the girl wanted to fight them, answering the guys asking if she had to fight five with them. Then they should have considered that they were already corpses. The guys, of course, were angered by how she could snap before she died and realized that the girl had a character, because it was not surprising that Kin Yu liked her. Then a girl from their team asked Kaizai what was wrong with following the young man Kin Yu, so that she would not only be happy, 
but also get a lot of resources for cultivation. So why shouldn't she do it while listening to sweet this girl's speech Kaizai asked not to compare her with them, because she was sick of it and rushed to the attack. Then when she saw how Kaizai was attacking, the girl realized that her attacks were too fast. At that moment, another warrior began to laugh and attack from behind her. Then the girl, addressing them as her brother, asked if he had ever heard of distracting maneuvers and at that moment she struck him directly with her sword. Watching all this, Kin Huo thought that this woman attacked like an artificial killer. It was strange that Prince Yunwu kept the killer with him, and then he shouted to everyone directly from his bird, so that everyone would pay attention. The prince ordered to leave the girl, and the prince alive. Kaizai was trying at that moment to deal with five warriors who were attacking her in turn, and then the girl who had previously offered her to join them began to attack her again, to which Kaizai thought that she was looking for death, and again began to attack her too. To attack using all her power, she offered the girl to die, but to herself she thought that there were still three warriors left. She had no Kai left to fight three more, she only had to risk everything if she lost. Then with the prince comes to an inevitable end. And having gathered all her power, she decided that she had to fight to the last. Our hero felt this strong Kai and Kaizai must have risked her life, he thought, and he had to deal with everything quickly, otherwise they would both lose their lives.